Well, hello and welcome to the Ron Henry Lawn Care Q&A. My name is Ron Henry and I am here to help answer your lawn care questions. Sometimes I have the answer, sometimes I don't, but either way we have a great time talking about your lawn and the projects that you guys have going on. If you're new to the show, welcome. Uh, the way this works is pretty simple. Uh, you simply just put your questions or comments down in the chat and I work through them in the order that they come in. So that's the way it works. If you have a question you wanna get it answered, uh, get your question in uh, earlier as possible because that's going to increase the chances of, that I'm, I'm going to be able to get to it. So let's see who we have here in the live stream tonight. So we got, uh, I think Ben has the honor of being first first man in. He says, thanks for responding to the renovation picks. I sent your product so far. Uh, I won't be able to mow till next week. Uh, will this tender new grass handle a scalp or hide a cut reset? Or should I work it down gradually? So great, great question, uh, Ben. So Ben, for you, if you guys didn't know, he did a full uh, reno. Uh, seed his lawn. I believe he used Arden 15, I think is what, is what he used in it. And it's grown in really, really nicely. I don't have the pictures queued up here, um, so I can't show you guys how it was, but literally he he seeded the lawn in, um, keep me honest here, um, Ben, I think it was the beginning of, um, uh, end, I'm sorry, end of May. And towards the end of, towards June, it was looking really great. So the grass grew in, germinated great. I did really well. So let's see who else we have here. We got some other questions we got to get to, but let me see who else is in uh, in the chat tonight. We got Super TA, we got Alexander Thomas, Chris Balducci in the house uh, as well. Lots of great questions in the uh, in the live stream tonight. Uh, we got Daryl Tunstall saying, what's up, Ron? Another live stream, your lawn looks awesome. Thank you so much, sir. A lot of work, you know, a lot of work. This time of year, man, with, with as rapidly as the lawn is growing with all the heat, it's a ton of mowing, tons of mowing to try and keep the, the grass uh, under control, uh, so yeah. Well, let's get into uh, the the first question. So it was it comes from Ben, where he said, um, you know, should he uh, scalp or will the, will the new grass scalp handle a scalp or should he work down the height uh, gradually? Uh, ben, given that it's brand new grass, I would work the height to cut down gradually. I mean, there's no reason to stress uh, turf. That's I mean, you, you seeded it in May. Um, you know, we're only into the middle of July now. No reason to stress it too much. Uh, just work it down over a couple of weeks down to the height of cut that you want to maintain it at and, uh, you know, you should be good to go. That That's going to be the least amount of risk as far as damaging, you know, all your hard work. I mean, seeding, as you probably know, like setting up the ground to seed and, and getting it to actually germinate, especially Bermuda, is a lot of work. So we want to take the chance to, uh, to really, uh, you know, give it every opportunity to do well. And you're saying right now you're mowing at uh, one inch every two days. You'd like to reset it closer to three quarters of an inch. That's not a huge change. Um, you know, something uh, with a change like that, a quarter of an inch, that's really not that much. You probably could do that. I wouldn't necessarily call that a scalp as much as if you told me you were mowing at, say, one and a half inches and wanted to go down to three quarters of an inch. But a quarter of an inch, you should be able to do that without issue. But still, you know, work it down. Take it down um, over the course of a week or so. And that's just going to give you, um, you know, the least amount of stress in the grass, especially now with it being um, a little bit hotter. The grass is already seeing a little more stress anyway. Just work it down uh, over time. That's what I would do. And again, congrats on uh, the seeding project. I know that's a ton of work, so I, I'm glad that it's working out well for you. All right, so we got Todd um, Wozniak in the house. He says he works at eight. Do you want to check in for a little bit? Saved a lot on the water bill this year by applying a lot of kelp and uh, the biochar. Thanks for the tips. You're very, very welcome, sir. Yeah, that's definitely a benefit to it. I mean, you know, um, especially biochar as far as um, helping with nutrient um, retention, water retention. I mean, overall, there's just tons tons and tons of benefits to, um, you know, to focusing on creating great soil. So I'm glad that you're getting uh, good results from that. And for any of you guys, you know, Todd asked me ahead of the time on the show if this would be okay. And it's, um, I told him, absolutely. So for any of you guys that are real mower geeks, like your person likes to collect real mowers, uh, Todd said he's found a gem here. He's got a 1950s brand new in the box Yardman gas real mower. That's a, this is a real collector's item. He's looking for serious offers for it. And he knew this was a place to ask. It's got the 2.5 Briggs and Stratton engine. So there you go, Todd. I don't, you didn't give me any contact information, but I'll tell you guys what, if you guys are interested in that, email me and I'll connect you up with Todd. My email address is ron at golfcourselawn.com. So if you're interested in that mower, I have Todd's email because he emailed me ahead of time and I'll just link you guys up and you guys can, can work everything out. But uh, it's good finds, cool find, Todd. I'm sure someone is going to be interested in that and we'll, and we'll uh, take you up on it. He does have a question, of course, which is, he says, first of all, happy to everybody that's ch chiming in on the live stream on Friday Night Lawn Care live stream. He says, Ron, you do a great work. Thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate it. It's, uh, it's a ton of fun. Definitely a labor of love. He says, can you ever add too much kelp or humic to a lawn? Um, I mean, the short answer is yes. You can add too much of anything to a lawn, right? I mean, too much water is bad. Too much of anything 
eventually can become a problem. But I think most people are going to have an issue with that. I think if you were to add um, humic, humic acid, not as much, but like something like kelp, um, what you'd probably find is if you're spraying it, it's um it's just likely to leach leach out of the soil. So you're just not going to get a lot of benefit out of it, right? So you don't want to you don't want to go any heavier than what the label specifies because a lot of times it's not that because you're going to damage the grass by doing that is that that um, amount that's specified in the label is the amount that's going to that the grass is going to be able to take advantage of it's much more than that you're just kind of wasting it kind of like if you take uh good examples if you take like a vitamin c right i mean yeah vitamin c can become toxic um at high enough concentrations but if you take like say double the amount or three times the amount not enough to be toxic but like you're just gonna get rid of it, right? When you go to the bathroom, you're just gonna pee it out. You're just you're not you're not gonna get the benefits of taking in the extra vitamin C. Same thing for kelp. It's kind of, you can think of it as almost, almost like a vitamin for the lawn. Uh, so going super heavy on that, um, not not a ton of reason to do that. The thing I would say you can go super heavy on um, is uh, products that contain biochar in them. So like the um, the essential G, the Carbon Pro G, because biochar doesn't really go away, not in any reasonable amount of time anyway. Like. Every one of us will be, you know, dead and gone. And the biochar that you put in your lawn will still be there. So it's it's something that you can. I always look at it as an investment in your turf. So um, so yeah, things like that, no problem. But the spray products, I would just apply them at the recommended rate because otherwise you're just gonna, you know, you're just you're 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 wasting money essentially is what you're doing. Great question though. All right, so Alexander Thomas is in the house. He says, "What's up, peeps?" Just ordered me a California trimmer, 20 inch with the Honda mower. Wish me luck. So Alex, you, you know, you have the honor. You have the honor of getting. The first applause tonight on the new real mower, California trimmer, 20 inch, nice, nice. And you got the Honda engine, so you should have no issues with that guy uh, starting. That's the one thing um, I found, man, with my True Cut. Uh, it's the Honda engine is better than even the Subaru that's on my Greens Master from a standpoint of starting, right? Like there's, there's never been a time as long as I've had it choked and the ignition was on that my Honda didn't start on the True Cut on the first pull. Like you can just give it a half-hearted pull and it still starts up. Um, the Subaru, not so much. I mean, I got to make sure, you know, it's everything's set and I got to give it a really good pull and it normally starts on the first try, but not as good as the Honda, but the Subaru's a lot quieter. So there's, there is that, right? But again, congrats on the mower. Definitely keep us posted on how it works out for you. I'm sure you're going to really enjoy that. Okay. We got Super TA in the house. He says, I got, got, Ron, I got approximately five and a half inches of rain the last seven to 10 days. Yikes. Yeah. I mean, we won't rain during summer months, but that's a bit much. That's a bit much. He says, yeah, and you're in uh, South Jersey, no more. Uh, here in the South, we've been actually pretty fortunate. I mean, it's it's been hot, but like even today, I wanted to go film some some film some stuff this evening before the live stream, and I didn't get around to it because there's uh you know it's, just, it's been raining. It's been raining off and on pretty much all day today, and it's supposed to be a lot of rain or it's supposed to be some rain in the forecast. So uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll take it. You know, you, you can't beat free water. So uh, but yeah, it sounds like what you have going on, Super TA, is is a bit more than what we would necessarily uh, want in a, such a short uh, time frame. All right, so Chris has a question based on the video that I did on um, uh, on the neighbor that, you guys remember that video I did where on pulling like rocks out of the lawn, so all the trash that a builder had left behind. So he says, good evening, Ron, and all you lawn nuts, that's you guys, he's been pulling a huge rocks out of the yard today that the builder decided to bury. Uh, what is the best fill to repair uh, that is free of rocks and debris? So. What I would do, Chris, is I would use uh, just fill dirt, fill dirt. So if you can get your hands on some fill dirt, um, topsoil can work too, but you're going to have to really com com um, compact it, really press it down because that tends to settle a little bit more. If you can get your hands on some fill dirt to to, to take up the first, the, the bulk of it, and then probably, you know, I mean, you can see how deep, um, you can see how deep it is, but let's say it's, um, let's say eight inches, right? Um, I, I would say take the first the first four inches of that and just use like some some fill dirt, pack that in really well. Um, and then just fill the top of it with topsoil. So so that will work well. You can you can use topsoil for all of it really. But again, with topsoil, you're really gonna have to do a good job compacting it as you as you put it down. You put some down, pack it in, put a little bit more, pack it in because it's gonna it tends to settle more uh, than like than fill dirt will. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, sorry you're dealing with that, but it's funny. You know, ever since that video went out, I can't tell you how many um, emails I've been getting from people about like just digging up their lawns and finding all kinds of lawn debris in it. So it's 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 obviously a thing. I mean, I knew that it was to an extent, but I didn't think that it was, you know, as widespread. And especially um uh, on on Chiming's uh, neighbor's lawn, um uh, Ralston, man, he had he had a lot he had boulders. If you guys haven't seen that video, check it out. I mean, there are big chunks of concrete that came out of his lawn, which is pretty insane. But yeah, I, I would just I would just use filter. I would not do sand. Um, I would use like as as close as you can the existing soil is what I would use to fill in 
um, the you know the the void that was left from taking out those rocks. And again, make sure you you pack it in good because it's going to settle some. All right. Uh, next question we have here is from Alex B. Great question. Alex says, um, or more of a comment, says, hey, Ron, I purchased 15 pound uh, bag of hydrotane from the golf course lawn store the other day due to my next application in a week or so. Uh, first time trying it in the peak of summer. Hopefully it helps the grass through the heat. It absolutely will, man. I, I've been very, very impressed with hydrotane, um, Alex. I mean, it's it, this year is my first year actually trying it out. And it's a, it's a great product. I'm definitely a believer in it. I'm, I am not due quite yet. I mean, actually, the end of this month, I'll be due to putting down another another application. So I might I might do one here in the next week or so. Um, and if for any of you guys that are interested in the 15-pound bag of Hydrotain, there is some in stock on the Golf Course Lawn Store. Um, it's a lot. There's a lot less of the granular than there is the liquid. So if you're interested in the granular, I would get it before it sells out again. Um, it's a good promise for Ecology, all right? They're, they're selling as much of this stuff as they can make, which is which is pretty good. Uh, but yeah, it's a great product, Alex. Um, uh, you will have great results with it. Just make sure when you put down the hydrotain um, that what you can either water it in after you um, after you put the granular down, or you can do what I do, which is wait until you, there's going to be some rain in the forecast. So if you know there's going to be any amount of measurable rain, you know, half inch of rain or something like that, um, that is when I would put it down right before that. So you have like Mother Nature watering it in. And if you also want to run irrigation too, you can do that as well. But the, the granular is a lot less picky than the liquid as far as, um, you know, as, as far as watering it in. I think according to the label, you have three to five days after you um, put it down to, they want you to put some, get some water on it. But of course, the sooner the better, right? The sooner you can get it down in the root zone, the better, the faster it's going to start working as far as, you know, be doing that. It's it's moisture magnet thing of pulling moisture in from below and above and just keeping uh, the root zone nice and hydrated. So very cool. Let me know how it works out for you, man. Okay. Uh, so again, D Daryl's in the house. Again, thanks again. He's uh, he just, again, chiming in saying that all looks great. Thank you so much, Daryl. I really appreciate it. Tons and tons of work. And he has, Alex has a follow-up question about fertilizer. He says, Ron, do you know if Lebanon Turf will come out with a Humic Max version uh, with phosphorus in it? Uh, loving the product either way. Uh, where do you get most of your phosphorus from? Turfplex and Bloomplex? So two-part question. The, um, so first of all, Lebanon Turf does make fertilizers that have phosphorus in them. They do make fertilizers in their country club line with phosphorus. I'm trying to think if there's a Humic Max with it. I think there is. I think there is a Humic Max that has phosphorus um, in it as well. Um, but the reason why we chose to go with the one that does not, uh, at least for the first fertilizer, is because in, in, in some states, uh, fertilizers containing phosphorus are restricted. You have to be you know, careful around when you can even buy them. Some states you can't even get them very easily. Um, so that's why we chose to go with one without that. Now, they do make them, but I mean, a lot of, a lot of the ability to be able to offer an additional uh, type of Humic Max, an additional uh, fertilizer from, from uh, Lebanon Turf, at least in their country club line, is going to be based on sales, right? So that we have to prove to them that, yeah, you know, they, that we can move enough of the product that it's frankly worth their time to even, um, you know, be bothering with DIY. And we've been doing pretty well so far, but I mean, there's always always room for uh, for improvement in that space. But yes, there is a, a product that they make that has phosphorus in it. I'm, I'm, I'm almost positive. When I was looking at this, there, there, there are some that have um, that have phosphorus as well. Okay, so the second question is, where do I get my phosphorus from? And you're right, it, it, I, I primarily get it from Bloomplex. So if you guys saw the um, in the live stream I did, I think it was a few, probably about a month ago at this point, where I showed the result, my sold test results. It, it'll be the one at the beginning of June is when I, I would have done that one. Um, and you guys saw an increase in my phosphorus levels, and that is entirely from Bloomplex, right? I, don't, I didn't put anything else down that had phosphorus in it. Um, Turplex has a, has a tiny bit. We're talking about like just a, a, a splash, a taste of phosphorus, but Bloomplex is like 16% phosphorus. I think it's, um, I think it's 8.16.5 or something like that. Um, so whenever I did my Arden 15, um, overseed, uh, instead of spraying Turfplex that time, I replaced Turfplex with Bloomplex, um, and the phosphorus from that was reflected in the soil test results. So yeah, to answer your question, uh, Bloomplex is what I use. And again, with phosphorus, uh, Alex, because that tends to hang around in the soil a little bit better than um, potassium and, and nitrogen do, you don't tend you don't tend to have to add it as regularly as you do um, nitrogen or potassium. So that's why that's another reason why. Um, you know, even with it, even when it comes to like, um, you know, Humic Max, you know, having one that has phosphorus in it, I mean, there's very few people that need tons of phosphorus to being added to their soil over for a lot, for an extended period of time. You know what I mean? Um, and as far as other options for that, you could use something like the, the triple 12 that we, that's also available in the yard and the, uh, the golf course lawn store that's, that has like 12% phosphorus in it. Um, and then once you get that built up, then you can switch to something back like a 1608, like, uh, like the Humic Max. So, uh, great question. 
Great question, hopefully that helps. Um, but yeah, between the Bloomplex and then a little bit of Centurplex, I think there's like 1% in NutriKelp, um, the lawn gets plenty of, of phosphorus. So great, great question. All right, we got Joseph Roberts in the house. What's going on, Joseph? Thanks for coming to hang out in uh, the live stream. I appreciate you, as always. Uh, Timothy Wolf's in the house. What's going on, Timothy? Uh, thanks for coming to hang out. And guys, I, before I get to the next question, remember tonight as well too, tonight is when we announce the give, the winners of the giveaway. So there's still time to enter technically, right? Uh, the, for those of you that are new this week, all you would have to do is go back to last week's live, uh, live stream. I think it's got, um, I think it's got summer lawn goals or something like that is the title of the thumbnail of that, of that live stream. And you have to enter in, um, like what your goals are for the remaining of the season. It could be something as I'm going to top dress. It could be, Hey, I'm just going to mow my lawn and enjoy it. That's a, that's a, that's a goal too. Um, but you have to enter that because I uh, enter there because that is how, um, the tool that I'm going to use to pick the, uh, the winners out of the comments, um, you have to be in the comments for that to happen. As far as what we're giving away, um, so four things, there's gonna be four prizes tonight, so you have a pretty good chance of winning something. Uh, the first is uh, the OG Stripe Action sticker. You know, this is gonna be the first uh, giveaway prize. Um, and then second, again, courtesy to Josh, I don't know if Josh is in the house tonight, but so, you know, last week we had the Ron Henry logo sticker. Well, Josh has hooked us up, guys. He wants you guys to have options. So this week we have, if you like the holographic, you like a little bling on your spreader or whatever you're putting in on your mower, do you see how that kind of reflects? So you're gonna have a choice, the person who wins that as either getting, you get the standard, if you just want standard, or you've got you know the bling, the gaudy version, if you want that sticker. And then the third, third uh, giveaway thing is going to be a My Soil test kit. So for those of you guys that are looking to get your uh, soil analysis done, you want to get um, you know the, the kit that I use and really enjoy and I get great get results with, uh, we're going to be giving one of these away. And then finally, guys, I, I hate to say the grand prize because they're really all great, right? They're really all good. But the last thing, you guys have been talking about Turfplex a lot, is we're going to be giving away one gallon, one gallon of Turfplex. So it's going to be a total of four winners tonight. Um, so definitely stick around in the live stream. Uh, to see if you won, if you're interested. You must be present to win. That's the, that's another thing that I said last week, but you gotta be present to win. So four four things, two stickers, and then a soil test kit, and then a gallon of that liquid goodness that is called Turfplex. So if you guys have not um, commented in last week's live stream, uh, go ahead and do that um, if you want, if you're interested. And we'll select that a little bit later on in the show. We'll pick the winner a little bit later in the show. All right, so the next up, uh, next question we have is from Blake Morelli. It's a question about Kentucky bluegrass. Uh, he says, uh, my lawn is thin and I'm seeing weeds pop up. Uh, what is the best strategy to thicken it up and choke out weeds? How do you balance over seeding with pre-emergent? Anything I can do now? Well, here's the thing, um, uh, Blake. So the, the rules for KBG in many ways are, are, are similar to many, many other grass types, right? The more you're able to mow the grass and, and encourage it to thicken up, I mean, mowing it in itself um, will encourage a thicker stand of grass. Um, but... The thing that you've realized at the time, this time of year, especially for you cool season guys, is the lawn is under a lot of stress, right? So as far as um, being able to do a lot of different things right now to be able to to to, to thicken up a KBG lawn, I haven't seen pictures of it um, to know like how how thin we're really talking. But like you know, in another month, another six weeks from now, from now when the edge of summer heat tends to fall off. Picking up your mowing frequency is going to help. If you can do things to keep um, water on it to where it's not, um, you know, it's not drying out too much. So again, hydrotain can help with that. If you want something that's like a, like a moisture manager, that can help as well. So keeping a little bit of water on it and keeping up with your mowing. Um, as far as seeding, I wouldn't do that now. Um, I know some people have overseed or have seeded um, cool season grass this time of year and it's, and it's worked for them. But as far as like the ideal time to do it is either in the spring or in the fall. So I really wouldn't uh, push for that now. You could do it and you might get away with it, but if you want to have the best uh, opportunity, the best chances of success, wait until the fall. Uh, the rules as far as pre-emergent goes are similar to any other, um, you know, any other seeding project. I think tenacity uh, has, is, can, can work as far as like killing weeds. And I think it has like a very, very mild pre-emergent. Like it lasts for like a month or so. It doesn't, it doesn't last very long. It's not something, it's not like, um, like, uh, like, like Dithiopir or, um, or let's see, or like Prodiamine or one of these guys that lasts, you know, four months, five months, depending on, on how good a job you do and other conditions. Um, so tenacity is something you can use to, to knock the weeds back. That's, that's definitely an option. Um, but I would be careful of, of, um, 
of, I would make sure you give yourself at least a buffer um, between the time when you apply it a month or so until you decide you're gonna put seeding down, seed down because pre-emergent will negatively affect uh, germination of seeds. So just something to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, a big thing I say, man, is like, let's just, let's just pick up the mowing um, in the fall once once things cool down a little bit. Right now, something that you can do is you can get the hydrotain down. That's, that's a good option. And, um, you know, you have to kind of pick your poison as far as, um, you know, being completely weed free or wanting to overseed. So, you know, given that you have KBG, KBG is one of the slower germinating um, cool season grasses. It's, it's, you know, kind of like Bermuda in that sense to an extent, right? Um, so you have to kind of decide what's more important to you, right? Is it, um, you know, having a, a thick sand of grass with, that you're going to get from seeding um, or having the lawn weed free? Uh, so just just depends. Without seeing pictures of it, I don't, I'm not sure which which way to tell you which way to go. But uh, I will tell you, you want to keep pre-emergent away if you are try if if seeding is your primary goal for this fall. So just something to, keep, something to keep in mind. Like a good example for my lawn, I didn't put any pre-emergent on my lawn this spring, and and to some extent I'm paying for it now, right? Because the the Arden 15 germinated really well, grew in really well. But like every time I mow, literally every time I go out and mow, I'm like pulling crabgrass out. I mean, you guys don't see it because they're little small baby crabgrasses, and I keep the lawn so short that the crabgrass is really suffering, like it's not thriving. But it's still like a headache that I have this year that I didn't have last year, and it's. Completely self-inflicted because I decided, you know what, I'm not putting down pre-emergent because I want to give the seed the best opportunity to germinate. So you have to kind of decide the same thing uh, this fall. Hopefully that helps, but as far as what you can do now, uh, you can decide on tenacity if you want to do that, and I would definitely consider putting down um, a moisture manager, something like Hydrotain, to help um, you know improve uh, the grass's ability to get to get moisture, especially in, uh, in I don't know where in the country you are, but just it'll help with, uh, with the grass doing better with all the heat. All right, Papa Mo Lo in the house. What's going on, sir? Glad to see you in the live stream as always. It's pretty awesome. And uh, Moro is in the house. He says, hey, Ron, I picked up that coastal. When should we plan on applying it and at what rate? So um, as far as when to apply it, um, I'm going to wait a little bit later. I saw a really cool video. And I, I wish I could remember his name. It's, it's, it's this professor of turf grass that did um, a bunch of studies on um, different pre-emergence in the fall for preventing uh, uh, POA in the spring. He did a test of, um, spe of spectacle flow. He did um, prodiamine. He did dithiopyr. And with coastal, he found that he got really, really good results with um, spectacle flow, which is a great um, uh, pre-emergent, but it's also super expensive. Um, and that coastal, the results were similar, but he waited a little bit later in the season. Like typically the time to apply pre-emergent in the fall, normally around, once soil temps get under 70 degrees, once they cross 70 degrees going towards cooler is when you want to do that. Um, but they waited a little bit later in the season. He waited till like October to do it. So um, I'm gonna find that video, dig it up again and watch it again and see when he's planning, what, like when exactly they did it. But um, it's gonna be later on this fall, uh, Moro. As far as rates, I'm gonna have to get back to you on that one. I have not even looked at the labels yet to know exactly what, what the application rates are for it or anything like that. But I promise you, you can, you can be rest assured there will be a video on it and I'll talk about it on the live stream ahead of time so you guys will definitely know exactly uh, what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in trying that out and seeing how it does uh, this fall. So uh, good job getting that. It's kind of, The thing about Coastal, it's, um, I forget, it's, there's, there's Prodiamine in it, there's um, Simazine, there's one more, is it a Maziquin? There's, 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 three, there's three herbicides in it. One is a pre-emergent and then two post-emergents in it. And the studies that I saw, it did an awesome, awesome job um, uh, against POA without causing any negatives as far as uh, green up in the spring. So I'll stay posted, uh, more to come on, on that one. All right, JG's in the house. What's going on, JG? She says, uh, happy Friday, y'all. Just got home from checking out my nephew's 4-H project. He's growing grass in clear containers so he can watch the root system as well. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. He says, and, and people wonder why he's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, that, that is pretty cool. He, he might have a career, you know, as an agronomist or something in turf grass because that's... Uh, that's for, you don't really have to become old to do that kind of thing. You know, if you're in high school and you're already growing like grass and clear planters so you can see the root system, yeah, I mean, he's probably someone's gonna, you know, do something in turf if he if he really wants. That's, that sounds pretty cool. And we have the new dad, or I guess the dad again in the house. We got the lawn whisperer. We gotta clap it up for you, sir. I think you had a baby. I, well, I mean, I know you didn't have the baby. I think your wife had a baby. But if I think if I'm if I remember right, Justin, I think you did. And uh, congratulations! Um, saw the pictures on Instagram. She looks uh, she looks gorgeous. Um, and so, congrats again. And uh, hopefully, it was you. I think it was you. I'm pretty sure it was you. But uh, but congrats, man. Uh, congrats on the on the baby girl. All right, up New York, Lon is in the house. What's going on, sir? Uh, happy Friday to you. Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. 
We got uh, Michael Selly in the house. What's going on, Michael? Uh, I think you're, I'm not sure if you're new or not, but I, I don't remember seeing your name before. So uh, it's good to see you in the, uh, in the live stream as always. We got Harold in the house. And uh, then uh, Jonathan uh, Boudreau, I think Boudreau is how you pronounce that. He says, that Ron Henry BYD collab was awesome a few weeks ago. Just got to watch it this week. Yeah, man, it was a lot of fun. I got to get BYD on again. He, he is a riot, man. He's literally, as far as like making the live stream easy, like it's really nice having him on as a guest because literally you, just wind, you don't have to wind him up. Just like, just give him a platform and he will talk, talk your head off. You know, what's funny is he was enjoying it so much he stayed for the entire show even though ahead of time we only spoke about you know him staying for the first hour or whatever, so it was it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of it was good synergy, good good like going 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 back and forth. It's really interesting to hear his perspectives on things and uh, and yeah. So we'll have to try and make that happen again this season if at all possible. All right, so we have Philip uh, Hudson is in the house. He's got his next question up here. He says, "I had my lawn fertilized with Iron R three earlier this week." I'm getting aeration in a week or so. Is that going to interfere with the fertilizer applied earlier this week? Uh, no, not not at all. It shouldn't shouldn't at all, um, Philip. Um, the, you know, I mean, it would have been you know if you could uh, you know have a crystal ball or a time machine and do things in the order that I, I would say is the probably the most optimal. I would have done the aeration first and then done the fertilization because that's going to allow it to you know it's going to it's going to fast track it into the soil essentially, right? Because you got all these holes that are all throughout the lawn. But as far as it hurting anything, no, not at all. It's not gonna not gonna hurt anything. It's not gonna hurt your fertilizer. The one thing I would say is, um, you said you're getting uh, aeration in a week or so. I'm not sure if you're doing it or if you're having a service do it. The one thing I would ask them to do, and it's kind of a pain, you don't, I mean, you, don't, you hate to be that guy, but um, especially given this time of the year is whenever like lawn fungus is really a thing, especially in warm season grass. Um, if they are If they are coming like this a service, Ask them ahead of time if they've rinsed or washed the tines off before they come to your lawn. Because you don't want them to go out like like do somebody else's lawn and then come right into your lawn and transfer perhaps whatever they were you know what's going on in that lawn into yours. Even offer to rinse it uh, there on site if they if they need to. But I mean that is something that um, it it is kind of it's not you don't know, strictly have to do it. But I mean as far as just just you know, re- reducing the likelihood of getting any kind of fungus or bringing anything kind of crazy in your lawn. Um, always, a, always a good idea. If you're doing it yourself, then even easier. Just when you get it from Home Depot or wherever you're renting it from, uh, make sure you rinse the tines off, rinse the whole the, rinse the machine off before you uh, before you put it on your lawn. Especially this time of year when again when fungus is a, is a big deal. So uh, yeah, so no, but no, should be no issues whatsoever as far as um, as far as that hurting your uh, your fertilizer you've already put down. All right, so we got a super chat in the house. The first one to break us off tonight, start things out, is Mr. Travis uh, Winston. Super chat for CS. He says, what's up, Ron and Golf Course Lawn Squad? Uh, now that rain is gone, time to get in a quick mow while listening to the live stream. Have a great weekend, everyone. Most definitely, sir. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure where in the country you are, but yeah, the rain just stopped outside. If you want to mow, you might want to get out there and get it done uh, sooner than later because uh, it's, you know, it's Georgia. We're starting to get like Florida weather, right? Where we get like rain for crazy for like, you know, 20 minutes and then it goes away. So yeah, get your... Uh, Get your mowing, man. I uh, you are excused from the live stream. I want to have you as a viewer, but definitely get your mowing. That's uh, that's that's pretty important. Really appreciate the super chat, sir. Thank you uh, for the support. We got uh, Dalai Lama's tea is in the house. What's going on, Dalai Lamas? And um, uh, yeah, so it, it 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 was Justin. I thought so. Yeah, so up New York is also give, congratulating uh, Justin on uh, the baby girl. So if you guys don't follow the Lawn Whisper on um on instagram or follow his youtube channel you guys should you should be doing both of those things especially if you have cool season grass like he is um you know the cool season guy he knows a ton about it about it and in general it's just really really fun fun to watch really down to earth content and uh he's always always fun to listen to so definitely uh, go give uh the lawn whisper uh some love if you guys have not as yet all right, so B. Gaines is in the house. He says, happy uh, Friday, Bermuda Lawn is fantastic. Uh, my lawn stood out during the 4th of July weekend after mowing my lawn four times in seven days. Thanks, Ron. That's the thing, man. I mean, you know, it's it's difficult to, to keep up that level of mowing long term. Like, I've been doing quite a bit of it. Like, trust me, it's a lot of work. Um, but, you know, if again, if you have some event, some major event, like, again, 4th of July, uh, you know, Memorial Day weekend, if you want to, if that's something you want to keep your lawn nice for or Labor Day weekend, you know, here in a, in a couple of months, um, you know, if you, if you can increase your mowing frequency the week leading up to whatever it is, like, you're going to see how nice the lawn is going to look just, just from increasing the mowing. Like mowing is literally uh, the secret sauce. There's nothing, nothing really beats mowing outside of, you know, once the soil is in great shape, getting enough sunlight, 
Mo Mo and Mo some more. So I'm glad that you uh, that you're that people took note of all your hard work. B gains is always nice. So uh, so congrats. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. All right. So Sanj is in the house. He has a question about mushrooms popping up in the backyard. So he says, um, after the, all the tropical storm rain, little mushrooms started popping up in the backyard. Are these okay? And how do you prevent them? Yeah, so, I mean, the mushrooms that you're seeing, that's like the surface of, or the, the, the part of the fungus that you can actually see in your lawn. Now, if it's, if it's a small, I mean, if, if they're like the kind that come up on Alex's lawn or my lawn occasionally, in most cases, um, they pop up early in the morning and by the time like mid-morning rolls around 10 o'clock or so when some heat gets out, they shrivel up and, and go away. They die away. Um, you know, I, I honestly wouldn't worry about it. I mean, you, you could put down uh, fungicide if, if you want, but I mean, especially since you didn't say, Sanj, that you're having other issues in the lawn, like brown patch or things like that, um, and especially since it, it was right after a ton of rain, now that rain is gone, as the lawn dries out, you know, because you're not going to be getting, you know, like a monsoon on it, as it dries out, that in of itself should cause a lot of uh, the mushrooms you're seeing to subside after a while. So, I, I mean, you can apply things to the lawn to get rid of them, but I mean, I, I would honestly uh, just give the lawn, just, just give it some time. Let, let things, let the lawn dry out a little bit and see if you're still having the issue after you give it a chance to, to do that. So, I mean, that's what I do on my lawn. I, um, you know, I, I don't go out, run out and put fungicide down on my lawn every, every chance I get. Um, and on some level, you know, I paid for that this, uh, this spring. So, you know, mushrooms are not something I would put fungicide down for, but things like, um, like in the fall to prevent things like, like a summer spring dead patch, those are, that's the time when you'd want to do like a fungicide. But I, I would, to answer your question, I would not worry about it. I really wouldn't. All right, so we got Doug Emmy saying, I got my lemonade uh, ready to go. You and me both, man. I got, this is just Publix lemonade tonight. You know, just uh, just the standard Publix. I had Chick-fil-A earlier, but this is just uh, the, sta just the standard, my, my standard 50-50 blend, like half water, half lemonade. Uh-huh. All right. Let's see here. And a more, I knew it. You know what? I, I wonder how long it would take for this to happen. He says, Ron, I think Ron missed a few mo uh, spots there on the intro. So what you're seeing there, Moro, is where the camera was set up in the intro in the live stream. So when I'm making those passes, literally the camera, even though it seems like it's pretty far away, the camera is about you know, four feet um, for where I'm, where I'm turning. And where, if you notice there, I mean, you have to rewatch it after we're done. It, it, it literally falls off. Like right there is a slope. Like if you guys look at my backyard, like where the lawn falls away, literally the camera was set up right there. So some of why you're not, why there was a little bit of dew in some spots when I made some turns is I made the turn like right on the hill spot. So I didn't set it down, I didn't drop it down right away because I didn't want to take a chance of scalping the lawn. Uh, but yes, I, I figured, I was wondering how long it would take for someone to point that out. But uh, you, last week no one did and you have uh, the honors this week. So you you caught it, you caught that. But yeah, it's, it's because of where the camera was. I didn't want to hit it with the mower and also um, it's a slope right there. So it's hard to see in the video, but it's actually, it actually does fall off a bit. Uh, great, great, uh, great question or great, great point. Good eye. Good eye. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, do you have Timothy in the house? You're saying, Hey Ron and everyone, what's going on? Timothy Smith. Nice to, uh, nice to see you. Um, uh, Mr. B die and Ned G's in the house. Um, and let's see, uh, let's see, let's see what, um, Huntsville Bama says is, 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 does Celsius so stress on, uh, Bermuda? I guess your question he's asking is, does Celsius, or can Celsius uh, stress Bermuda? Um, yeah, I mean, any herbicide can stress, um, can stress Bermuda. Here's the thing you need to keep in mind. And again, another reason why, um, you know, one, you want to always read the label, but why I'm also like a real stickler of avoiding putting herbicides on my lawn unless I absolutely have to, is that even though like say cel something like Celsius, which is a great, great herbicide, as far as like, as far as like, if you can only have one herbicide for warm season grass, like Celsius would probably be the one. It's a little bit more pricey, but um, but that that would be like the one that I'd have to have in my cabin if I get if I had to have just only one herbicide. Um, but like anything else, even though it is rated as safe for Bermuda and St. Aug and Zoysia, um, it's still a herbicide. And all that means is not even that, that means is even though it's not gonna kill the grass, it's not gonna kill your desirable grass, it still can stress it. I mean, it's not gonna um it's not gonna yellow it to the extent like uh like speed zone or dismiss will. Like you put speed zone or dismiss on your lawn, you're definitely gonna see some yellowing. But Celsius um tends to be one of the milder ones, which again, it's probably why it's so expensive, right? Because you can use it as temps get higher, whereas a lot of the other herbicides have temperature restrictions. With Celsius, there really aren't um temp restrictions um, like some of the other post-emergent herbicides. Um, and it doesn't discolor the turf um, as bad as, say, something like Dismiss or Speed Zone, which is, tends to be a little bit cheaper, 
Um, but like, like anything else, you get what you pay for. So hopefully that um, helps answer your question, uh, Huntsville, Obama. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's a good, great herbicide. If you're uh, if you if you're looking for something that you can spring for it, uh, go for, go for that. Just make sure you also use a surfactant with it if you decide you're going to use Celsius. Um, but yeah, it's a great great herbicide. All right, we got Ray Jasso in the house. What's going on, uh, Ray? Happy Friday. Yep, thanks for coming to hang out, sir. I really appreciate it. And the next question we have here is from Up New York Lawn, or more of a, a comment. He says, hey, Ron, in a few days, I'm gonna be getting my hands on a seven blade, 20 inch McLean. That's awesome, man, congrats. We got, you know, even if you don't have it as yet, we're gonna give you like the clap, even though you don't, you don't technically have it, but you know, we're gonna, we're gonna extend you that grace. So you're gonna get that in, uh, in seven, in, in a few days. You said, so excited. I was so sure about getting a groove front roller, but wondering if smooth would be better for my big project. Um, it depends, man. I mean, is it, in other words, is there a night and day difference between a smooth roller and a grooved roller? Um, depends on how, how tall you're cutting your glon. If, if, you're, if you're cutting it shorter, like I say, once you get under three quarters of an inch in that half inch space, that's when a grooved roller really shines. Like it does a really good job getting an even, an even cut um, in the turf, whereas a, a smooth roller tends to, um, I say mash the grass down, but it tends to mash the grass down more. I mean, it, it, here's, here's how the best way to answer your question up New York lawn. Like there's a video and I need to find it so I can actually link it sometime when someone asks me this question. Like the USGA, the US Golf Association, they actually did a test on greens between like smooth rollers and grooved rollers and they found no benefit to cutting greens with smooth rollers. So they pretty much said, we've been using groove rollers for a while, but you know, is there any benefit to really using a smooth roller? And there really wasn't. So, um, you know, if you have the choice between the two, if you want to start smooth and then go groove to a later point, that's fine. That's always an option too. It's going to be more expensive. Um, but, uh, but grooved, if you are going lower is, um, ultimately where you probably want to be. If you, if you can get one of those for your McLean, I think, I think real rollers makes one for the McLean. I'm almost positive they do, but, um, but yeah, either one you're going to get a great result with, but you know, don't be like, Oh, I must graduate to a, a smooth, ro a grooved roller. Just, you know, Grab one if you can um, from from the from the get go if you if you uh, if you can go for it. All right, we got um, a big Georgia fan in the house tonight. We got Diamond Shotties coming here to represent the the Georgia Bulldogs. Repres always like that, sir. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. And then we got Skinny Geek one hundred one zero. He says, "Long time listener, first time caller. Thanks for coming to hang out, sir. Uh, always good to uh, to see new people in uh, the live stream." Chaz Bishop's in the house. And uh, Adam Reed says, where are my home brewers and gardeners? I just made some fresh dill pickles and jalapenos and the neighbor and myself just put down some iron plus. That's cool, man. Um, you, that's going to be you. I, I am definitely not a, um, a gardener. Uh, I, just, I just do grass, man. I'm, it's, it's bad enough to even get me to trim shrubs, uh, much less growing, uh, you know, growing plants. So that's more like a JG or LG type thing. But, uh, but yeah, not, not my, uh, my thing. Um, all right. So Chad Fleming, says, new to your channel. Uh, what's up all? Thank you so much, Chad, for coming to hang out. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun, man. I'm glad that you are taking some time out of your Friday evening to come hang out in uh, the live stream. Always, uh, always cool. Always good to see new guests, new listeners. And, uh, Al Wolf's in the house. There's no question. I just, uh, I just, ha I, I just, I, I must have your passion. I guess that's what you're trying to say. You said, I must have your passion. I think you meant must have my passion. Um, yeah, passion or craziness, depending on which way you look at it. You know, I guess there's a small line between the, between the two. I just, I just really enjoy it, man. I enjoy, um, working on my lawn. I enjoy helping out, uh, helping you guys out with, uh, with your lawn care, your lawn care questions. I mean, the, the big thing is that I here this year, more so than last year, granted last year, it was harder to get in touch with me. I wasn't like giving out my email address as much. Um, but this year there's been a ton of people that have been like emailing in with lots of great results showing me like between the like one increased mowing, um, and then also incorporating like the carbon kit and Turfplex and uh, the Humic Max. It just, just results have been getting in their lawn. Uh, it's pretty awesome, man. Cause it's always, it's always cool to say, to see that, you know, it's one thing for me to do it on my lawn cause I baby my lawn and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm always, I was always out there looking at it, but it's cool to see that someone that is not as hardcore as, you know, or slash crazy as I am, can still use the products, still apply them properly and still get a great result. So thank you guys so much for letting me know about your results. That's always, um, always fun. All right. So we got another super chat here that I got to get down here and get to, uh, from San Antonio holding it down. Super chat received. He says, happy Friday, Ron. Uh, thanks for all you do. Thank you so much, sir. I really, uh, do appreciate it. Thank you for the support. I, uh, it, it's going to help pay for the, uh, the turf plex that I got to send out to, uh, to somebody here, um, 
probably Monday. It probably won't go out tomorrow, but I'll, uh, I'll put the order and everything and get it out to you guys. The first part of next week, it will ship out to you guys. All right. Uh, Robert Rainey, uh, holding the high poses in the house. The next question we have here is from uh, Dalai Lama's T, or more of a comment. She says, hello, I have a terrible moss and algae problem due to all the rain here in San Antonio, a low area, and my neighbor's water running into my yard. Help. Uh. So the issue, here's the thing, um, Dalai Lama. I mean, without, without, um, without, I mean, the biggest, the biggest way to get rid of or to, to help prevent the area that you're having the moss issue from being an ongoing thing is to do something about drainage. Like, uh, Again, I don't know how uh, if it's possible to to put do something or work with your neighbor to do something where you you guys are are diverting the water where it's not running into your lawn. I know here in like the subdivision that I'm in, like that you can't you actually can't have like large amounts of water from your lawn running into a neighbor's lawn. Like they they purposely grade. Sorry about that. They purposely grade the lawns to prevent that kind of thing from happening. So if we can do something to prevent um, to reduce the water. Um, that can help. Um, as far as things you can use is kind of a, you can use like a um, Moss X or there are, there are products like that that can work to help knock it back. Um, applying some iron, um, iron can also help, um, can help burn Moss. It's, it's, it, uh, moss doesn't like iron um, being um, applied to it, but really the, the long-term cure is to fix the drainage issue, right? Is to do something about um, that low area um, because that part you can work on, you know, you may not be able to make, get your neighbor to, to consider installing drainage, but if there's something you can do as far as, um, you know, like maybe raising that low area, I don't know if you can put like a catch basin or something in the main spot where the water's coming into your lawn, but the, the, the algae versus trying to target the algae directly, let's try and fix the conditions that are causing the algae and moss to, to come in. And if we get rid of that, um, then I think your problem is going to become less of an issue, if that makes sense. So there are products you can use. Like there's, there's a product from Scott's Moss X or Moss EX, however you want to pronounce it, that can work. But it's, the next time you have a heavy rain, it's just going to be an issue again, right? So I, I would see what we can do around getting, um, you know, correcting the, the drainage problem so we don't have a, a, an area where water is pooling in your lawn. Hope that helps. Sorry you're dealing with that. But at least you got rain. I mean, at least the parts of your lawn that didn't get soaked are probably looking pretty good, right? I imagine. Okay, so Helmet Ruckus is in the house. We got a question from him or a comment, I think. He says, uh, hey, Ron, I've got uh, ears in my zoysia lawn, which is not looking so good. Weird thing is exactly, uh, that is exactly in the areas uh, a lot of grass blades have white tips. Um, any ideas? As always, thanks a lot. Sure. So um, um, what this could be, Helmet, what this could be, is I would check your mower blades. I check to make sure they're sharp. Now I don't I, I don't have like a grass blade to show you what it should look like. But whenever you if you're cutting your lawn with a especially with a real mower, um, with a real mower what you'll find is the grass is going to look the best way to describe it is it looks pinched. It's almost like um, that you have the grass blade and then it kind of becomes like a like a whiter like in your case like a white or brownish triangle that's pinched and elongated a little bit. Right. That's uh, a good sign that you're one either your your uh, the 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 tolerance between your reel and bed knife isn't set properly. I mean, you need to, you need to like tighten that up a little bit, or it's time for your mower to be sharpened. Um, if you're using a rotary mower, same thing. You know, you know, you definitely want to make sure you're using a sharp blade because that is um, that can cause these kinds of issues. Now, the thing is, you're saying it's only happening in certain areas, um, so it, it could also be a case where um, like that area is just drying out quite a bit more so than the other areas. You could have some localized dry spot um, issues that could be a could be an issue, but um, I would take a look at the grass. It sounds like you already have and, and make sure, like even the areas that are looking good, check the grass there too and see if the, how, the, how the edge looks. It should be a nice, you want a nice clean cut, right? That's gonna allow the grass to heal and recover from the injury of mowing um, a lot, um, you know, a lot sooner, a lot, a lot better. Um, and and I, think, I think that's, if I had to guess, that's probably what's going on. Because here's the thing, guys, you know, with the summer months, even though like this is really the go time for Zoysia, you know, Bermuda, St. Augustine, like the summer, like when you get some heat stress, that really exposes other, like different parts of your program. So like if you are not watering enough, the summer is going to show that. If you're, um, you know, if, if your equipment isn't sharp, which is a, a pretty common problem, especially now, like where would you be able to get away with that in the spring? Um, when the summer hits and, you know, the grass is already stressed and now we're adding more stress to it by cutting it, um, you really want to make sure your equipment is sharp and well adjusted so that you're minimizing damage or injury to the turf, right? So I would check that helmet if you haven't as yet. Uh, that would be um, where I would go because I can tell you in a week of getting from uh, the, the, 
if that's the problem, literally within a week, you can see a night and day difference in your entire lawn. Like Alex had that very same issue with his. His true cut was, um, it just needed to be sharpened. Um, and he, his lawn, he was cutting it regularly, doing the same thing I was doing, mowing um, every, every other day in his case. And his lawn still had like a yellowish haze over the entire lawn. So, you know, we started looking at it and I said, there's something, something going on. You're doing everything right. You're mowing enough. And when I picked it up, he described, well, like his grass looked like what I'm describing. You know, elongated tip, not being cut properly. So check your mower blades, make sure they're sharp um, because that's a big part of getting a great looking lawn. So hopefully that helps. Um, if if that tends out to be the case, uh, drop me an email here. Let me know, uh, ron at golfcourselawn.com. I'd be interested in hearing what you find it, it ends up being. But it's either watering or more than likely it's probably... Uh, your mower blades. All right. Uh, JG Papa Mo's low. He says, and he's only eight. Um, oh, I think you're talking about your, um, your, I think your nephew. All right. Uh, let's see what other questions uh, we have here. Uh, Thomas Tucker's in the house. He's probably got one here. I think he's going to stump me on it, but I'll take it anyway. Thomas says, what's up, Ron? He says, with all the rain we've been getting in South Carolina, I am worried about fungus. Any recommendations uh, that doesn't contain uh, FRAC 3 or FRAC 11? I'm looking to rotate it with Headway G. Um, no, not that, not really that I'm aware of, um, Thomas. I mean, I, I, get re I get pretty good results. Um, I, I mean, I get really good results just using Azoxia Strobin for the most part. Um, but then Headway G, which has both of them, has the propoconazole and Azoxia Strobin, most people tend to get a pretty good result with that. So unless there's a reason, unless you, you've got like this huge fungus problem um, in your lawn, like, you know, headway should knock it out. It should, it should, I mean, even, at, even at the preventative rate, that really should be all you need to keep the uh, to keep fung lawn fungus in check. Like I, I use it on um, my lawn in early May when I had um, some large patch, like one application, like, you know, smoked out the large, large patch and the grass like healed up and recovered really nicely. I did a follow-up application at the end of, um, at the end of April, early May, uh, just as my preventative for the season. And the lawn's been, been fine ever since. So unless there's a reason that you're really looking to rotate, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know anything else off the top of my head out of those two. They're probably, I'm sure there are other fungicides that are rated for residential use that you can use other than, um, headway or propiconazole, but, um, Nothing, nothing that that jumps to the top of my head because I've just had honestly really good results with those. So hopefully that helps. Probably not the best answer to your question, but um, yeah, no, I, I don't have don't have one for you on that. Perhaps someone in the chat that does will uh, will chime in. I appreciate your question, sir. All right. Uh, so Alan C has a question. Uh, he says, "Hey Ron, what are your thoughts on top dressing?" with black cow or mushroom compost. I've never used either. I've heard really good things about black cow though. Like, I mean, there was one, I remember when I did the, when I did the video on top dressing uh, the lawn, like top dressing a slope with soil um, that I did, I think it was like early April, I did that one using carbonized PN. And I got quite a few comments, people were saying, and somebody actually emailed me saying, yeah, yeah, carbonized PN, it might be good, but you know, black cow, that's the truth, man. And I'm like, I've never used it, but I'm sure it is, man. I'm sure it's really good stuff. And a lot of people seem to like it as far as a compost goes. Um, I've never used it myself. I've never actually seen it like in person. So I don't know how well or how um, good it would be as a top dressing mix. Assuming it's clean, meaning assuming that it's not like um, you don't have any trash in it like sticks or other, other debris. Um, and assuming that it doesn't all clump up. Like you actually when you spread, when you put it on the lawn, you're able to put a, a leveling rake on it and it breaks up and disperses pretty evenly. It should work just fine. I mean, that it, I, uh, it should just work fine. I, I mean, as far as mushroom compost, never done that. Um, I never really even heard of top dressing with mushroom compost. So I can't really speak to that one, Alan C. But I know there are people that use black cow. They seem to have good results with it. I've just personally never done that to be able to say what kind of results you would get. But I mean, there, there are people that are very religious about their black cow uh, compost. So give it a go. Give it a go. I, don't, I think you'll probably get pretty good results with it if you, if you decide to go that route. I can tell you that carbonized PN works great. Um, but it's probably a bit more, more pricey than, uh, than, than black cow. So it just depends on which way uh, you want to go. Great question. All right, Papa Mo's Low is uh, is chiming in. He says, FYI, Dr. Wu from Oklahoma State will be announcing a new cold tolerant hybrid Bermuda next Tuesday. Don't tell me that, Papa Mo's Low. I don't want to have to go do a lawn renovation. Don't do that. I mean, I've, I've just now getting the Tiffway and the Arden 15 in. I mean, I, I you know, if, if it's if it's the bee's knees, if it looks awesome and it's, you know, more cold tolerant, then it might be, might be cool. I've never done a full lawn renovation. It would pain my heart to like smoke out the lawn and, and do something else. But I mean, we'll see. I mean, it'll be interesting to see what, um, 
what Dr. Wu from Oklahoma State comes back with uh, as far as Bermuda. We can be we can be like the cool kids, like those uh, like those cool season grass, right? We can get we can have like a a spring growing season and a late fall growing season. That would be kind of cool, just as long as it goes dormant in the winter. Because I'm not I'm not about that moment in winter life. So uh, we'll see. But thanks for letting me know, man. I'll definitely uh, I'll definitely look out for that. I should make a note here about uh, about that. Dr. Wu, Oklahoma State. That's a cool. Uh, thanks for letting us know, man. Appreciate that. Okay, and then Dwayne James is um, in the house. Uh, I think someone that's new to lawn care and new to the entire uh, process. He says, um, I'm new to lawn care. I bought a Toro mower. How do I get a great lawn uh, like you, Ron? Um, great question. So I'm not sure which Toro you have, whether it's a recycler or whether it's a real mower, but either way, the, 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 the main thing, the most important thing to a great lawn, right, is, um, at least if it's warm season grass anyway, all, all grass really, but especially when it comes to Bermuda, is create good soil. Um, if it's a warm season grass like Bermuda, minimize shade. So like, you know, everything else, everything else I'm telling you is going to be for not if you have like a ton of shade on the grass. Like the grass is never gonna really thicken up and do well um, if it's Bermuda, if you, have a, if you have shade issues. And then outside of that, it's just mowing. It's mowing a lot, right? So if you have um, that Toro mower, um, you know, I'm not sure if you got it brand new, but the big thing is uh, cut the grass. If, again, I'll answer your question is if you got you have Bermuda. If your lawn will tolerate being cut at an inch and a half um, and you have the time to get out there and mow it uh, at least twice a week, um, that's, you're already halfway there. So there's other things you can do as well too. Like I, I always recommend um, if you're really being serious, you wanna be you know, as, very, as very particular as you can about getting a good result on your lawn, um, I would get a soil test done. The one that I like is from my soil. The reason why I like this one is that it's super easy to use, like super easy to use. You go and collect your samples, um, you know, from different spots of your lawn, you throw them into the enclosed container, which has a deionized water and ion exchange resin. They even give you a scoop. They give you a scoop for the sample. They give you a, you know, self-addressed envelope to, re to return it to them. And then away you go. And literally within a week, you're going to have your results. And the thing with, um, with that Dwayne is, you know, soil testing is important because it's literally the answers to the test. Like I get questions every week on what fertilizer should I be applying to my lawn? Like what, you know, should I use this one or that one? Or, and you know, really without like soil test data, I'm just, I can tell you, you know what, go buy Malorganite. That's probably going to be okay. You know, if you want to buy Humic Max, you can probably use that too. It's probably going to be okay. But if you really want to, if you really want to optimize things and make sure that you are correcting deficiencies in your lawn and your soil, getting a soil test is a really important part of that. Um, but yeah, once you have your soil test, we're going to, you're going to fertilize based on that. Um, some other things you can do, some other optional extras you can do are incorporating like a biostimulant, um, program. So like incorporating something like carbon pro G or essential G or the, uh, the golf course lawn carbon kit. So, uh, these guys here, so like, uh, really zero, um, nutri kelp, like these, these products, um, help improve the quality of the soil biology because you think about it, right? If you, if we, if we think down, if we think about, like what it takes to grow great grass. Just it, it's very at its core level, right? Like grass is a plant and plants grow in dirt, right? They grow in soil. So the better we can optimize that soil, great grass just becomes a byproduct or healthy grass becomes a byproduct of just great soil. So if we, so that's why I'm kind of leading you down this road of, you know, get a soil test done, fertilize according to that soil test data. Um, and then once you've done that, just mow. So the soil testing and the, the products will make the soil healthy, will make the grass green, but a great looking lawn comes from mowing. So the more you can mow your lawn, the more you can get out there and mow it, uh, the better it's gonna look. So, uh, you know, twice a week, I always say twice a week is the minimum that you really need for um, a good looking lawn. And summer months, if you can get out there a third time, even better, but really mowing is the big thing, is, is the, that's the thing that separates, um, separates lawns. The, th the biggest difference between my lawn and Alex's lawn and the other lawns in the neighborhood is not so much that it's been top dressed and it's got all this other stuff done to it, it's that it gets cut more than anybody else's lawn. They just get mowed all the time. And then when you top dress it and do all these other things, then it's, it's beautiful, it's gorgeous, right? But none of those things, or those things matter less if you're not mowing as much. So hopefully that helps, hopefully that helps. Um, it looks like you have a follow-up question here. You say, you don't even know what height you should mow it on. So I, if you, what will help um, Dwayne is you can list down here in the comments what type of grass you have. I can tell you for Bermuda, for, a gra for warm season grass like Bermuda or Zoysia, those like to be cut a little bit shorter. So if you can cut those around an inch and a half, 
um, the grass is going to do better there. It's going to grow thicker. It's going to act like natural weed control. Um, and it's just all kinds of good things are going to happen at that height. It's going to require more of a time commitment on your part, though, in order to do that. So let me know what kind of grass you have um, down there, and we can figure that out. Um, if you got St. Augustine, you need to mow it taller. So without knowing the grass type, I can't tell you how tall you should be mowing it. All right. Um, next question we got here, LJ is saying, do you know what these white flies are and how can I get rid of them in my grass? I forget what those are actually called. Um, SMK was in the live stream last week and he answered that. And he said that um, the, the answer was um, bifenthrin, so, so bif bifenthrin. So if you can find um, like that in a granular form, I think I may have a link here to that here. Um, that is, that's something you can use that will, um, that will kill, that's insecticide that will kill, uh, kill the, the, the bugs you're talking about, those, those white flies that you're talking about. Um, let me send that to you here, um, at LJ, uh, that should help, but yeah, this, this should, um, that should do the trick for that. All right, uh, next up we got Jeremy White, Mr. Jiu-Jitsu in the house. What's up, big bro? Hello, everyone. Hello, Jeremy. Hopefully all is going well with you, sir. Appreciate you, uh, coming to hang out in the, uh, in the live stream. And uh, let's see, we have Skinny Geek 1010 in the house. He has a question about the swale area and uh, clay and, and drainage. Let's get into it. He says, hey, Ron, I'm in Central Texas and my side yard of 40 feet wide. That's, that's Texas for you. You guys do everything big in Texas, right? Like my side yard area is like eight feet. Texas, 40 feet. So you, for, oh, 40 inches. I said 40 inches. I said foot feet. It's inches. Okay, well, still, still pretty wide. Uh, has, a, has a swale area that doesn't drain well. Would it help to plug, aerate, and fill with sand to help introduce more sand into the clay? Um, yes. So I can tell you that um, with my lawn, my lawn in particular, when first moving in here, like someone could like, could like, you know, I don't know, like if you got any kind of a drizzle, like the lawn would flood and it would stay flooded. Water would settle on it for a lot for, you know, a day or so. It would stay for way longer than it should. Um, top dressing single-handedly was one of the best things I did to my lawn from a standpoint of, of drainage. Um, so you're talking about just plugging and filling with sand. I don't know. That might work. I never actually considered just, just, uh, just, um, just aerating and, um, and, and just filling in, um, just filling just, just the aeration holes with sand. What I would be more prone to do is I would aerate that area, uh, Skinny Geek, and then I would lightly top dress that area with like a 70-30 mix of like a 70%, um, some kind of a coarse sand, so like masonry sand or uh, river sand, and then 30% like a compost, some kind of rich organic material. And that does help with drainage. Like with my lawn, that absolutely helps. Alex's lawn, he had an area every year, every time it rained, um, like there's a, if you guys have seen his his house from like the advantage of mine, like that, there's a big section of the roof that drains in right into the lawn. I'm not sure why the builder did it that way, you know, heaven help us, but that's, that's what they did. Um, and this season, after his second top dress, now water doesn't really settle there anymore. It's, it just literally, when a bunch of water comes down, the lawn just like sucks it up. It just, just pulls it away from the surface. So top dressing absolutely can help that. Um, you know, so what you're describing is, uh, it, it should work. I wouldn't do a 100% sand, I would do a blend. I would do a 70, 30 mix. Uh, that is what I would go for. I, I tend to get good results with that. And, and I think that's, that is safe for, um, that's a safe recommendation for most people. You can do hundred percent sand, but a 70, 30 mix is a, um, is a safer recommendation because that's less likely to cause problems, um, with your existing soil. So just something to keep in mind. Great question. And again, thank you for, um, hanging out and being the first time you said long time listener, first time caller. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully that helps. All right, uh, so Chad has a question here about dollar spot on cool season grasses. Any idea for a fungicide to, to treat dollar spot in cool season grasses, perennial ryegrass, or Kentucky bluegrass? Uh, yeah, Chad, so um, something, anything that contains propiconazole, like that's what you're gonna wanna use for, uh, for dollar spot. So headway, if you're looking for something in a granular, headway G is a great option. I can probably send you a link to that here. Let me see if I can find that. Yep. Got it right here. So headway G, if you're looking for something that is a, it's a granular that, um, that contains propiconazole and is effective against, um, dollar spot. Um, you can go with that guy. Um, you can also get propiconazole in a liquid as well too. If you feel comfortable mixing and spraying it, that's an option, but, um, headway G is a, is a good option. Great, great product. Um, it contains both azoxystrobin and propiconazole, but really the propiconazole is what you want 
for um, for the dollar spot. So hopefully that helps. Sorry you're dealing with that, but uh, yeah, get yourself some headway G. Uh, throw that down um, at the at the curative rate if you already have. It sounds like you already have it there because um, on the label it's gonna have like a it's gonna have a um, like a like a treatment rate, like a preventative rate, and there's also a curative rate. So make sure when you go down there. Read the label um, for dollar spot, and it'll tell you like what, like how many pounds or how heavy um, you should be putting it down. One thing that you got to keep in mind too, if depending on which spreader you have, so, you, so it might tell you like three pounds per thousand, right? I'm not sure exactly what it's going to say for dollar spot, but let's just say that's what it is, right? So your question you're going to now ask is, well, how do I put it down at three pounds per thousand? Um, so a quick hack, and because there's not actually a lot of spreader settings listed on the Headway G label that I could find. What you can do is go look at the label for a product called Heritage G. They're both made by Syngenta. Um, Heritage G has um, spreader settings for a lot of common spreaders like Earthways, Lesco's, a lot of more common like commercial grades or prosumer type spreaders. Um, and it also has the spreader settings for the different rates. So if you're doing it at like at a preventative rate, this is a spreader setting you'd use. If you're using it at a curative rate, this is a spreader setting you would use. So um, you want to apply headway but um, go check out the Heritage G label, which you can find online, and it will have spreader settings for those different like poundages for, you know, depending on the rate that you're trying to put the product down at. So that's a quick, quick tip. Hopefully that helps. Again, sorry you're dealing with dollar spot, but um, Headway should knock that out. And uh, definitely let me know how it goes, man. I appreciate you uh, hanging out in the live stream. We have um, Joanne Lampron in the live stream. Um, you know, thanks so much for hanging out, Joanne. I appreciate you coming to to uh, to hang out. Um, sorry about the uh, Canadians. I know it was uh, you know they, they fought the hard fight, man. They came back and they got one, but uh, Tampa Bay was just too tough. So, um, but yeah, Joanne's a good as a good friend, um, good friend of mine. So yeah, it was just always thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream and support the channel. I appreciate it. All right, G Free's in the house. G Free guys it was actually the winner of what did you win? G Free three hundred one. I think you won the sticker last time in the last giveaway, right? So you have an actual winner here. So just you know keep up alive, guys. Hang out in the, hang out in the live stream. To have your chance of uh, you know you know a sticker of different types or a sole test kit or turfplex if you if you are interested in that so uh, thanks for hanging out G free I appreciate you hanging out in the live stream as as always B Gaines is in the house he says hey site one transferred a forty pound bags uh, the forty pound bags of hydrotain from the California area to Georgia for me impressed with the results after one point five weeks yeah that's cool man it's good that they uh, they did that it's it's uh it's funny like um. Uh, you know, the hydrotain or the, the stuff they sell, it's, kind of, it's called like a, something OC on the bag. But I, I think you guys have seen it in the videos that I put down. Like that is hydrotain. It's just labeled or it's got like, you know, it's got it's like Lesco eyes or Site One eyes uh, as far as like the branding on it. But it's a, it's the same stuff. It's made by Ecologel. Uh, and yeah, it's great. It's a it's a great result, great product. Um, you know, and again, make sure you make sure you put it, make sure you water it in after application. Sounds like you already did. But I'm I'm glad that Site One was able to get you it in the uh, in the larger quantities, especially if you have a bigger lawn. That makes a lot of sense. But if you don't have a Site One nearby, you can get it in 15 pound bags at the golf course lawn store. So shameless plug for anyone that's uh, interested in trying out uh, Hydrotain uh, this year. All right, so Troy Ridley has a question about um, I think Sedge Hammer or Nut Sedge. He says, "Hey Ron." Uh, I now I now have Sedge Hammer and Image. Should I mix them together and pour into a hose? Uh, and spray bottles or apply each application separately. I will apply when it stops raining. Uh, Central Texas Bermuda. I would apply them separately, um, Troy. Um, the, the, whenever I've done that concoction, I've done the image first, um, and then I followed it up with the sedge hammer. I've not, I've not mixed them both together. You might be able to. You might be able to, but because I've never actually done that myself, um, I don't want to tell you to do it. Because even if they would make, even if they, um, the mode of action for image is more from the root zone, and sedge is, is the sedge hammers on is on top. Like it's, I think it's, it's I believe it's foliar absorbed. So, uh, so for that reason alone, I would just do them separately, right? Like you're gonna want to put the image in, you're gonna want to water that in, and then sedge hammer, follow the label, and just apply it um, per the instructions. As far as applying sedge hammer. With hose and bottles, um, I know you can, image you can get away with that um, because there is like a there's a hose end version of image image that you can just buy at Home Depot. Um, but um, sedge hammer, I'm not sure if it's labeled to be applied that way. I, I have to check the label to be sure. So check if you have it already, check the label and make sure you're following like the rate. Like if they don't give you a setting for a particular like hose end sprayer. Um, I wouldn't do that. Like I, I would definitely follow the label when it comes to applying that because you don't want to take a chance of over applying it and, and potentially 
uh, damaging your lawn. But that, but once you do get them both down, that concoction, that blend works very, very well um, against sedges, against nut sedge. So, uh, great question. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that helps. Okay, uh, JK has a question about uh, celebration Bermuda. He says, "I just found out my Bermuda, my builder." use Celebration Bermuda. Wow, you have a really nice builder. That's, that's pretty awesome. That's uh, normally one people have to request, so it's, that's cool that they actually install that for you. He says, you love it, but it's definitely going to require a few verticuts per season. Uh, do you or have you ever verticut your Tifway Arden 15? If so, any content on it? Yeah, so it's been verticut one time. I think it was like two years ago. And then the beginning of this season, I scarified my Arden 15. So there is a video on that um, JK, um, I might be able to find it for you, but if you look through my content, you'll, you should be able to see, you should be able to find the video of when I scarified, um, or dethatched my, uh, my lawn. Yep. Here it is right here. Yep. I got it right here. Found the video. Yay for YouTube studio. And I'll put that here in, um, in for you. So at JK, here's a video that will show you, um, what that process was, uh, was like. So hopefully that helps. Yeah, it definitely, as far as my lawn, I, I did it at the start of the season um, and not a ton of material came out. Like I got like six bags of material out of like 12,000 square feet, which from what I understand isn't a lot when it comes to like scarifying a vertical, um, definitely not for verticutting, we're just for scarifying the lawn. Um, but if I were to do it now, which it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to actually uh, dethatch my lawn now because it's starting to get really, really thick. Kind of like what you're seeing with your uh, celebration. Like the Tiffway right now with all the heat is getting like, it's getting really dense. So it probably could benefit uh, from being thinned out a bit. But check out that video. It shows you like the process that I used, how I how I did it. It's really not that, there's not a whole lot to it. I mean, you just make passes around over the lawn in multiple directions and then rake out all the material that comes out of it, comes out uh, that you get, that you pull out. So that's the, that's the, the process in a nutshell. Um, but yeah, when I did, when I did have it verticut, um, I had a service do it. So, um, but yeah, so, so hopefully that helps. Um, and I'm glad that you're, you know, you know, you're getting into, into the more, um, you're getting more serious about, about taking care about your, your celebration and uh, yeah, definitely thinning it out is probably a good idea. Like I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about that for the, uh, especially for the back lines. It's getting really, really, really thick, really dense. Okay, so next up we got Todd. He has a question here. Uh, he says, um, if a lawn is relatively fat, flat, is it a bad idea to go 100% compost for a top dress? Or should you always at least mix some soil and sand with the mix? Great question. So while, while I get ready to answer um, Todd's question, throat's get a little bit dry. Um, so I'm gonna take a sip of my lemonade. And guys, while I do that, I know we're, we're just an hour in. I know, I know it's early, I know it's early. But if you guys wouldn't mind touching that like button ever so gently, it's free for you guys. It sends good vibes to the YouTube algorithm and sends more people our way. And it gives me a chance to take a sip of my lemonade while I get the answer for Todd's question. Uh -uh. Yum, yum. Always good. All right. So Todd, the way we should begin thinking about this, this question is it depends on what your goals are, right? Uh, if you think about, if you're looking at it from a standpoint of strictly feeding the soil, just improving the quality of the soil, going hundred percent compost is a fine strategy. There's nothing wrong with that. Especially if your lawn's already relatively flat, where you start putting in sand is when you're also trying to add some structure. So if you're trying to like smooth out any little bumps or undulations in the lawn, you're trying to make it a little smoother so you can mow it a little bit lower, um, that is where um, adding some sand to it helps. So it's not like if you do if you do 100% sand, you're committing some cardinal sin. If you do 100% compost, you're committing some cardinal sin. It depends on what your goals are. Good example, kind of like what you're saying, like my front lawn wasn't, um, it wasn't like, a, it's not a flat lawn, it's a slope. But earlier this year, like the video that I did on top dressing the lawn with soil, I used just carbon ISP and I used exact, I did exactly what you're doing. I just did a hundred percent compost type material. It was like, you know, half biochar, half compost, but same thing. Um, you know, no sand went down that earlier part of the season. And the reason why I did that is because I was going to oversee the front lawn with Arden 15. And I wanted to put down a really nice, rich, organic bed for the seed to have every possible option to germinate and do well. So that's why that was my goal for that particular top dressing job. So it depends on what your goals are. You're not gonna hurt anything by going 100% compost. Just realize that that is not, that any leveling benefits that you get from that are not gonna stick around. You're probably, it's, it's gonna look fine for the rest of the season, but within a year or two, uh, you know, the, that that compost is gonna begin to break down and whatever you had before is gonna slowly begin to come back. So just depends on what you're after. If it were me, I, I might go 50-50. I might go half sand, half compost. I, might, I would, if I'm gonna go through all the trouble of top dressing it, 
Um, unless your lawn is already pool table flat, like you already love the way it looks, you just you know you just want to improve, just feed the soil. Um, I would mix a little bit of sand in there if it were me, but you're not going to hurt anything by going 100% if you want to. So no worries there. All right. Oh, we got someone from across the pond in the UK hanging out. Uh, Shazia Chaudhry. That's a very the the last name Chaudhry is very very British sounding name. Uh, he's listening from England, UK. Thanks for coming to hang out. I really appreciate it. It's always cool to have. Uh, people from across the pond. Um, so we had, we've had Australia. We've had India. I think last week we had India. So that's that's always fun. Thanks for coming to uh, watch uh, Shazia. And um, yeah, Wimbledon's been really cool, man. It's been it's been a, it's been a good. I'm kind of sad that Roger's already gone out, but uh, uh, but yeah, thanks for coming to watch uh, from the UK. All right, he says I love your show and advice has been brilliant for my lawn management here. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you find it uh, useful. So even, it's true because even though I talk mainly about uh, warm season grass, or I focus mainly on warm season grass. Like if you look at my content, it's all Bermuda, right? Um, like most of the stuff, most things that I talk about really apply to any grass type outside of like mowing heights. Like it's really like minimizing shade, you know, making sure you soil test and fertilize accordingly, and then just mow your grass uh, a ton. Like that's going to work for any grass type and you're going to get a really good looking lawn. So I'm glad that uh, you're getting uh, good results with it. And uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate having you as a, uh, as a viewer. Always, always awesome. All right. Bush to Kush is in the live stream. Always love saying your name. It's like it's like one of the funniest um, avatar or handles ever. So what's going on, sir? Thanks for coming to hang out. Appreciate you as always. Cedric G has said that he has um, liked the the press the like button ever so gently. I appreciate it, sir. Thank you so much, Cedric. I really appreciate it. Thanks again. And then Keith Kramer says, "Thanks for sharing your turf knowledge. Everything about turf management as a career." Um. No, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I really enjoy it. I have to tell you, like the more I geek out on learning about soil and different soils and different like, um, you know, different grass types and and just, you know, as far as everything that goes into growing um, a good, a good stand of grass and growing a really good lawn, growing healthy turf. Um, it is cool. Um, but, you know, I, I also like what I do for work, too. Like I like working. I like what I do in information security. I like I like that that aspect of um of what I do in my career, and I get to help you guys out this way. So, I mean, is it is it something that I would I would leave what I'm doing um, to go and just do that full time? Um, I don't know. I mean, it depends on what I I, I doubt it. I mean, I, I again, I, I like I like what I do in information security. I mean, I've been working in the IT field now, like professionally since '96. So, what is that? Uh, I don't know. A lot of years, like twenty something plus. I don't know. A lot of years. Twenty six years. Twenty six years. Almost twenty seven years at this point. Uh, so, a long time. So. I'm pretty good at that, at that aspect of it. And then this is just something that's fun to learn a ton about and to, you know, and to help to help people out with as much as I can. So as far as pivoting away from IT altogether, I don't know if that would really happen. Um, it could, but uh, not definitely not something that I am planning to do just yet. So uh, it's a great question, Keith. Um, I, again, it's, it's a lot of fun and, it's, I, I, and I get why people that do it uh, really enjoy it. So, uh, so yeah, thanks for the question. All right, Jay Apu's in the house. Uh, says, hello, Ron. What's going on, Drea? Thanks for coming to hang out in uh, in the live stream. And we have Clayton in the house. Clayton has a question about Caravan G, which Caravan G, if you guys are not familiar, it is um, a combination insecticide and fungicide from Syngenta. It's one that I was using, I've used in years past. Like if you look at some of my older content from like, like last year and even like years past before then, um, head, uh, Caravan G was my staple. That was my jam, right? Because you put down, put it down once, you, um, you know, you knock out, you're good for your insecticide for the entire season. And depending on when you time it, um, you know, as a preventative, it's a good, it does well for fungus as well too. Um, so he says he got his Caravan G, it arrived today. You purchase it for grubs and fungus. This morning, I noticed uh, a fully developed beetle coming out of the lawn. Is it too late to install or apply Caravan G for grub control? No, not at all. Not at all. Uh-uh. I mean, I would still, I would still absolutely put it down. I mean, it may or may not kill like that particular grub, but it's it's a very very effective product um, for that purpose. From a standpoint of like a one and done, from an insecticide, from a grub um, control perspective, like it's an excellent product for that. Um, you know, where you may run into, a, where you may have to switch things up is if you say you have some kind of a fungus problem, like say you this, this time of year, 
um, you know, like like uh, brown patch is more as a thing. So let's say you have a brown patch issue, you put down Caravan G, like it's a great um, choice, it's a great option in what you're talking about for um, getting your insecticide down and for the initial treatment of an active fungus outbreak, but you are gonna wanna follow that up with another fungicide, um, probably Headway or, or a Heritage G. I wouldn't do like another Caravan G application like 28 days later, because you're just doubling up on the insecticide and you don't really need that portion more than once per season, right? So absolutely, you're good to go as far as putting it down. But if you find that you have an active fung fungus problem, um, you know, get the Caravan G down now and then 28 days later, switch to something else like a Heritage G or a Headway G um, to target only fungus. So great question, not too late at all, uh, get it down. Yeah, if you've not gotten it down, go ahead and get it down. Uh, great, great question. All right, um, so Cars and uh, Exotic, has a question about killing sedges. It says, uh, what do you recommend to kill uh, nut sedge in Bermuda? So there's a couple different options uh, for that, um, cars and motorcycles and exotics. If you want just really basic, something that, that will work well, but it's gonna be a bit on the slower side, image works well. Like you can go to Home Depot, grab that, um, Walmart, somewhere, you know, anywhere locally. You can get that, you can apply that, and that that will um, knock out nut, jet, nut sedge. It takes a while to work though. Um, if you want something a little bit faster, you can go with something like Certainty or um, Sedge Hammer. Someone was up, someone earlier in the comments was mentioning that. Uh, but now you're getting into, into um, herbicides that you gotta you gotta mix. Um, there's a little bit more involved process as far as applying those compared to Image, which is really easy. Um, the one thing I would say too um, is that Nut Sedge. I mean, not, not, it's not in most cases in my lawn anyway. Nut Sedge tends to like to grow in areas where either water, a lot of water passes or water settles. So if you are, um, if you find there's an area of your lawn that water settles after a rain, if there's anything you can do to help reduce that, that can help reduce the amount of nut sedge you have to deal with. Like on my lawn, literally there's one part of my lawn that every year gets um, nut sedge. And it's a section that's between Alex's lawn and mine. Literally it's like like the uh, like the swale area where there are two lawns come together. And whenever it rains heavily, all the water from the back lawn literally runs through this channel. So like the nut sedge is like love and life there. So that's the one area of the lawn that every year I have to spray, you know, this year um, um, Alex, Alex did it, he had, um, I think he had the ortho, he used the ortho spray, that's another option too. He had like the ortho, the ortho spray, that works really fast. So you can get that as well at Home Depot. It works fast, but that one is going to discolor the surrounding grass, whereas Image tends to not do that. So ortho works faster, um, but it's gonna discolor the surrounding grass. Image works slower, not gonna discolor the grass. If you want like something that's even gonna pack even a heavier punch, uh, Certainty or uh, Sedge Hammer, both those will work against, do well against sedges. But then you're talking, you're going into another class of herbicide. You're getting like the big boy herbicides, big girl herbicides. And you know you just have to be more careful about like weighing them out properly, mixing them properly, make sure you're wearing all your right PPE, all that kind of stuff. So um, tons of different options for that. Uh, but Nut Sedge for me anyway, cars, my, um, cars, motorcycles, and exotics tends to be one of those things that I just have to deal with every year in that one little spot. So. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps. Um, let me know which one you get a lot, which one you decide to go with and how it works out for you. Um, but yeah, there's tons of options out there to um, for helping with that. Okay, so Shadri from the UK has a question. He says, unfortunately in the UK, we are not permitted to use chemicals on crabgrass. So it has to be managed through hand weeding only. Yep, that's that's my life, uh, uh, Shazia. Uh, that's my life uh, this year because I didn't do any pre-emergent um, on my lawn uh, this spring. So now the temperatures are nice and warm, nice and high. I've got crabgrass just like probably you guys in the UK do. Now I wonder um, if you're gonna stick around long enough, I mean, you have to maybe a while to get to it, but let me know, are pre-emergence, are those allowed in the UK? Cause I know you may not be able to apply some of the post-emergence that we use, but are pre-emergence, like what we use in the, um, in the spring, in the fall here in the United States, are those allowed in the UK? Because those are tend to be pretty effective um, against preventing crabgrass, or at least severely reducing it. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm right there with you as far as like having to go out and, and hand, weed the, uh, hand weed the lawn, you know? So it's, it's, and the nice thing about it is if you're mowing your lawn short, like I'm mowing mine just under half inch, um, the crabgrass really doesn't like being cut that short. So it, as far as it being like rooted in really well, it, it isn't. Like in most cases I can go out there and I can just kind of pinch down my fingers and like, they, like the entire thing comes out, roots and all, no issue there. But it's, it's, uh, it, is, it is a pain. It is a pain, but yeah, there's a guy on the, on YouTube garden, like lawn care garden guy or something like that. He's who's in the UK has some great content on like natural weed control in the UK 
um, like using like dethatching and all these different methods for like grab, pulling weeds out of the lawn. So something to, to check out if you have not seen his content um, as well too. All right. Um, yeah, so then I uh, see Michael Marshall is saying that uh, Sedge Hammer uh, for Nuts Edge. Yep, that's a, that's a good option. Definitely a good option for that. I agree. Agree with that, sir. Appreciate you. And then um, Adam says, is Amazon paying for the <laughs> Zero Fox repairs? Dude, you're old school, man. You mentioned your, uh, um, yeah, so it's it's fixed. They did they did, um, they did did compensate me for it. They paid me um, to take care, to, to one, for like spot top dressing the one little, the areas that I got to fix, but more importantly for the irrigation work. So I had to have Austin out here to come dig up the lawn, pain my heart to do it. Um, so they paid me to, to take care of that. So we're all good. I mean, again, it happens. And, you know, I did it really in jest. I was, believe me, at the, the time it happened, I was irritated. I was hot. I was like, because if you look at the video, like I can get, I can almost justify like the guy backing in because it's a long truck. I can see you almost backing in and like you didn't judge it properly and you got the left side of the lawn. But to hit the right side when you're driving out, when you're, that's just, that's, that's a ton of do not care, right? That just shows you just, you're not paying attention at all. But to Amazon's credit, like I sent them the video, sent them pictures, and they took care of it. So, uh, yeah, so yeah, I mean, you know, every people make mistakes, things happen, and they took care of it. And, and you know, it's Bermuda, so it's going to come back. It's not going to, it's not going to, it's not permanently damaged, no harm, no foul. But, I mean, I'm, I'm a lot better about it now than I was the day it happened. I was, I was pretty, I was pretty irritated uh, the day when I saw what happened on video. Uh, but thanks for Adam for uh, for bringing that up. And yeah, they did take care of it. So if anyone from Amazon's watching this, uh, you know, you guys made a mistake, but you took care of it. So good on you. Okay, so Robert Rainey's in the house. I think there's a question here. He says, hey, Ron, I'm uh, installing the rain gauge sensor on my control box while listening to the, to the stream. Okay, so dude, I don't, I mean, I appreciate the support, but like, unless that's really simple to wire up, I don't want you to like to do it like backwards and it not work or something, right? And he says, any insight on settings? Factories delayed, um, the factory is delayed at quarter inch of rain. Currently watering at half an inch twice per week. Here's the thing, Robert. I had my Hunter rain gauge. Um, I don't know if they just never put battery, or they, if, I'm not sure it takes batteries or how it like how it's powered. I think it is a battery that powers it. But um, I have the one where it's supposed to like wirelessly talk to the unit and say, hey, when it rains, like don't water. Like mine never worked. Like literally it never worked. Not ever, not once. It never worked. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be a ton of help for you as far as settings go. Um, I know that with the new one that I have, the, with the HydroWise and everything, uh, I can connect that up to it. And it, that one even has the option to do like a, a small mini weather station that you can install locally. Um, that's supposed to be a bit more accurate. Um, but in, in my case, if I know I'm going to get rain in the forecast, I just skip a day. I just skip, just skip um, turning it, you know, running it. I mean, because now I can do it all on my phone, I can control it from anywhere in the world, really. It's not like I got internet access. It's less of an issue now for me to really have the system skip a watering day because now it's super easy. Just can be really convenient to say, ah, tomorrow, skip. Versus having to go out in the garage and go in there and say, okay, turn off the programming for tomorrow. And then remember, I have to turn it back on. Now it's super easy with my phone. So I see a lot, I see less value in doing all that because it's like literally a you know two second process. So uh, I cannot be of any help for you on that one. I, even though I appreciate you watching the live stream, I would say pay attention when you're wiring it up. And if hopefully your luck is better than mine. In my case, mine never worked. Like literally from day one, it never worked. So if, and you know, it'd be interesting. Any of you guys that have the, um, that particular rain gauge, like the Hunter, I forget what it's called, but it's like, it's got like a wire, it's the wireless one. Does that ever work for you guys? If you did, like, let me know in the chat. Maybe I just got a bad one or they never put batteries in it or whatever, but mine never worked. Uh, sorry, I'm not more help on that, Robert, but uh, uh, thanks for the support. I appreciate it as always. All right, Tyler Smith is in the house. He says, howdy, Ron. Howdy, Tyler. He says, I had seven, uh, seven tons of sand delivered today. <sighs> I mean, I'm, I'm happy for you, but I'm also sad for you because I just, it, it's, you know, it's a lot of work, a lot of work coming your way, sir. Along with half an inch of rain, I think my back will be sore for the next week, but hopefully it'll be worth it. Oh, it'll be sore. I mean, uh, if you're doing, if you're using decent technique, your back shouldn't be sore, but your legs will be sore. Like you're going to hurt in places you didn't know you could hurt. I'll tell you that much. Um, and then as far as the rain, yeah, the rain, um, well, you got the rain today, but rain after top dressing is always a good thing. You know, for me, Tyler, what makes me more sore, what I, what, what is um, actually more work, more so than actually like shoveling the sand and getting it out and spreading it on the lawn, is once you get the sand all distributed, 
if you're using like a leveling rake to go out there and like manually rake the material in, like that is the back breaking part of it. Like that's the part, that's the part that's uh, that's that's rough. You know, the the getting the sand out there is work, but actually like grading it and smoothing it and adding more sand and moving the material around, like that is a part that is um, no fun. You gotta be like Daryl, man. Daryl was, was smart about it. He went out and um, I'm not sure if I still have the video of what he did, but he had like a four wheeler and he was dragging it. I'm not sure if I have it here, if I can show it. Let me see, no. Uh, yeah, this is this is what Daryl did last week. So you gotta do something like that, man. Like if you wanna make it easy, get yourself like a four wheeler and uh, get like a, I forget what he said that he got that from, but like a couple logs and, and like a, make yourself like a like an improvised drag mat. Like that's gonna make life a lot better. But if you're manually doing it, it's gonna it's not gonna be fun. I can, but it's gonna be worth it. Totally gonna be worth it once it's done. But the, when you're going through it, you're gonna question your life's your life's choices. I will tell you that. All right, we got another person. Another person signing up for a whole ton of pain. Rob Heidel says, hey, Ron, had my soil sand delivered this week for my top dressing project. Stay tuned. Let, that's awesome, sir. That's, that's really good. Here's the thing, guys. So uh, in email, I've, also, I've gotten questions from you guys saying, is it too late in the season to top dress your lawn? Absolutely not. Not at all. Like, here's the thing. If you guys look at last year, like, you know, the Fix My Ugly Lawn series with Alex, literally, we waited till after the 4th of July to top dress his lawn. Like, literally, if you if you were to go, go back a year, like this weekend, like tomorrow is when we would be top dressing his lawn. If we, like a year ago, literally almost to the day is when we top dress his lawn. So July is is plenty of time. There's still plenty of heat. Um, the plenty of time for the lawn to bounce back. The only problem or the only negative of top dressing your lawn in July is that it's July and it's gonna be hot, right? It's gonna be hotter than if you had done it in, you know, late May, early June. But as far as, um, you know, doing it now, no worries at all. It's gonna, the lawn's gonna bounce back really fast. That's one benefit of doing it this time of year. But yeah, yeah, man, it should be uh, should be a good time. Let me know how it uh, how it works out. It's gonna be a lot of work. Hopefully you have some help. Don't do it all yourself. Um, but yeah, it's uh, definitely gonna be worth it. It's great, great investment in an awesome looking lawn. So uh, thanks, uh, thanks for letting me know. Okay, so Justin has a question here. Uh, he says, I'm looking for, Justin Cummings he says, um, looking at for a cost-effective way to treat my 3,000 square foot zoysia turf monthly. What are your thoughts on applying one cup of urea, one cup of chelated iron, uh, 13%, okay, um, six ounces of humic acid in a four gallon sprayer? Um, uh, I don't know about the um, about those rates, Justin. Um, let me see, so you're doing four gallons over, over 3,000 square feet, so like a, a gallon a third per thousand square feet. I don't know, I'd, I'd have to see the products to know exactly, um, you know, exactly if those rates are good. Uh, I, I mean, I can tell you that, um, assuming that they're good, like the concoction sounds good, like, you know, you got some humic acids, you got like that, some biostimulants to help improve the soil biology, you got some iron, a little micronutrient to boost green up, and then you got nitrogen, right? So you're feeding you're feeding the uh, the turf. So yeah, that, that concoction, um, I guess at a macro level sounds good. Not you got some nitrogen, you got some iron, and you got a biostimulant. So that that should work well. I can't say for sure that your um, the amounts you're listing or the rates you're using will work well because I don't know the products that you're using. But um, but yeah, it, it should work out all right. It should work out all right. Just make sure you follow the label or be very careful when you're applying urea. Don't cr if it's straight urea, don't go too crazy on as far as like the amounts you're using. And you're going to want to water that in to prevent um, burning. So just something to keep in mind. Um, as far as that goes. But yeah, that should uh, should work out pretty well. All right, next up we have Truth Teller says, uh, I wanna be your neighbor, um, I'm jealous, and also Georgia. Um, I don't know, man, it might be the peer, you don't know about being my neighbor. How do you know you wanna be my neighbor? Think about all the peer pressure, right? Think about the peer pressure of being my neighbor. Like, you know, especially if you have like company over and our lawns are really close or like practically touching, you're gonna have to be out there mowing all the time and keeping your lawn nice, it's a lot of, a lot of pressure, man. A lot of work. I mean, I lucked out with Alex. Alex uh, definitely embraced it, embraced the craziness. You know, he's out there all the time mowing it, trying to optimize things on his own. You know, his his lawn right now. To be, to be honest, I don't know if he's listening to this. And guys, don't tell him right, this right now. This time of year, the color on his lawn looks better than the color of my back lawn. His back lawn is looking is looking really good. I mean, he's he's got it. He's doing really good work, really good work. And why is that? Because he just you know embraced the journey. He's uh you know he's he's uh taking control of his lawn, mowing it a bunch and applying the right products and doing all the right things. But, uh, but yeah, I appreciate it. Truth teller, I'm making fun, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's always, it's always cool to, um, to have a neighbor that's also into lawn care too. If for nothing else, whenever your lawn care equipment, when something breaks, you got someone to borrow something from too, right? So it's always good. All right. So T Johnson is here in the house. He has a question about mowing heights. He says, Hey Ron, try to get my zoysia at two and a half to three inches. 
I know you're all about mowing, so will I be okay letting it grow out uh, for a few weeks? Love the show. Okay, so I guess you're asking, I guess right now you're shorter. You're, you're, I guess you're, by the way you're asking the question, your zoysia is a little bit shorter and you wanna get it taller. Uh, letting it grow out for a couple of weeks. Yeah, you can. I mean, I would still probably mow it though. I, I don't know, let's say your zoysia is currently at like, um, I don't know, an inch and a half, right? Um, I don't know that I would just let it go um, just unchecked for like several weeks just so it gets up to two and a half inches. I might, you know, raise my mower. If it's currently an inch and a half, I might raise my mower up to like, you know, three quarter, uh, one inch and three quarters or almost two inches and then mow it there, you know, a couple of times. And then I might raise it up a little bit more, like a two quarters at two and a quarter and then mow it. I, I would bring it up gradually. I don't know that I would just, just let it go and let it do its thing um, just for several weeks till it gets to the height that you want. I wouldn't do that, mainly because I'm also crazy and I, it, I wouldn't be able to not mow my lawn for several weeks. I just, I just, I wouldn't, I'd just start scratching. I wouldn't be able to not do that. So, um, but yeah, do you want to get it taller? Um, then yeah, letting it letting it grow out is, is absolutely fine. Uh, and yeah, that's no uh, no issue with that at all. I, I would kind of like, like stepping it down, I would bring it up, um, you know, over time as well too. But either way, you can uh, you can definitely do the strategy you're talking about as well too. It probably won't hurt anything, but I would want to mow while I wait for the lawn to get also taller as well. Robert is here, another question. He's a question about pre-emergent. He says, speaking of pre-emergent, I noticed after trenching ir uh, irrigation and top dressing, I noticed minor weed sprouting with recommendation um, with recommended pre-emergent applied at the proper time. Okay, yeah. So I mean, if you applied pre-emergent in the spring, and I think you, Robert, you were the one that, that last week you said you had um, you had the uh, irrigation installed, but they actually trenched it. So yeah, anywhere where they trenched, like where they actually dug that that material out, like like took the sod up, dug the dirt out. Uh, yeah, the pre emerge is not working there. Like that barrier is gone. So you, I'm not surprised that you have a bit more weed pressure there um, compared to the other parts of the lawn. Uh, you know, can you put down another pre emerge now if you want? You can, I guess. I mean, you can put down like something like um, like spectricide, like the granular spectricide. Something, uh, do I have it here? Maybe, I don't think so. Maybe we'll see to back up and find if I can find it. Uh, something like uh, Something like this. Yeah, here we go. I can show you that. Something like this, um, that could work. That's got like uh, dithyopyr in it. That that could work as well too. But I mean, if it's just a, a few small areas where you are, um, you know, just where the irrigation plumbing was, I might just I might just manually weed it, man. Not worry worry about it. I don't know that I'd go and throw down like another pre-emergent application just for that. And if you do, I would just do it just to those those areas, just spot areas. I wouldn't do the entire lawn all over again if it were me, if it were me. But uh, but hey, look at the bright side. You got your irrigation in, so that's always a plus, right? Okay, so we have Fred Rosales in the house. He's a question about overseeding. He says, hey, Ron, really enjoying the live channel, the live show. Thanks so much, Fred. I really appreciate it. He says, thanks for the overseeding advice. I'm in West Texas, and I want to level my Bermuda 419. Is it too late to do this? Got good news for you, Fred. I know I think we had a conversation about overseeding. I was trying to talk you out of doing it, if I remember correctly. Um, but as far as leveling, no, you're good to go. Yeah, go, absolutely go ahead and level your lawn now, now is uh, now is go time with Bermuda. You still got plenty of heat, uh, plenty of summertime left. Um, and yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're, you're still good to go as far as leveling your Bermuda lawn. Um, some just some words of advice. I would not go crazy heavy. Like don't like don't beach the lawn. I wouldn't do that. I mean, there's some people that do that and they get they get a decent result. But I would um, I would go light on the top dressing mix. If you've not seen the video that I did on top dressings, so if I can find it here and I can send it to you here in the chat. Maybe, yep, there it is. I'll send you this one. This video outlines um, the entire process that I use for top dressing lawn. Top dressing a lawn is what I would recommend, um, except for in your case, you're gonna stop watching when I get to the overseeding portion of it. So check out that video, Fred. Uh, that shows uh, talks about aerating, the top dressing mix that I used, um, the whole process. Everything goes into it. Some tips around like um, saving and protecting your sprinkler head, so small things like that, so you don't like end up damaging your irrigation system, assuming you have one um, as part of top dressing. So definitely watch that video, um, and that should uh, that should give you all the tips you should need to get a great result. So go ahead and uh, and do that. Appreciate you watching, sir, and uh, thanks for being a viewer. Andy Watley's here. He says, uh, checking in with a cool glass of Milo's lemonade. You know what, Andy? You mentioned that last week. I have not gotten a chance to go out and get some yet. I got to try that. I got to try it out. So I, I am like a lemonade carnosaur now. For me, uh, whereas like you know, I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this. I know we're in we're in you know we're in the South in Georgia. Whereas for me, Popeyes makes like the best chicken sandwich in my opinion. Um, Chick-fil-A makes the best lemonade. So if Andy's, if, my, if Milo's lemonade is like, can dethrone 
um, you know, Chick-fil-A lemonade, that would be a serious undertaking. We'll have to see. Because I think, I'm pretty sure Chick-fil-A lemonade, they make that fresh every day. Um, so we'll see how good Milo's is. Oh, I got to get out there and go find some. You uh, seeing that reminded me that uh, you mentioned that, mentioned that last week. Okay, Drea Poo has a question. He says, I need to level, to do a lawn level. When is the best time? By the way, my grass looks good. Uh, Drea, if you have a warm season grass like Bermuda or Zoysia, now is a great time to do it. If you know, if you uh, have a cool season lawn, you might want to wait till the fall or, I mean, or next spring, but you want to do those like in the fall or springtime. But if you have a warm season lawn like Bermuda or Zoysia, now is a great time to go ahead and do that. The video that I just linked in the chat, if you can scroll down in the chat, the one I just sent to, uh, to Fred Rosales, if you check that one out, that um, watch that video, that like outlines the process that I use to top your salon that, that will help you get really good results. So uh, check that out and you should be good to go. Just make sure you go light, um, get a friend or friends to help with the process, um, or you can pay a service to do it. I mean, honestly, paying a service is probably the easiest way to go. It's more, it's kind of pricey, but when you see, when you watch that video, watch the video first, and then decide if you really want to take it on yourself because it is a ton of work. It's a lot of work to, to, to top dress your lawn manually. Um, that you know, services that do it are expensive and probably because it's probably worth it. All right, so we got Mr. Josh Abib, the man, uh, the merch man is in the house. Thanks so much, Josh. Super chat. With a super chat, he says, "Happy Friday, Doctor. Heading home tomorrow from camp. He thinks Josh is out camping. He's looking forward to being in the lawn all day Sunday after McGregor." gets uh, that that W. Hopefully, we'll see. We'll see if he pulls it off, man. This is like the trilogy, right? We'll see if he's able to do that. I said, hope you're well. Sold test on Sunday. It's been four months since the last one. Awesome, Josh. And when you get home, Josh, there's gonna be, there should be something in the mail waiting for you. Uh, should be something in the mail waiting for you when you get there. It should be there by now, but I guess when you get home, you should, uh, you should see that. So uh, uh, appreciate you, sir. Glad you had a great time out with the fam, getting some camping done. And I appreciate all your support of the live stream, as always, man. Thank you so much. I really, really, really appreciate it. We'll see if Connor's able to pull it off. Okay, so Sean says, uh, I love a lemonade as well. Just did my first mild scalp of the summer season due to going on vacation for the week. Yep, that's an option too. I see that this um, people talking about that more, uh, you know, this this season than last year about doing like a summer scalp, like a high to cut reset in the middle of the summer. I mean, if you want to do that, it's not going to hurt anything. Is you know, especially with Bermuda, now is the time that the grass is going to grow back just fine. So, uh, so yeah. If you want to change your height of cut, or in your case, looks like you want to knock it down a little bit um, to kind of you know give yourself some headroom for the vacation you're going on, uh, that's an option as uh, as well too. Okay, so Brian Walton is in uh, in the house. Um, so he says, "Hey Ron, love the channel. Got a silly question. No such thing." He says, how do you know if you have clay, uh, sandy or clay soil? Still learning. I'm located in El Paso, Texas. I'm guessing, I'm guessing it's sandy soil considering we're in the desert. Yeah, it's probably like a sandy or loam soil, loam type soil, um, given that you're in Texas, uh, Brian. Um, clay soil, how can I describe it? It looks, it looks like clay. It tends to be red, it tends to be a little bit reddish or orangish in color. And uh, sandy soil, like if you pull a plug out of sandy soil, and you um and you rub it in your hands, it'll just kind of dissolve. It breaks down really, really easily. Clay soil is gonna feel how can I say it's more like clay. It's gonna feel like more mushy and sticky. Um, like from a texture standpoint, that's the best way to describe it. Um, but the way to know is if you can if you could pull a plug out of your lawn. So you get like um if you have like a plugging tool, if you're if you're doing like a soil test, you have like one of these guys, um, like a soil test probe like this, like uh, the ones that my soil make. Um, if you pull a plug and you send me a picture of it. You can email me here at ron at golfcourselawn.com. Send me a picture of it. I'll be able to tell you if it's clay soil or sandy or loam type soil. Um, but yeah, in Texas, it's, it, it could be clay. But I mean, without actually seeing a core sample, it's going to be hard to know uh, for sure. Because a good example, I'm in Georgia and my soil, even though it is clay, um, it's kind of a, it's also a bit, a bit sandy. Like, I mean, I, I've got, I've built up over the years from all the top dressing, but if you guys look at that video, when I got this, the irrigation head, the, the sprinkler head replaced, it's more of a, like a, of a, of a sandy type soil compared to like the, that really thick red Georgia clay that a lot of people tend to have. So if you want to, I mean, so even though in, by all rights being in Georgia, I should have red clay, um, on my particular lawn, I don't have a, as much of that as other areas, a, a lot of the surrounding areas, um, just because of, I guess, where the where the house is. The soil here is just different. So, uh, so yeah, send a, get, get a sample and take a look at it, and we should be able to figure it out. Uh, great, great question. And uh, JC's in the house saying, what's going on? What's going on, JC? Thanks for coming to hang out. I appreciate you as always. And uh, Raven Lowry, you're not related to Mike Lowry, 
are you by any chance? Bad boys? No, 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 no relation. He says, uh, PGF complete, uh, 648 says to apply three pounds at, at, um, per thousand square feet every three to four weeks. But my yard seems to lose its dark green around every two weeks. Should I be applying every two weeks or increase the application rate? So, um, so here's the thing, Raven, uh, uh, PGF Complete, I think if, if I remember correctly, that's a granular, right? That is that is a granular product. I've never used any of the Anderson's product in it for sure. But um, the, what you're finding, what, what you're describing is exactly why I do a blend of granular and liquid uh, fertilizers on my lawn. So you can like drop the rate in half, reduce it slightly and apply it every couple of weeks. That's definitely a strategy. You can do that. Or you can continue doing it every three to four weeks um, like the label says, and you can just simply use like a liquid. You can spray a liquid fertilizer with some micronutrient with a little bit of iron um, in that in that two at that two week period, and that's going to help you maintain um, a green lawn. It's going to maintain the color over the entire month. So in my case, what I use, I don't use PGF Complete. I use uh, Humic Max. So I can show you the fertilizer um, that I use. It's available at the Golf Course Lawn Store. I'll show you here real quick. So my base fertilizer is this guy, Humic Max from Lebanon Turf. It's a 16.48, awesome, awesome stuff. Contains um, almost 9% humic acid in it as well. And with that, so I apply this, the Humic Max, once per month, kind of like what you're doing with your uh, PGF Complete at uh, the beginning of the month. But then on the same day that I apply the Humic Max, I also spray this product, which is um, Turfplex. It's a, a 22.3, it's a liquid fertilizer that contains um, a, a, a little bit of a micronutrient stack as well. So it's got a little bit of iron, a little bit of zinc, a little bit of ma uh, manganese in it. Um, and I just spray this at a very, very light rate, super, super light rate. And I'm actually giving away a bottle of that tonight. So if you want to go comment on the video of the live stream from last week, you have a chance to actually win some. But um, the strategy that I use, um, instead of doing granular every two weeks, I do um, a granular and liquid at the beginning of the month. And then two weeks later, I spray just the liquid again um, again, at very low rates. I'm talking like the, the label calls for six ounces per thousand. I think you can even get away with a little bit less than that. You can go, you know, probably four ounces per thousand and still be just fine and get a good result. So that is a, that's a great way by using a combination of liquid and granular to prevent the problem or I would say the problem, but the, the issue that you're describing where you tend to get like a peak and valley, like the peaks and valley of the color of the grass, right? When you use it, when you, when you supplement with a liquid, you tend to get more even color, more even growth over the growing season. So that's why I do that. It is more work, but the lawn looks pretty awesome from it. So kind of just up to you. You can try, uh, you know, doing another PGF complete application if you want. But if it were me, I would get like Turfplex or some of the liquid fur of your choosing and I would incorporate that um, into uh, into your program. More work, but it's gonna look awesome. It's gonna look awesome. Ask ask like uh, um, Papa Mo's Low or um, Daryl if he's in here. Like all those guys, a lot of people that are also, anyone that's in, in the Golf Course Lawn Academy, um, like the training course that I put together on creating a golf course lawn, like they're doing that. Um, as well as people that aren't in the course but are just following the content that I've put out on YouTube around that, all of them are getting awesome results with it. So. Uh, give that a shot if you want something new to try, and it's good. I think you'll like. I think you'll like the results that you get with it. More work, but it's gonna look awesome. All right, um, let's see who else we uh, have here in the house. So uh, Augustus Lewis is in the house, and um, let's see Ra Raider Nation's in the house as well. He says, "Hey Ron, enjoying the show. Finally getting some much needed rain here in not South Carolina, but North Carolina. Glad to hear it, uh, Raider Nation. Glad to hear you're getting uh, some rain." And uh, let's see here. We have a question or a, more of a comment um, um, from John uh, Gentry. I'm not sure if it's a comment as much as like a statement. He says, I have, he has Zeon Zoysia, saw it one month old, applied grub uh, free zone granules on June 17th, still seeing wasps hovering over an area with grub history uh, applied. Uh, tries aside Sunday. How soon can I reapply? Um, uh, grub free zone. So I, I've never used that product to know, um, what I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with that product, John, to be able to tell you how soon you can reapply it. I can tell you as far as taking care of grubs, um, I, as far as taking care of grubs, I, um, I, I just one application of, um, of a Celeprin or even Caravan G works for that. As far as the wasps that you're dealing with, I'm not sure what you're using. I guess you said the Trizide is probably what you're using to target that. I would just look at the label. I will look at what the label says for that and, and just, just go by that. I've not, I've not, I've never used um, the product that, you, that you're, you're describing there. So I never really had to deal with like wasps or other flying insects in my lawn. 
So I can't, I'm not gonna be of much advice on that, but I would just, I would follow the label. You only applied it, um, you, you applied the, the granules on June 17th, so ooh, just uh, about three weeks from now ago. And then the uh, the triazide you applied on Sunday. So this, I mean, I would give it a little time. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't be so quick to get out there and just and and uh, throw another insecticide down in the lawn just yet. Um, but if you are wanting to do a follow up application, I would read the label for the product that you decide to go with and um, and just just follow that. You know, that's going to help you get the best result with also minimizing the chances of um, of damaging your lawn. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps. So I don't have a better answer for you. All right, so we have um, Martin Mueller. I think he's German. He says, um, greetings, Ron, uh, from Iowa. He's from Iowa, <laughs> but he's, he says Dankeschein. He says, uh, greetings from Iowa and delayed. Happy 4th of July. Happy 4th of July to you as well, sir. Um, I enjoy your show and know to be smarter afterwards. Dankeschein, Martin. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Martin. I'm glad that you're getting some value out of it. And uh, yeah, always uh, enjoy uh, always enjoy having new viewers. It's pretty cool. Always cool. All right, um, Brooklyn Boy is in the house. He has a question. He says, how often can I apply soil enhancement? Um, like many questions, like the answer to most questions in life, Brooklyn Boy, is it depends. Um, depends on which one you're talking about. I can speak to you about um, a couple of ones that I am very, very familiar with. So if we talk about like, um, let's go here to the, to the browser. And we're talking about the carbon kit, the golf course lawn carbon kit. Like this guy, you can apply it every couple of weeks if you wanted to, but really I found through my testing like a once a month application is enough. You're gonna get a good result with just applying that once per month. You, I mean, not really a ton of reason to go heavier, um, you know, because it want because of what it costs, right? It's not it's not super super expensive, but it's also not inexpensive to where you want to be putting down any more than you need to. Now, if we talk about something like um, granular carbon, something like Essential G, something like this, or it's uh, it's grandparent Carbon Pro G, like these guys, you can go hog wild on. Like this one, you know, pretty much the the limit of how much of this stuff you can apply and how often you can apply it is your budget, right? So it depends on how much you wanna, you know, how much you wanna put it down. So you can put this down super heavy, not gonna burn your lawn, not gonna damage your lawn. Um, and this one you can apply, you know, every week if you wanted to, because the, 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 the idea behind this with Essential G is that you get, you, you have a compost component to it, but there's also a bi also biochar as well, and that builds up in the soil over time. There's a lot of benefits to uh, to incorporating that into your lawn care program. So it depends. If you're going with a liquid product like the um, like the, the carbon kit, I would only do that just once per month. If you're going with the granular, again, same thing, once per month as well, but you can also go heavier with that if you decide that you want to. You wanna go heavier on the carbon kit? No worries, no problem with that uh, whatsoever. Literally with Carbon Pro G and Essential G, it's just, you know, go as go as heavy as your uh, your budget will uh, will permit. Great, great question. And, and it's good, man. I'm glad to hear, glad to hear that you're taking, you know, you're thinking about that. You're thinking about creating healthier soil, which as a byproduct, you're gonna get healthier grass. So awesome stuff. On the lawn training is in the house. He says, hey, Ron, um, and what up, uh, lawn care fam? Maybe Ron can break some boards during the live stream. Uh, no, probably, I don't know, probably not. I don't want boards flying around in here. Uh, and really that was just, you know what it was? I, I filmed that portion of it. Like I didn't, I wasn't thinking, like literally breaking boards just jumped into my mind after I said riding a bicycle. So I thought, hmm, I don't have a bicycle to ride. So I need to put, and I need to put some B-roll in here to keep this interesting. So I went out and found a board and and that was easy enough to do. Set the camera and broke it and, you know, put it in the video. Um, but yeah, that's how that, how that ended up happening. Um, but yeah, probably not on the live stream because again, like lots of, expensive equipment in here and I don't want to, I don't want to have boards flying around and damaging or breaking any of it, but it's, it's, I don't know. I mean, I could, I might, I might do like a, um, like a YouTube story of breaking a board. If you guys want to see that it's not, I mean, it's actually not anything that's, that's, that's really crazy hard to do. Um, yeah, but yeah, I mean, what's really hard is like two boards unsupported. Like that is, that's a little bit more challenging to do. It's a hard, it's a harder break to do. I've done it, but it's, it's a, it's the more challenging than one board. One board's pretty easy. All right, Tom, um, Tom V is in uh, the house. Um, he says, hey, Ron, um, this live concept is pretty cool. Uh, thanks, Tom, I appreciate it. He says, I live near Chicago and have Kentucky bluegrass lawn. Any tips for dealing with chinch bugs? We are getting uh, brown spot damage and had chinch bugs last year. So you got like a fungus issue and you got chinch bugs. Okay, so I I believe that Acelloprin, I believe Acelloprin Will um, will work for the larva. Like it'll kill the larva that as that essentially results in chinch bugs. Um, as far as like active chinch bugs, like killing the ones that are actually around now, I don't have anything for you on that. I think bifenthrin bifenthrin should work for that. 
Um, but as far as like preventing um, like new like preventing them from being able to make babies and like you know the the outbreak or the the, the continuing from from having the issue, um, a celebrant is something you can use for that. Um, as far as brown spot damage, you're gonna want to put down some kind of a fungicide. Um, uh, an inex a more inexpensive route for that would be something like um, like Heritage G. Heritage G should work well against brown spot. Caravan, now here's the thing, Caravan is both an insecticide and a fungicide. I don't know if the um, insecticide, the active ingredient that's in Caravan G, Tom, will um, target like the chinch bug larva. I don't know if that's, if it'll do that one. Um, I know a celeprin will, um, but um, for, because it, if it does, you could just get Caravan G and that will, that will do your brown spot and will also help suppress uh, chinch bugs in your lawn as well too. So you gotta get two for one. Um, if it doesn't, um, and you just want like, you're gonna do it like, um, you know, using kind of best of breed in each case, what you would do is for um, the chinch bugs, you could use a celeprin, which, um, just so I can find that here. Um, a celeprin, I think I've got a, I got a link for that for you. Yep, so a celeprin insecticide. This is a really, really good insecticide. Not cheap, but it's like, like anything else, right? Good and cheap tend to, not, tend to not go together. But I'll send you that Tom, this guy at Tom V. So that, um, that's Tom Durkin, um, but um, this one is what should work well for you for, um, for the insecticide. And then for the, um, the fungicide, you can probably just use Heritage uh, just for brown spot. But if you're trying to go baller mode and you want like two active ingredients, you want to target it from both, like hit it from two different, two different ways, uh, two different modes of action, go with Headway. Again, this is, this is a probably more expensive option um, using like Celeprin and Headway, but it's, it's also like a really, really good one from a granular standpoint. So at Tom V, this is your option for fungicide and your option for insecticide. Hopefully for that helps. And for the active guys, the active chinch bugs that are around, Bifenthrin should knock those out, I believe. Um, but you really want to just prevent them from having new babies. That's going to be the way to go. Thank you for watching from Chicago. I really appreciate it. Um, we got Michael in the house. He says, uh, uh, thanks, uh, thanks for all your work on the live stream. I appreciate that so much. And of course we got LG. Uh, LG's in the house. LG, where you been, man? You been hiding out? You been, uh, I said J JG showed up earlier, but you're kind of late, man. Kind of hurt my feelings a little bit. I was kind of wondering you if you're gonna, you're gonna show up or not. But you're here now. Thanks for coming to, uh, to hang out. Uh, if you guys don't know, LG is like, I just like to give him a hard time. We'll see if LG wins tonight, man. Last week, he, or last, the last giveaway he won. So we'll see if he gets lucky again. Uh, tonight as well. We got four prizes tonight, guys. So uh, you're, you know, you guys, if you, if, to let you know how you can enter to um, win either a soil test kit, either the Stripe Action sticker, and then your choice, your choice of, you know, the sticker that I had from last time, which is the regular Ron Henry um, sticker, or, or one of these new psychedelic, um, you know, holographic, you know, you know, pimp mode, the bling mode, um, uh, stickers like these, you're gonna have a choice of either or of these tonight. And then also the grand prize is gonna be a bottle of Turf Plex. So if you, if you guys wanna have a chance to win that, um, go to last week's live stream and enter there. So uh, just put a, a comment in of what you're planning to do to your lawn this season and that's how you enter to win. No, you have to subscribe to the channel. If you wanna subscribe, that'd be awesome. Um, but if you, you don't necessarily have to, to be to enter the, to the giveaway. Okay, so Connor Sales is in the house. He has a question about a spoon feeding program for his lawn. Um, it says, uh, wanting to get on a spoon feeding program for my lawn, 100% Kentucky bluegrass. Uh, do I just take the fertilizer recommendation of 12 ounces and divide by four to six to apply once a week? Love the videos, Ron. Um, in a nutshell, yeah. In a nutshell, yes. Uh, so um, I'm not sure which fertilizer you're talking about, but if you are looking to, um, yeah, if you're looking to, spoon, to go on a spoon feeding program and the product you're looking at has a monthly rate um, and you just want to divide that up over, you know, every week if you want, really every week is not strictly necessary. You could probably get away with like every other week if you wanted. But I mean, if you want to do it every week, yeah, you could divide it by four and apply it at that rate. Um, and then you'll be spoon feeding your lawn. So it just depends on which way you want to go. It sounds like you're going primarily a liquid route. The way I do my spoon feeding, Connor, is a combination of a granular, which is Humic Max, um, which you can get on the Golf Course Lawn Store, right there, or and, and a Turf Plex. So I do a liquid and granular working together in my spoon feeding program. But like, yeah, in a nutshell, without knowing exactly what product you're talking about, yes, that should, that should work. 
Should work. Oh, and you should say here, now you tell me, he says, uh, and I should, I should also add, wanting to use Green Punch, which recommends uh, 12 to 18 ounces every four to six weeks. Um, I've never tried Green Punch in the way you're trying to do it, but it should work. Keyword should, <laughs> should, right? So if you divide the monthly rate by four, if you're doing it every week, or in half, if you're doing it every two weeks, um, you should do that and you should be able to get a decent result. So should, uh, should work. Um, let's see. And uh, yeah, you're saying you're trying it. You think about um, once every three weeks. Yeah, that that. I mean, that's how the math kind of works out. So give it, give it a shot and see how the turf responds, right? So so go with that low rate. Here's the thing when it comes to this, um, Connor. What I would recommend is start low because you could always add more fertilizer. It's really difficult to take it out once you put it in. So start low. Um, and just uh, you know, if you you look at the color of the turf, you're not getting the results. You're not getting the res the response that you want you know, go maybe to four ounces per week if you, if you want, you know, just, just try it out and see. I, I'm not familiar with that product. I've not really tried it myself. So that's why I can't tell you exactly how um, it would work. Okay. Um, are you skates is uh, talking about some roller bearings. He says, I had my roller bearings seized. Anyone else have that issue? I emailed real rollers and they're sending me replacement bearings. They reply super fast and have great customer service. Um, I have not had an issue with that, um, but I use my mower quite a bit. And then I also keep them greased. So there's on uh, most, uh, rollers is like a like a Zerg fitting that you can actually put some grease there. So as long as you keep them greased, you should be okay. Um, are you skates? I've not personally um, experienced that, but I'm glad that you got um, a replacement uh, one uh, coming go, come, going out. And uh, let's see. So uh, Luis Rodriguez is here in the house. It says uh, good afternoon, Ron. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Luis. Um, I appreciate you hanging out in the live stream. I guess it's a little bit earlier where you are, probably on the west coast, I guess. And then um, Augustus Lewis, uh, I'm not sure who G. Lewis is, but it says, does, does uh, cutting cool season lawn frequently help the lawn? Yes, all grass types, um, mowing them frequently helps the lawn. It's, it's good for the grass. Like assuming, assuming you're cutting it at the correct height with the right equipment, yes. It does, it does, uh, it does it's only, there's really only positives to, uh, to doing that, to frequent mowing. Okay, we have a super chat here from LG. We're gonna scroll down and grab that. And LG, give me a hard time. He says, uh, let's break received. some boards, bruh. Uh, yeah, well, let's see how I can make that happen. Maybe I'll make it a thing in, in some of the videos. Maybe it'll be like an Easter egg. You guys have to watch to see if I'm gonna break boards. I'll have to, I'll have to mix it up, of course. Um, can't do the same thing every time. We'll see, we'll see. It might be fun. It might be just be distracting too. So we'll, we'll see. If you guys enjoy it, um, it's something I can do. It's a, you know, someone, someone else, someone in the comments uh, got me on that when they're saying, you know, boards don't hit back. You know, they're used, uh, they use uh, a quoting uh, Bruce Lee video. So uh, we'll see, maybe, maybe we can make that happen. Uh, King Chuck uh, six says, I accidentally over fertilized my grass and I have a big dry spot in my lawn or a probably a burn spot is probably what it really is. Is any advice on how to fix my yard? Uh, yeah, King Chuck. So what you can do is if there's any of the fertilizer still left. So if you can see the area that it burnt, um, if you can get out there and you can still see any fertilizer, you can get there with a vacuum cleaner and remove as much of it physically as you can, that will help. If you could also rake out that area, like try and remove any fertilizer um, that's in that one little spot, that spot, like maybe like rake out and remove like maybe an inch or so of the soil in that in that location. So if there's any like a big chunk of fer or a big like density of fertilizer that's still in that spot um, and then replace that with like just some fresh topsoil, uh, that will help speed things up a bit. But it's really one of those things the grass just has to grow through, right? Like if you have a cool, if, you were, if you're a cool season, um, what I would tell you is you could do the exact same thing, but you could also seed, put down some seed, and that's going to help speed up the process even more. But with, if you have a warm season grass like Bermuda, um, it's going to be just fine. It's going to it's going to grow through it. Like I could I can show you. I think I have a video where I I burnt my lawn. I did exactly what you did, um, King Chuck, and it took about a month for it to fully um, recover. Let me see if I've got the video here. Yes, yeah, so it was from like three years ago in 2018. But uh, this is a video if you want to like, like get a good laugh at my expense whenever I, I wreck my lawn from over fertilization, you can uh, can see that here. So at King Chuck um, six, there you go. That video will show you like when I burned my lawn, how I explain what happened, and really, um, it's just going to be a time thing, man. It's going to be about a month if you have a warm season grass, for, and it's going to it should recover. So sorry you dealt with that, um, but it's the it, lawn will bounce back. No worries. Mr. Putz is in the house. He says, great show, Ron. Everyone smash that like button. Thank you so much, sir. And while I take another sip of my lemonade, um, if you guys wouldn't mind uh, touching that like button ever so gently, it's free for you guys to do. It's a free way to support the channel and it's going to send good vibes to the algorithm, send more people our way so we can all hang out with our the craziness. It'll give more, more people the chance to enter the giveaway. So do that while I take a sip of my lemonade. I'd really appreciate it. 
Mm-hmm. All right. So LG is in the house, Mr. Fungicide. He's saying that thiopinate methyl is a group one fungicide that can be used in residential turf, but I get better results from the group 11 and group three fungicides, azoxystrobin and propiconazole. Thank you so much, LG. I salute you. I appreciate that. So the gentleman that asked earlier in the show about another option for fungicide, um, there you go. There's another one that's a group one. That's an option, but like kind of like what LG said, I've not really had a fungus issue that azoxystrobin or propiconazole didn't take care of. So that's why I just kind of stick with that, right? Uh, so yeah. But thank you, LG. I appreciate you chiming in on, uh, on a, another option for people that have residential lawn. All right, Dwayne James is saying, I have a tall fescue lawn that came with a house when I bought it. No problem, man, you can keep tall fescue. I mean, it, tall fescue can look really good just like anything else. Make sure your mower blade is sharp. You're gonna wanna be mowing that really tall. So, uh, you know, four inches or taller, the, the taller you mow it, the better. Um, but just, you know, sharp mower blade and just regular mowing and it's gonna look awesome. Uh, that, that's the big thing. I think Alan, I should know this, but I think Alan's lawn used to be fescue when he lived um, near Jake. I think his lawn used to be a fescue lawn. I believe that's correct. Maybe you'll, someone will correct me in the comments, but I'm, I believe that's what his lawn was. And he just mowed it nice and tall and it looked great. So uh, so yeah, don't no, no shade on, on tall fescue on, on lawns. Just uh, mow them, mow them tall. And uh, Keith Kramer saying, uh, Dwayne, don't skip aeration and overseeding in the fall. Start planning for that now. So thank you, Keith, for chiming in. Yep, so... Uh, if you're planning in the fall to do an overseed, which for you cool season guys, like you have two times to do it, spring or fall. And if you're gonna do that in the fall, yeah, aerating, um, you know, if you're gonna top dress, that's the time to do it. And all the, and overseeding as well, um, all that in the fall time is, uh, is the time to go. It's, it's, your go time is coming up here in a couple of months, in a couple of months. All right, Ben S has a question about I think the kryptonite of Bermuda, the kryptonite of Bermuda. You guys know what that is, right? You guys know what the kryptonite for Bermuda is, right? It is shade. So he said, I have a 20 foot tree in my front yard and my grass receives all day sun. The grass around my tree always struggles. So I'm curious if the tree sucks up all the water and nutrients, is that true? Um, there is a little bit to that, uh, Ben, that yeah, the trees do tend to consume um, water and nutrients in that area. But, the, but what's probably more bigger uh, uh, issue from the tree is shade. So like, uh, I don't, you can say what kind of grass type you have, but if it's, especially if it's a warm season grass like Bermuda, Zoysia a little bit more tolerant, but if it's Bermuda, uh, Bermuda absolutely will not grow well in shade, in shaded areas. Like I, I always say, you know, it'll grow, it'll grow in concrete, it'll grow in sand, um, but like shade and Bermuda are like mayonnaise and ice cream. They just do not go together. So, you know, the fact that it's, it's struggling or it's thin, it's doing exactly what Bermuda is going to do in a shaded area of the lawn, unfortunately. There's just not a ton you can do about that. Outside of raising the canopy, you said that the tree is 20 feet. So if you if there are any low hanging branches that you can you can cut to try and like allow more a little bit more sunlight to get down, that could help. But I mean, um, it, the, the grass will always struggle if there's a lot of shade. It's just it's just par for the course when it comes to Bermuda. It just it just doesn't like shade. It needs lots and lots of direct sun, like seven hour seven hours um, of direct sunlight. Even more, uh, you know, more even more is even better. But it just takes a lot of sunlight to really have Bermuda look really really good and have it really thrive and do well. So zoysia could work could work in that space. Um, but again, I don't know how much how much of a shade issue we're dealing with. I can't. I don't have any pictures to know. But um, no, it's probably not nutrients. It's probably not the watering or lack of nutrients. It's probably more the shade than anything else. So hope that hopefully that helps. Okay, uh, King Khan and uh, Moro and LG are in the house and they're chatting. Um, Cal is in the house. He has a question. Uh, um, LG saying ready ready to watch me lose another giveaway. Oh no, LG, you won last time, man. You can't be saying that. The curse has been broken. But Cal has a question. He says, what are your thoughts on granular PGR, such as Anderson's Governor G? I'm really nervous about messing up with liquid PGR. Um, I've never used it to be able to say how well they work. But uh, again, you know, Anderson's makes, makes a decent product. So I have no reason to believe that as long as you apply it at the correct rate, um, you know, that you shouldn't have a good result. You should have a good result. Just, follow, just read the label, follow the label, apply it per the label's rate, and you should get a good result. So... You know, with, with Governor with Governor G, with it in being a, a granular, here's the thing, kind of like in that video that I did earlier this week on um, backpack sprayer calibration, believe it or not, there's, al there's actually also calibration for like a spreader too, right? Like you're walking pace for a spreader. 
um, matters. So it for, fer for most fertilizers, I um, mean, you know, they put like a label, they put like a, a rate on the label and they say, you know, you know, set it to this and then walk at a reasonable pace and you should be all right. Um, Governor G, I imagine, does the same thing. But I mean, you want to make sure that you that, um, you know, if it says, I don't know, whatever it is, let's say it's like three pounds per thousand square feet. I have no idea what it is. I've never applied the product. Let's say that's what it is. What you're going to want to do is if you've got like, say, a 5,000 square foot lawn, so 5,000 square foot lawn, and, say, and let's just say it's three pounds per thousand. Again, I'm just making that up. I don't know what it is. Read read the label. Do not go put it down to three pounds per thousand. I don't know that's, if that's the correct rate. What that's going to mean is you can have 15 pounds of this stuff that you got to get down over 5,000 square feet, right? So what I would do for me to make sure that you you reduce the chances of, of over, over applying is I would weigh it out. So get like a bucket, put it on a scale, like zero out the bucket, and then put down, you know, put your, um, you know, put in like the amount that you should need on your lawn. Um, and what you could even do is, uh, Kai, is if the if the spreader calls for like a, a spreader setting of like I don't know, like fifteen, whatever spreader you happen to use, right? Um, if you want to back it, if you want to go a little bit lighter, but just make multiple passes, that's an option too to prevent you from going too heavy and running out. Um, but you know, just, just follow the label, follow the label. If you've applied other fertilizers in the past or applied fertilizer in the past, um, and you've got a good result with that, not from over applying it, you should also get a good result with governor G as well. I have no reason to think that you wouldn't. I've just never used it to know for sure, um, how well it would work. I will tell you that it is more, it is a more expensive way to apply a PGR, like comparing like the cost per application of a granular PGR versus like liquid. Um, the granular is going to be a lot more expensive, but you know if you're afraid of, of um, a mis an oopsie with a liquid, um, then that that might be a, a way to go. Okay, great question. So we have a question here about um, manual reel mowing from Tom Durkin. He says, "Hey, when you mowed your lawn with a push reel mower, what height did you go with in the spring, summer, and fall?" So I was around an inch, if memory serves me, Tom. I have to go back and look at the videos. But I think I was around an inch um, with the Scots is what I kept it at um, when I was mowing it. And I, I think I maintained that year round. I didn't really change it uh, throughout the entire season. With a, my powered reel mower, uh, last year I, I started at half an inch, went up to three quarters of an inch um, after top dressing. And then I maintained that all throughout the year. Uh, so far this year, I've been at just under half an inch. I've been doing that all season. I, I probably should raise it up a little bit, maybe to go like to... All right, actually at half an inch, maybe five eighths, but we'll see. I haven't, I'm being stubborn. I'm going to try and make it last as much as I can. Um, but to answer your question with a push reel mower, it was about an inch if memory serves me. Check the videos that I did from way back when. I may have said in there, but if, I, I believe it was one inch is what I was cutting it at. I think is what I was cutting it at. So, uh, so yeah. Um, uh, Chad Fleming says, uh, Ron, uh, thanks for the info. Uh, I appreciate it. Well, I will use liquid propoconazole. There you go. So if, you, if you're good with uh, applying a liquid, uh, then go for that. That should uh, that should work just fine. Okay, let's see what other questions we have here. So um, Flip McNeil's in the house says, did you like the results of top dressing your front lawn with carbonized PN? I did, I did. It smoothed out like a few small areas. I mean, in all fairness, my front lawn was fairly level to start or fairly, not level, it's obviously not level, but fairly smooth to start. Um, but it did a great result, did a great job as far as smoothing in small, small little low areas here and there. And then for the purposes that I, I put it down, which is to give me a, a nice rich bed for um, uh, seed germination, worked great for that, it was awesome for that. So yeah, I'm very happy with the results of it. Um, would I do it again? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it also produced, as far as like getting your lawn to turn like a really dark, you wanna talk about getting your lawn to turn really, really, really dark green, uh, that's a good way to do it. I mean, carbonized PN will absolutely do that. You don't have to put any fertilizer down, just put that put that on your lawn and the lawn's gonna get really dark and green. So that's that's another benefit of, of as well too, right? The compost that's in there and the biochar really help darken up the lawn, give it a great color. So yeah, hopefully, um, hopefully that helps answer your question. Okay, Daryl is asking a question about leveling. He says, Ron, will you be leveling your lawn next year? Probably not, probably not. I always say that, but probably not. He says, in how many bags of Humic Max um, do you use through the season and let the newbies know about the golf course lawn, uh, uh, store and academy. Sure. Okay. So will I be leveling my lawn next year? At this point, no, I don't have any plans to. The main reason why I did it this year was because I needed content to go into the golf course lawn, um, academy. And one of my things for this weekend, guys, so the you guys that are in the academy is I've already gone through, I've done the scripting. I'm going to cut a lot of the footage that I used for, that I shot for the YouTube video. And I'm going to be using that in um, the lessons that I'm putting together for that because I literally um, top dressed my lawn this year 
for two reasons. One, because I wanted to give myself an opportunity to, to get the to get a really good job, a really good result with the overseeding of RN15, which I got, but also because I wanted some better footage for the course, for the Lawn Academy. Granted, like it's gonna be similar content that was on the YouTube channel, it's already in YouTube, but I wanted to have that in the Academy just for completeness. So what, so what Daryl's talking about, uh, the Golf Course Lawn Academy, is a course that I put together um, over the over the winter, over last fall, winter, and early spring that um, gives you a very condensed way, a condensed method of how I recommend you go about creating a golf course lawn. Um, it also covers topics and things that I don't really talk about on YouTube, mainly because no one really wants to watch it. Things around like breaking down what every single nutrient does and why you need them in your lawn, why they're important, how they work together. Um, around um, the importance of adding, of using carbon in your lawn. Uh, there's a really, really good video around backpack sprayers. Like, the, like literally this, the, the video that I shot and filmed this week and released this week um, on sprayer calibration, that is like one segment of a video that literally I have nine tips around using backpack sprayers. So everything from like, um, cleaning them, to calibrating them, to mixing up the, um, to, to, to how to mix certain um, different pro products together to get a really good result. Um, all that is in the course. So really, if you want a taste of what that's like, look at the video from like earlier this week and that like is like one small segment of a video that's um, that covers all of that. So if you're interested in um, getting something more structured, that's what that's all about. And that's what Daryl did. Daryl is a student in the Golf Course Lawn Academy. And last week he sent video pictures of his lawn and that is what his lawn looks like. So I can show you guys that. This is his lawn after doing everything literally verbatim in the course. Um, this is the results he was able to create over the course of this season um, just following the, following the program. So shameless plug, hopefully you guys can um, will, will enjoy that. And as far as how much humic max, I'm Daryl, monthly. So every month, so let me see, I started applying it in April. So April, May, June, July, August, September. Um, so it's going to be like six, probably six bags. I don't know if I'll do a, an October application. It's going to be at least six bags for this entire season because it goes down once per month. Once per month. Okay. And then, uh, Christopher has a question. Christopher Burkett says, Hey, sorry if you already discussed this, but how, but how has your lawn been recovering since the whole delivery truck incident? Um, it's been doing really well. Thanks for asking Christopher, making me relive the pain of that. Uh, he says, uh, did you have to replace the water line or was it just a damaged sprinkler head? So no, the water line actually was um, was cracked. So there's, uh, I was calling it a slip fitting. It's actually not a slip joint. There's like a, um, um, what, did, what did Austin call it? A bell end? So like you have like a piece of PVC pipe, like one end of it and on one end there's like a flare. So like the other PVC pipe can slip into it. So um, that that section where they slipped in, like that area is where the leak happens. So whenever they ran over the lawn, either like it tweaked it or moved it slightly and it just broke the PVC or broke the, the seal, the bond there and it caused, uh, caused a leak. So he was able to cut that section of pipe out, um, put in a slip fitting and it hasn't leaked since. So fingers crossed that it continues to to hold, um, it was not just a damaged sprinkler head. That would have been a lot easier to fix than uh, than that. But you know, Mayfield Irrigation, Austin did an awesome job. Minimal damage to the line. It's grow it's come back in really nicely. So I am happy about that. Not happy that it was damaged, but hey, you guys got to see some cool content at my expense. And you know, Amazon did the right thing. They took care of it, so we're all good. All right. Uh, Michael Harner says, what's going on, uh, Michael? Appreciate you coming to hang out in the live stream. And then uh, Kay Ward says, hey, it's been a while watching the videos, been busy helping out other people with their lawns. That's awesome. And that's the thing, guys, you know, once you guys like get all this knowledge, you learn a lot more about lawn care and, you know, all the little tips and tricks to help improve your lawn. You know, secret tip, it mainly comes down to a lot of mowing. Um, be sure to also help your other neighbors out too. If they, if they ask for help, don't go over to people's lawns and be like, hey man, you see how my lawn looks awesome? It looks like you could use some help here and I got some tips for if you want it. Don't do that. But if they ask for help, don't be one of these people just and just be like, oh, you know, I just mow it, I put some water on it. Like help them out. You know, it's, it's uh, good lawns help everybody. So, you know, be someone that, that shares, uh, shares the knowledge. All right. Um, let's see um, what else we got here. So Brian Jones is in the house. Uh, he has a point question here. He says, I love Bermuda grass. I have an issue with shade that takes up a huge um, portion of my lawn up north, so, uh, 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 my lawn in the front. So uh, so core of the lawn has been turned into dirt. What can I do to fix this? So you have a shade issue that takes up a huge portion of your lawn in the front. Um, so the first thing you have to do, Brian, is um, eliminate the shade. You're gonna wanna eliminate the shade. Whatever, whatever is causing the shade 
um, in whatever whatever is causing the lawn to be bare, which it sounds like it's a shade problem, we gotta get rid of that. Because anything else I recommend to you as far as increasing your mowing, you know, doing soil testing, doing all these other things to try and help improve the quality of the soil, none of that's gonna matter if the area that's bare is not getting enough sunlight. So so I would um I would um you know I would definitely consider like look for ways of, of like reducing the amount of shade uh, that you have in the lawn that that area the lawn has. And then um, at that point, once you're once you've gotten rid of it, so either cutting down the tree or um, raising the canopy, the grass should start recovering or start growing in or start filling in that spot. And what you can do is you can take plugs from areas of the lawn that are doing really well and transplant those to the areas that are bare. But I wouldn't do that right now if the shade is still a thing because the grass that you transplant isn't going to grow. So the first thing is to eliminate um, the issues um, when it comes to uh, to shade. Um, and let's see, uh, let's see what else we got here. Okay, so the xenomorph has a question, um, not sure if it's a question, or but a question about like a humic acid. It says, there always seems to be a mixed reaction when talking about using humic acids, sea kelp, and the likes. Is there any scientific uh, backup to prove that those products work or are they just snake oil products? Um, so, you know, you know, so yeah, so there are people that, that think that they are snake oil, but I mean, they, they uh, is, there, is there research to prove to say that humic acid, that adding sea kelp, that adding biochar to your soil, that all those things help the soil? Yeah, there are research papers that support that. Like if you, if you just do a, if you go on Google um, Xenomorph and just be like, you know, humic max benefits, or sorry, humic, humic uh, acid benefits, sea kelp benefits, biochar benefits. Um, you will find research papers, not just done by, you know, you know people with an opinion, but actually um, actual agronomists, actual people that, that have, you know, doctorates in soil, in soil theory. Um, and, you know, there are benefits to those, to those products. And if you, if you get, take the time to understand how they work, that they help to stimulate and increase microbial activity in the soil. And if you understand that, if, how, what the, if you understand the role that microbes play in allowing fertilizers to work more effectively, then you'd understand the benefits you get from them. A, a good, a good thing I can say is that for my lawn, right, I've been, I've been babying my lawn for several years. There's been a, there's a, a marked difference, a noticeable difference, huge difference between last summer, this time last year, and now, both in um, green up in the spring, um, in uh, just the, in the color, just the, the color of the lawn, like how it's just how it's worked, how much water I've had to put in the lawn. Um, overall, just from the addition of starting to add um, carbon products, micronutrient products like sea kelp, um, biochar, those kind of humic acid, all those types of things to my soil. There's been a lot of benefits that I personally seen in my lawn. But to answer your question, yeah, there is there is scientific research to back up the benefits of it. Um, now, would I say that if you're not doing all the things that you that you that support um, having these these things in your lawn, um, would you see a big benefit? In other words, if you go out and you bought like the the carbon kit, right? So you got like the micronized carbon, the sea kelp, the um, the biostimulant package. You apply that to your lawn, but you're not mowing it, you're not fertilizing it properly, you're not doing like the the stuff that that creates a great looking turf. Um, then you're probably going to see limited. You're going to see limited benefits. But if you're doing a lot of the things that you're supposed to be doing, like mowing regularly, soil testing, fertilizing according to soil test data, um, then yeah, absolutely, those products can make a big difference. They can make a noticeable difference in the color um, and the benefits of the lawn. So hopefully that helps. Um, definitely not snake oil products, but I wanted to take your question because I know it's something that question people have. Um, I personally have gotten great results on it. And if you do some research yourself, you'll see there's other, there's people that, that, that actually have degrees in these type in, uh, in, in turf grass and in soil that will, uh, that will say the same. So appreciate your question. All right, let's see what else we got here. So DW Davis is saying, like what you do. I learn something every time. Uh, glad, glad to hear that DW Davis. Appreciate you hanging out in the live stream. That's always uh, always fun. Glad that, you hear, that you're learning a little something every time you hang out in uh, in the live stream. Um, let's see, um, Bobby says he just watered at 5 a.m. Tell your boys to water, to cut it four inches high. Um, okay, I guess it depends on your grass type. Uh, I guess this occurs on your grass type. And you know, left tool is in uh, in the house as well. It says, cherish in the lake right now. Left tool, here's the thing, man. I gotta tell you, man, I didn't, I didn't comment yet. I'm thinking about how I'm gonna respond to you because you put out a video today, sir, and you, you made a very strong, strong allegation. You're talking about Tahoma 31 and you you said that it's like, it's 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 the ultimate Bermuda. Now, you know, that's, that's those are really strong words. You know I mean? You know how I, I am a fan of Tiffway. And I'm also a fan of Tifway and Arden 15, but you're saying that that Tahoma is like it's the the alpha and the omega of Bermuda grass. 
So I, I don't know, man, it's a strong words. I, got, I still gotta think about what, how I'm gonna respond to that video or the, what I'm gonna put in your comment section. But just wanna let you know that I noted it. I, I saw what you said and I saw you got like right tool now going out and putting it in there too. So I don't, I don't know, man, you guys are, you guys are coming like getting that, that bougie Bermuda. But uh, but yeah, noted, noted. It's a really cool video, man. And I, uh, I really enjoyed watching it. All, all jokes aside, um, looking to see, looking forward to looking at the content and seeing how um, how Right Tools Lon does when he puts the uh, the sod in. So uh, so very very cool. All right, okay. And then Bobby P says all my seventy seven customers have fit green grass, even though the drought in Minnesota. I think you're talking about Princess seventy uh, seven. Yeah, so that, that's definitely a thing. So I mean, you know, my lawn looks really good uh, this time of year. Uh, I've got. Um, Arden 15, which is like the, you know, the new version of Princess 77. And uh, yeah, I'm not surprised that your, your, um, your neighbor's lawns are looking, um, looking good uh, this time of year. Sounds like they're mowing a little bit taller, but yeah, um, it's, it's a great cultivar. Like Princess 77, Arden 15, uh, great, great grass. Okay, Paul um, Rogel is in the house. He said he has a hydrized controller as well. And I still don't have a set schedule uh, set tough. I take it day by day. Um, yeah, I mean, that can work, um, Paul, but I mean, you know, here's the thing. I would figure out how long it takes for your irrigation system. Again, I'm going to ask your question as if it's Bermuda. If you have a Bermuda grass lawn, I would figure out how long it takes your irrigation system based on your water pressures and how much water your lawn will hold to put down one inch of water, right? And I would... I would probably break that up over a couple of waterings per week, especially even during the summer versus like soaking the lawn and, and just letting it get, go completely dry until the next time. While it's really good for preventing like fungus issues, um, you know, as far as like helping the lawn maintain an even color, uh, you know, breaking up, putting down the, the, wa the weekly allotment of water over a couple of watering sessions is probably a better strategy. Um, I, I would like come up, I would figure out how long it takes your, your irrigation system to put out that inch of water and then, and then break that up over a couple of days and put together a schedule. Because if you're just doing it ad hoc, um, you're probably overwatering. <laughs> you're probably overwatering. And when it comes to watering, um, I almost like to err on the side of a little bit less than more. So um, if it's working for you and you wanna keep doing that, go for it. But for me, I would wanna have some kind of a schedule in the system. Um, as well, but um, but just depends on what you're um, what you're after. All right, Alex has a question. Looks like it's also very, uh, based on watering as well. He says, "Does it make does it make sense to wait to water areas of the lawn, or so does it wait for areas of, to wait until areas of the lawn start becoming brown or hazy, thirsty, and then deep water the lawn? The rationale is to avoid fungus due to overwatering and also saving the water bill. Yes, yeah, so like you read my mind." Um, yeah, so there's a couple different strategies, uh, Alex. So you can do that. You can do like a heavy watering once per week, assuming your lawn will hold that much water. You know, it's not just all gonna run off. Um, that is a strategy. Or you can break it up into a couple of waterings over the course of a week, especially during summer months. Um, and that will help prevent like the, the lawn from going brown or hazy um, when it gets to be a bit dry. Here's the thing with Bermuda, it doesn't take Bermuda very long to bounce back. Like if you had Zoysia um, or like St. Augustine, I probably wouldn't want to get those um, to the point where they start going brown from like uh, drought conditions. I'd want to like keep, I would probably definitely incorporate some kind of a multi or several time per week watering strategy during the summer months. Um, Bermuda, um, like literally you can, as soon as it gets water, it greens up really, really quickly. So it just, it just depends on which way you want to go. Um, but I, I would not, I would, to your point, over the, the the benefit of doing it once per week is going to prevent issues with um, fungus. That that is a good strategy for doing that, but it's not the best strategy for maintaining the lawn green throughout the course of the summer. So, either way will work. If you have Bermuda, it doesn't really make a, a, a ton of ton of difference. I will tell you on my lawn what I'm doing is uh, Monday and Thursday is when my irrigation is set to run. So, your call on which one uh, you wait, which way you want to go. All right, so uh, another follow-up question from the UK. Um, uh, Shazia Quadri says, um, apologies, so hand weeding for of crabgrass only. You are right about the lawn care guy, has great videos on dethatching, aimed on pulling out those shallow root crabgrass. Thanks and keep up the good work. Yeah, so um, hand weeding for crabgrass, um, is it only for crabgrass? No, it, you can use it for other types of weeds too, but I mean, crabgrass is the one that's most prevalent in my lawn this time of year, since I had no pre-emergent. Um, so that is what I, that's what I just do. I just, I just hand weed them. I don't run around and spot spraying herbicide on the lawn, uh, this time of year. So, uh, up to you, which way you want to go, but uh, given that you're in the, in the, in the UK, you can't really spray herbicides. Uh, that's pretty much going to be your only option. All right. Uh, so, uh, Sean Sen says, Hey, I met Joey Largan today at Jerry Pate. Good guy. I'm doing a, a few top dressings this week. 
Yeah, man, Joey's a really good guy, man. He's really, really passionate about mowers. We'll talk your head off about different types of mowers and just, you, you can tell, someone that's really enjoys what they do. I think he's worked for Jerry Pay for quite a while. He's been there a long time and he's always, uh, you know, he's always treated me really well and all anyone that I've sent to them has always um, had a really good experience. So yeah, if you have a Toro and you're looking to get um, some work done on it, uh, look up Jerry Pate. Uh, Joey will uh, will take care of you. All right, and Jerry Jay King says I put down Tiff Tough on the first rain uh, on, on the first, and it's been rain every day su uh, ever since. New lawn, um, yeah. So that's good. You don't have to water it, uh, Jay. That's that makes things a little bit easier for you, right? As far as uh, your new your new Tiff Tough lawn. And now we have Shane in the house. He has a question about Bermuda, and he says, Hey Ron, I have a fescue. I have fescue in my front. And Bermuda from my neighbor is growing in uh, into the front and uh, backyard. I'm thinking to just say screw it and completely seed with Bermuda. Is that a good idea? So let me get this straight. So you have your so you have fescue in your front, and Bermuda from your neighbor is starting to grow into um, the front and backyard. I'm thinking to say screw it. And okay, well, um, what you can do is I think I want to say that um, tenacity, which is fine for fescue will, and that's not a sick that's gonna kill Bermuda, but it will knock the Bermuda back. It, it will like, it will like uh, stress the Bermuda. If you wanna keep the fescue, that's something you can try. Um, but as, as invasive as Bermuda is, man, that's probably gonna be a losing battle. Unless there's some way that you can put some kind of a physical barrier between your lawn and the neighbor's lawn, uh, Bermuda's probably gonna win that fight, probably. Um, if you wanna get rid of all your fescue and just do Bermuda, that's an option too. Bermuda's an awesome grass, but I mean, if you like your fescue, I would look at some kind of way to put a barrier between your neighbor and you if you can. Um, that, I know it's not always possible because a lot of lawns just, just touch and that's just is what it is, but um, but yeah. Uh, you can try tenacity, but that's that's just really, um, that's like a stopgap, man. That's not that's not necessarily going to, that's not gonna kill the Bermuda. It's just a way to, to stress it a bit, so. Maybe maybe doing taking out a, a renovation project and going to straight Bermuda might be a good strategy. Just depends on how much you like your, uh, how much in love you are with your fescue. And you said you are in North Carolina resident, so in the transition zone. So yeah, so so Bermuda can work in North Carolina. So it just depends on which one. Again, I would go with the grass type you like more. You know, if you know, yes, the Bermuda is going to continue to encroach into your fescue. You can continue to spray things on it and try and put in a barrier to try and help that. Um, but I would try. And, I would stick with the grass that you like. If you like the way fescue looks, you're a big fan of fescue. Um, I would keep your fescue lawn. I would not just get rid of it just because there's a few areas where your your lawn meets and your neighbor's lawn meet, and you know where that area is like a a DMZ, like a you know a battle zone. Just just kind of surrender that section, but try and keep the rest of it um, with your fescue. Uh, that is uh, that is what I would do. And yeah, and, and you need to keep fescue based on what you're saying here. You said, unfortunately, the front yard is pretty shaded, so I'm not sure Bermuda would do great. So there you go. So in that case, in that case, you know that Bermuda is not going to encroach throughout the entire lawn because the fescue is going to continue to do well in the shaded areas, which I'm, I'm assuming it is, but the Bermuda will not do well in the shaded areas. So again, work out some kind of a strategy in the area where it's encroaching, but overall, fescue is probably the better fit for your lawn, especially since it's heavily shaded chain. Um, I wouldn't get rid of it to uh, to to put Bermuda in because you're, you're not going to like the results if you have a lot of shade in your lawn. Okay, so Patrick in Texas uh, is here. He says uh, Bermuda lawn has had a complete turnaround, but my soil tests over the last year hasn't moved the needle. All values, including uh, the pH 7.1, are stagnant despite my regimen. Uh, Fert schedule. What do I do? Well, first of all, um, Patrick, a pH of 7.1 isn't isn't bad. I mean, that's 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 on the upper on the higher end of the Goldilocks zone for Bermuda, but it's not bad. I mean, you didn't tell me it's like eight one. Like that would be that would be something a, po a point of concern. But um, I mean, I would look at your lawn. If your lawn is your lawn is looking great, like whatever you're doing, whatever products you're applying to it, and the couple with your mowing practices is having the lawn look really good. I would just keep, I would stick with what you're doing. You know, if you continue fertilizing it, like the salts in fertilizer tends to have a lowering effect of, of pH over time. Um, so just, just keep doing what you're doing. I wouldn't stress too much about trying to really drive the pH into the mid sixes because it, it might, it's in some cases, especially when it comes to lowering it, um, that can be a multi-year process. It can take a while to do that. And you know, the proof's in the pudding. You see your lawn looks great. So I would, I honestly just wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it too much because seven one really isn't, isn't bad. It's a little bit, it's a touch high, but it's not, I, would, I really wouldn't worry about that. It'd be like someone that has like a pH of like, uh, I don't know, like five, eight, you know, or five, seven. Yeah, you, you, you should add some lime to kind of bring that up. But if the lawn looks really good, or it's doing well, um, you know, just work on it over time. That's, that's what I'd say. The, you know, the, the first thing you said is the lawn has, has a complete turnaround. So whatever you're doing is working, keep doing that. 
that would be my uh, my recommendation. All right. Uh, Kay Ward says I need to have a hot dog on the stick uh, to have the best lemonade. Um, yeah, but you guys don't want to see me eating while I'm while I'm in the live stream, right? Mm. Probably not. You probably don't want to do that. And he says you're getting into the getting your lawn academy this week. I appreciate that, uh, Patrick. Hopefully you get some value out of it. If you have any questions once you get in there, let me know. Once you join, also be sure to look up the private Facebook group. Um, um, the link to it is in the academy. Um, so just be sure to join that because you get to hang out with all the other members and we, you know, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that happens in there. So be sure to check that out as well. Definitely check that out as well. Okay, let's see what other questions we have. We're getting close to, to giveaway uh, time, guys. We gotta be getting pretty close to that, right? We get to see who uh, the winner is of the various items from uh, from last week. Um, let's see. So we got Josh here. Um, um, Christopher. Chris, Chris has a question about um, fungus. Let's see here. Um, he says, hey, Ron, have you posted a video regarding the identification of problems, i.e. watering fungus insects? I'm in Nash, I guess Nashville, um, and have KBG in front and has a big brown spot with green in the middle. Big brown spot with green in the middle. Um, yeah, that does sound like some kind of a fungus problem. It sounds like a fungus problem. It sounds like brown patch or something. Um, no, I've not posted a video um, saying, talking about different types of fungus um, or fungi. I have posted a video saying this is, like, a good example. The video that I did um, earlier this season on lawn fungus, if you've not seen that one, I show you what brown patch, or sorry, large patch in your lawn looks like, and I'll show you what spring dead spot in your lawn looks like, because it's a video about fungicide. So I say, hey, listen, if you got something that looks like this in your lawn, like what I've got in my lawn, um, this is large patch, and these are the products you can use to get rid of that. Um, but I have not done a bunch, of, I've not done videos like talking about different um, issues. I guess I could do that, it's a good idea. That's a good idea. But the fact that you say it's like a ring and there it's, it's green in the middle or it's green in the middle for now anyway, and it's dead around it, that sounds like a fungus problem. That sounds like that sounds like large pa large patch or brown spot or something along those along those lines. It sounds like you have a fungus problem uh, to me. You can send me a picture of it if you want and I'll help you out, um, Christian. Send it here, ron at uh, golfcourselawn.com. Just send me an email there with a picture of what you got deal going on and um, I will take a look at it. I also know people that are experts on lawn fungus that I can also send it to as well. And uh, they'll they'll give their opinion as well. So I'll be able to tell you what you got what you got going on. But no, I don't have a video that talks about all those things. I've got different videos that talk about each of those subjects in of themselves, but not one that talks about them, all of them together. Uh, great question. Thanks so much for asking and uh, give me an idea. All right, so we got some super chats here that I have not taken care of. I apologize for that guy. We got Lee Farmer in the house. Super chat. Received. I appreciate it, Lee. Thank you so much for the support, for supporting the live stream. And a super sticker from Christian Harvet. Super chat. Uh, it says a character holding their head in their hands saying, you're my number one. I appreciate it, uh, Christopher. Uh, thanks so much. And uh, and hopefully that helps answer your question um, as well. And then we see, um, he said, Latitude 36 in my backyard looks amazing following your advice. I appreciate that. And Heidi B's uh, is by far the best chicken sandwich. You know what? Um, what is it called? What is the thing that you guys call have in, in Nashville? It's some kind of fried chicken. It's called... Um, it's it's fried chicken, but it's like a it's a thing to Nashville. I think it was invented by I think it was invented at Hattie B's, or it's it's a thing that's that's known to um since is it hot chicken? I think that's what it's called, hot chicken. Like I had that in Nashville not last year, but the year before, and that is good. That's really good. I have not had Hattie B's chicken sandwich to be able to say that it's the best, but Hattie B's does make a really good um they're really good. I think it's their hot chicken is what it's called. That's really really good. But we don't have we don't have any of those here in Atlanta, so I still got to stick with Popeyes. I'm talking about like mass a mass produced chicken sandwich, for me, Popeye's is better than Chick-fil-A. Do not send hate in the comments, but that's just my opinion. Doesn't mean it's right. That's how Ron Henry feels about that particular chicken sandwich. All right, and then um, uh, Patrick says, I'm hoping in your Lawn Academy explains all your products and how to use them. It does, it does, it does in detail. It talks about the benefits. There's a video in there that explains in detail how to use them. There's also a video on YouTube that explains how to use the um, golf course lawn um, carbon kit as well. But in the course, in the, the academy, there's some tricks that I give you around like combining them together, like combining Turfplex with Nutrizolve and some different strategies around that that is not on YouTube that you will have access to. So hopefully you enjoy that. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll do my best to help you out. I appreciate you uh, uh, getting in and all the support. Okay, um, let's see what else we, uh, we we got going on here for, um, for questions. Um, hi Lou uh, T says, hey Ron, I keep getting a uh, gray leaf spot 
On my Saint, on my Saint Augustine, almost every other month, my grass recently recovered from tar. Um, what fungicide um, would you suggest? Um, you know, I, I would go with. Um, I would go probably with Headway, with Headway G, um, Hilu. If you want to talk about someone that's had a dealt with a lot of fungus issues, and again, I, mean, I say that because like Alan is super transparent about everything going on with his lawn, and he has a St. Augustine lawn. Um, check out Lawn Care Nuts content because he has, I think he's tried different, I know he's tried different types of products for taking care of um, fungus in his lawn. You can take a look and see, and see what he does. That's a great option. Um, but if you want, if you're going to, if you want my opinion on like a fungicide that I know that you're going to be able to apply that that is going, as far as one that should knock out pretty much anything, um, Headway G is the way to go. That one's going to have propiconazole and azoxystrobin. Um, and as long as you apply it at the curative rate, because you, you have a, you have like grapefruit leaf spot going on right now, like that should do uh, that should do the the business. That should be a good give you a good result. Um, as far as where you can get Headway, I'll put a link in here. And if also, if you um, if you're looking for a video that talks all about it, I did a video. Ooh, about a month ago, probably two, almost two months ago at this point, um, that talks about the, um, all about how, like the, the different rates, talk, it's all about fungicides. It talks about Caravan G, talks about Heritage G, and talks about Headway G, um, why you would choose one over the other. Um, and I get into like base, some basics on application rates, but really you wanna read the label and apply it based on what you're dealing with. So hopefully that helps. Headway's an awesome option for that, but also check out what Alan's doing, what he's done on his channel, for dealing with um, fungus in um, St. Augustine. Uh, great question, I appreciate you uh, chiming in. Appreciate you chiming in. Okay, uh, and you're very welcome, John. He says, I was only mentioning the wasps because I've heard they are attracted to grub larvae. Um, we'll hold off applying anything else and give it a chance to work. Yeah, I mean, if it's mainly the, gr the, the grub larva that they're after, um, the insecticide that's in Caravan G should do a good job against the grubs. Like, I, I've never had to do a follow-up application of Caravan um, from an insect, um, once I put it down. Like it's, it's like, it's once in the season, at the beginning of the season, and you're good on, um, in, in, from an insecticide perspective for the rest of the season. If you have fungus, you have to use something else, but um, as a follow-up, but for just insecticide, it's a, it's a really good option for that. All right, Robert Rainey says, great content as always, great information. I appreciate you, Robert. Um, and uh, let's see, Travis Winston is saying, uh, we have 100 plus watching. 124 at this point, I think. And it says, let's hit the like button. Um, give me some support. I would appreciate that, guys. So while we get ready here to do the giveaway, to chime in on the giveaway, um, be sure to um, touch that like button ever so gently. It's free for you guys to do. It's a great way to support the channel. And it gives me a second to top off or have a sip of my lemonade. I really appreciate it. Uh -huh. Thanks so much for that. All right. Um, Dwayne Hopkins says, hey, Ron, I always love all the content you put out and you taking the time to do the live stream. When applying the fertilizer at half rate, are you technically changing the NPK, um, i.e. 16.48 becomes um, 8.42? No, no, you're not, not really. No, you're not, you're not really, it doesn't really become that. It's um, like the formulation of the fertilizer is the same, it remains the same. Like um, if you apply, let's say you take a good example. Let's say you take um, uh, like cubic max as an example, right? Like Lebanon lists two, lists two rates for that. If you apply it at the lower rate, which is three pounds per thousand, you end up putting down just under half a pound of nitrogen um, per thousand square feet. If you apply it at the higher rate, you end up putting down closer to just under a pound, like 0.9 pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet. So in other words, like the, the makeup, the composition of the fertilizer doesn't change because you're applying it at a lower rate, but the amount of each of those products that actually gets into the soil changes based on the rate that you're applying it at. Does that, does that make sense? So um, yeah, hope it, I think I think it did a good job explaining that. So yeah, it, it's, you're not, in other words, if you apply it at half rate, it doesn't become a 60, it doesn't become like an 824, but if like, for example, if, if the 16.48 you're talking about is designed to be applied monthly, right? and you apply it at like the beginning of the month, half of it at the beginning of the month, and then another half at the say middle of the month, overall you're still you're still getting the same amount of nitrogen, you're just breaking it up into two applications. You're not so you're not changing the formulation, but the amount of each of the of the macros, the nitrogen, the phosphorus and the potassium that are going down um, is reduced based on that you're putting it down you're putting it putting less of it into the soil, not and you're not changing the composition. Does that hopefully that makes sense? 
Hope I did a decent job explaining that. I think so, but if not, let me know and I'll revisit it. It's good. It's a good question, but no, it does. You're not changing the fertilizer. You're just changing how much of the of the macros you're putting in. All right, good question. All right, so Walter says, tell us more about your um, background. Uh, thanks for the content. My new Friday night routine. Okay, so my background, um, my professional background is I am I work in IT. So I'm actually a, uh, uh, I work as as an information security professional. So I'm really like a, an IT geek. Uh, you know, as, as what I do for my day job. That's that's what I do. I've been, wor- I've been working professionally in IT since 96 or so, so 20, whatever that is, 26, 27, 26 years at this point. Um, and I got into lawn care um, mainly because I wanted to document the journey of transforming my lawn. So I started making YouTube videos um, several years ago, I don't know, probably five, five years ago, six years ago at this point, um, mainly as a way to document what I was doing on my lawn. Um, and it shows because they were really horrible videos. <laughs> Um, but then as people started watching them and, and I started getting the results and people started enjoying that, I said, I really started enjoying the process and, and understanding, um, the whole, everything goes into creating a great lawn, right? Like between the top dressing, the soil and the, and the soil testing and, and balancing, um, the nutrients properly and the importance of proper watering and mo- the real importance of, of mowing. Um, like all that became a lot of fun. And as a, as a, as like a, as a hobby or something that I've really enjoyed and gotten into and it's grown far beyond what I ever expected it to. Um, that is, that is how we arrived to where we are, how we are, where we are now, as far as the content in the live stream, I just, I just have like, I always want to make things better. Right. So outside of, um, what I do professionally, I am, I'm also a martial artist. So like anything that I do, I try and do it better and try and improve on it over time. So because I got better at, or got more into lawn care, I want to make my lawn better. I want to make the quality of the videos better. So that's why everything has gotten better over time. So I've just been doing research and just taking the time to improve the process. So um, that's my nuts. That's my my um, my background um, in a nutshell. I don't know what else I can tell you about myself. Um, yeah, that's about it. I'm a I'm an IT guy. Know a ton about like keeping the bad guys out of networks. Know know a lot about breaking into networks. <laughs> so that was that was what I did in my in my previous life based on what I do now um, compared to what I do now. But um, but yeah, it's a, and then lawn care was a hobby that's turned into something a lot more. So hopefully that helps, um, Walter. Anything else you want to know, let me know in the comments and I will do my best to uh, to answer. Okay, so Romero is here. He says, I just want to say, I'm going to take my lawn to the next level with everything I've learned in your channel. That is awesome, Romero. Um, yeah, I'm glad you're committing to the process. I'm glad that the channel is useful for you. Uh, just remember, I mean, uh, you're going to see a lot of products being mentioned. Um, there is a system that I use that I think works really well. But uh, you know, regular mowing is a staple. That's a that's a core component of that. So make sure that even with everything else you see me talking about, make sure you're doing a lot of your mowing to keep the lawn uh, looking looking great. Thank you so much for the support, and I'm glad that the lawn has been an inspiration. And if, you know, if you want something really cool to check out, Romero, be sure to check out the Fix My Ugly Lawn series. Like if you want to see how quickly you can turn a lawn around in the course of just a few months, check out like the series that I did um, with my neighbor Alex on, on, on uh, lawn transformation that took about three months. I think I've got the uh, playlist um, here that I can send to you. If you've not seen that yet, you gotta check that out because that is, um, that is very, very, very cool stuff. I think this link still works. Let me put it in the chat here for you and you can, and you can, uh, you can take a look at that. So Romero Harris, I think that's you, boom, and that. So watch that if you've not watched that as yet. Um, that shows like, you know, what you can do to, to fix your lawn if you just want to watch the YouTube content versus doing the course. All right. And then, okay, we're getting close to giveaway time, guys. Yeah, it says, oh no, Pop, uh, LG's here. There goes my chance to win the, the Turf Plex. Um, and let's see, what else? Uh, Jack Riff says, what is your opinion on uh, Blue Muta? Um, it's a cool concept. It's just not, not for me. Um, so here's why. Here's why um, my take on, on Blue Muta and why I'm not a fan of it. Um, it's similar along the lines of why I don't, I don't like, I don't like overseeding my lawn with, um, perennial rye. Um, uh, but the big reason is, is that with blue muta, you're mixing a cool season grass and a warm season grass. And yes, in theory, in theory, um, it does, it does look cool. I mean, I think that, you know, Tiffway 419 with Arden looks really, really good too. So, I mean, they, from a, from a, from a look standpoint, they're kind of comparable, but from a from like a like a headache standpoint, right? Of the fact that like like Kentucky bluegrass grows differently at different rates than Bermuda does, as far as the herbicides that you can apply on them, like like finding a herbicide that you can apply on Bermuda, um, and you can also apply on KBG and not damage it. 
Um, that just makes things more complicated. And then a good example is something that I do now, right? Like this time of year, I'm applying plant growth regulator to my lawn, right? The application rates for um, PGR for Bermuda are somewhere between a quarter of an ounce per thousand up to 0.38 or there so per thousand, right? The, the correct rate for um, Kentucky bluegrass is quite a bit higher than that. I think it's like 0.55 if memory serves me, something like that, but it's, it's higher. It's, it's, it's higher, it's a rate that if you spray that rate on Bermuda, it would cause problems. So now, if you have if you have Bermuda, right, you have like a cool season grass, you have a warm season grass, they're mixed together, what rate do you use? Because if you go with the lower rate, you're going to suppress growth in the Bermuda properly, but the Kentucky bluegrass is gonna be able to do whatever it wants to do because you're really, you're really under applying. So it, for me, it just creates a complication or introduces a complication that is, I just prefer not to deal with. Um, now I'm having to deal with like the fungus issues that are more native to Kentucky bluegrass versus just the ones that are, are native to, to Bermuda. So for me, just not, it's not for me. I get that some people want to do it and there's nothing wrong with it. I and mean, if you want to do that, go for it. But uh, that's, that is my reasoning why I am not a fan of that. Not saying that it's anything wrong with it, but hopefully you understand why um, it's probably not something that I'm going to do. Hope that helps. Hope that helps. All right, um, let's see. How much for a personal consultation in Houston? I don't know, uh, Patrick, send me an email. Uh, I'm probably not gonna fly to Houston, but I can do something over Zoom. Just send me an email, Ron at Golf Course Online. Let me know what you're looking for. I mean, a lot of the stuff is you can find on my in my YouTube content, but if there's something else special that you want, send me an email and we can, we can, figure, uh, we can figure something out. We can figure something out. Okay, guys, I think we are getting close to giveaway time. All right, so let me see if I get down here if there's any more major questions that I got to get to before we start getting um, into uh, the giveaway. Um, well, we got one from Dustin Frank. He says, hey, Ron, I have a new construction house um, uh, new construction house with some form of TIF sod. It's probably TIFway 419, uh, Dustin. He says, um, it, apparently, it was apparently not watered well after laying and is still mostly brown after three months. Um, any advice on getting it to green up? Well, I would st start putting some water on it now. Start putting some water on it now, and it should start responding. I mean, if you start, if you water it, if you water it, it should it should grow in. It should. Um, I mean, I'd hate to think that all the sod is dead. I mean, I, normally what happens, based on what you're describing, is there'll be some sections that'll green up nicely, and some sections that won't. Um, that'll be like brown or stressed, like what you're saying. But if the entire thing is um, is brown. Um, yeah, I don't know. You may have to get the builder out there and, and, um, and, you know, have them do something about it. But I mean, I would get some more, I would get water on it. Um, make sure you're mowing it. Uh, you know, just, just, I mean, cause tiff, again, Bermuda is incredibly difficult to kill. So I, I'd be, I'd be shocked if your entire lawn is dead. I'd, I'd be really, really surprised at that. Um, but yeah, if you're not mowing it, mow it. Um, if you, if you're not using any kind of a moisture manager, something like Hydrotain, um, consider doing that. Uh, but then outside of that, just mowing it and getting down, maybe like a starter for like a triple 12, like something like this, um, Dustin, let me show you here. Something like this would work well. Like go to the golf course lawn store and this guy, this is a good uh, safe fertilizer to use. It's just a, for a lawn that's brand new lawn that's starting out. It's gonna have a little bit of everything in it. Like you go with that. But, um, but yeah, I'd like to figure out why it's completely all brown if it's all brown. Cause that, that sounds odd um, at this point. All right, um, JP Show has a question about dog it's damaging lawns. He says, hey, Ron, the neighbors are walking by and constantly letting the dogs pee on my lawn and making damage. Man, that's the worst. I hate that. He says, I held back my words the other day as I watched a dog, as a lady let her dog pee heavily. What would you do? I would just talk nicely to her about it. Like, I mean, I would, I mean, here's the thing. You're not gonna be there all the time to watch and see what people are doing on your lawn. Um, Perhaps the, per the person that walks by is a regular. Maybe you can just go out there really nicely and say, "Hey, ma'am, listen, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a jerk or anything. You know, I, I, I'm, you may not know this, but like dog urine is really hard on grass, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying really hard to get my grass to look as good as I can get it. Um, so if you, so if you wouldn't mind, like, just not letting your dog pee on my lawn, I would really, really appreciate it. Just say, just say it like that, because I mean, a lot of people are oblivious to the damage that dog urine causes, or they don't really care about their lawn and they don't care if it burns their lawn. But if you go and you talk to them nicely and you say, Hey, you know, could you mind please not doing that? Um, you know, it's worth, it's worth something. Cause I don't think, I don't think it's technically illegal, but if you just ask really nicely, you know, she might, he or she might stop, might stop doing it. So that's uh, the best, the best I could do. I mean, you're not, you're not gonna be around all the time to turn irrigation on um, or do things like to make them go away. The best thing is just to ask them to nicely to stop doing it. That's, that's, your, uh, that's your best thing. All right, JP Show says, hey, I'm having drainage issues in the backyard with water pooling, want to avoid tearing up 
and running heavy drainage, especially with an actual pool in the yard as well. Will sand aerating help stop um, the problem with it pooling? Um, it depends, right? So the water has to have somewhere to go, JP. It does have some, has to have somewhere to go. So if you're if you've got like a concave like spot in your lawn, like a bowl. I mean, yeah, top dressing will help some, but it's still gonna settle there because there's, there's nowhere for it to go. So if there, if the lawn does have a natural path for the water to drain away, um, aerating and top dressing the lawn, like literally for my lawn, was like the single best thing I've ever done as far as like reducing water staying on my lawn for long periods of time. So yes, th you will see some benefits um, to that, you should. Use like a 70-30 mix um, if you decide to go that route. Um, and, but if it's super bad, like if it's some other issue where the lawn, the shape of the lawn doesn't allow it to drain, now that's when we're talking about digging things up and doing like a catch basin or putting in some kind of a, you know, some way to, of, of, of proper drainage. And in, for that, I would probably get a professional to come out and do it. Get like someone that knows um, how to do that with, with also minimizing damage to come out and look at, at what's going on and, and help you with, um, with resolving that. So hopefully it's something mild where a top dress and will help it. But if not, um, you might you might want to go ahead and get that fixed. I mean, and honestly, I would because you, you, if you if you have water pooling and that goes on long enough, you're going to start having fungus problems and if, extreme examples issues with moss or algae, and the lawn's just never going to look that good in that area. So it's kind of like you know, do you want it to look bad for a short period of time while you fix it, or do you want it to look good, bad all the time because it's never going to really fix itself? So um, oh, you know better than me how bad it is, but um, but yeah, that's something just some food for thought as far as the way. Uh, the way to go. Um, that's, this is a good one. This is a great one. Good, good suggestion. Alex B says, hey, JP Show, I leave a few chemical application flags out on my lawn all the time. And that seems to keep people and pets off the front lawn. That's a good strategy. Yeah, that could work. Saying you want those flags that say, please keep dogs or, or, or kids off the lawn for um, for 24 hours. That could actually work. That's a good, that, that might work. It may, might not, but it can't hurt. Can't hurt, right? Um, and let's see. Let's see what other uh, uh, questions that we have here. And this is uh, JP Says, you know what I mean, LG? Need to run send a pic? Yep, I have a picture. I have an email, um, JP. You can send it here to Ron at Golf Course Lawn. That's my email address. If you want to send me a picture of it, I'll look at it and give you uh, my advice on what I would do. And uh, yeah, we can uh, we can go from there. We can go from there. And then Phil J, kind of a spot, um, responding to XMR's question, says, yeah, humic acid and sea kelp works great in my lawn. I applied it bef before my soil test and the lawn greened up in about a week. Test showed I was very low in MPK, but the lawn looks great. Yeah, uh, I'm glad to hear you're getting good results with it as well, Phil J. I know a lot, a lot of people that have been trying it have gotten really good results with those products. And there is research to support that they do, they are, they are useful. They are a good application to, uh, a good thing to add to your lawn um, as well. Let me see um, any other questions we have. So, uh, Norel, Nor I can't say your first name. I'm gonna try it. Norel, uh, Norel leaves uh, Jimenez. I got the last. I got your last name right. I know. I used to know Jimenez. I grew up with one. Um, he says, "I am Cuban, but I live in the United States." Greetings. I would like to, uh, you to help me with my lawn. I am a fan of good things, and I think you do an excellent job. I appreciate it. Um, um, uh, Norel leaves. Norel leaves. Why can't? Why can't I say your name? Um, yeah, so it look, you can look at my content. I've got a lot of, I've got tons of free content that is really useful um, on on helping people transform their lawns. If you're looking for something a little bit more structured, I do have a course here at golfcourselawn.com. It's the Golf Course Lawn Academy. That's a more structured course that, that will like explain things um, a little more detail and and like makes you just have to weed through a bunch of YouTube content. And it goes into things, goes into to subjects that I don't that there's no YouTube content on mainly because I don't think a lot of people would want to watch it because it's something that's more it's better it's, it's the kind of material that's better for a course but not that would not necessarily work well for YouTube if that makes sense. So but yeah, check check that out. And if you um you know if you after you watch the videos or if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me and I will uh, I'll do my best to uh, to help you out. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you for watching. I appreciate the support. All right, guys. So I think we are good. We're about we're about time for us to um, about time for us to do uh, the giveaway. We got a couple more questions here, but we can we can start um, with the giveaway. So the way this works, um, the way this works is you had to have put a comment into last week's live stream. So if you have not done that, I mean, you missed your chance because I'm about to think it now. Uh, do it now. And so last week's live stream was the one on um, was the one on summer lawn goals, things you're gonna be doing for for your lawn. So the way this works is, if I come over here, I have a random comment picker. This is the um, the the link for that live stream. If I come over here and I can show you guys, and I throw it into the chat. 
or into the into YouTube, you can see that what is Every, pulling up is the um, this. The new stimulus. this this, uh, this is the video. So Golf Course Lawn Summer Projects Q&A. That was the one you would have had to um, put your comment into. All right. So with that out of the way now, now what we're going to do is we're going to fetch all those comments. It, we're not going to, you can't, if you guys comment a bunch of times, it's not going to matter because it only gets one entry per. Um, so now we're going to see we have a total of 49 comments, so 49 people that have entered. Now, um, the first thing we're giving the giveaway for, and here's the way this is going to work, guys. Once um, I announce the winner, you're going to have a couple of minutes to send me, um, you know, to, to say, yeah, I'm here. Like, put it in the chat saying I'm here. And then when you're done, you're going to have to email me the address you want the stuff to be sent to. Because I need, I need that so I can send it to you. All right. So the first thing that we're giving away is the OG Stripe Action Sticker. One of my personal favorites. Always, um, uh, always lots of love. And the winner of that is, drum roll. Keon Castleberry, Keon, are you here? Are you here? I'm gonna put your name in here as the as the winner. I'm gonna keep in notes of who got this one. So Keon is the first winner of the uh, Stripe Action sticker. So Keon, if you're here, be sure to chime in and let us know that you are present. Let's see, and if not, we'll just revisit that. So I got Keon for that one. All right, so let's move on to the next one. So the next thing we're giving away is, um, so you're gonna have your choice. You're gonna have your choice of either the um, the plain white Ron Henry logo sticker or the brand new, newly released psychedelic uh, Ron Henry logo sticker. There's only, again, it's only gonna be you. Whoever wins this is gonna be you, me, and Josh Abib. Is the only people that are gonna have this one. So uh, they're both rare, but this one is even more rare. All right. So the winner for that one is we're gonna get rid of um, Keon. We're gonna pick. And the winner is Up New York Lawn. So if you are here, sir, if you are here in the live stream, be sure to uh, to chime in. Let us know that you are present uh, and accounted for. Up New York Lawn. Let's see if you are uh, if you're here. Let me know if you're here, and uh, you will be the winner of um, of the sticker of this one of your of your choice. All right, now. Guys, we're getting more serious. We're moving into the into the nice stuff now. We're getting we're not into the nicer stuff. The stickers are nice. We're moving into the you know the nicer things that you guys may uh, really probably came for. So next up is the My Soil test kit. So you're gonna get one of these. You're gonna be sent to you in uh, in the mail. The winner of that. We're gonna go back to our comment picker. Okay, so uh, so yep, New York Lawn is here. LOL. Okay, so you so you're here. I'm gonna mark you off. So I'm gonna put an asterisk next to you. So you are gonna get your prize. I have not seen Kian as yet, so we may have to redo that one. But um, okay, so the, now we're going to the soil test kit, my soil test kit. The winner for that is Ben S. Ben S, are you present? If you are, let us know that you're here and we will get a uh, my soil test kit, the one that I like and uh, prefer to use, sent out to you post haste. Let us know, be sure to chime in and say you're here. I don't see you in the chat as yet. I don't see you in the chat as yet. And I don't see Keon in the chat as yet. Um, ben S, I don't see you as yet. Okay, so um, now guys, it's time for the thing that you guys are probably all after. So the next thing we're gonna give away is the turf plex. And guys, there's still a chance because right now only one thing's been claimed. Only the um, the the, first, the second sticker. So we now we have the turf plex fertilizer, the one I use and love. Great for your spoon feeding programs. Uh, you know, great for your lawn nice and green. I'm gonna apply that in little rates. And the winner for that, let's see if they're here. Hopefully they're here, is Mazama Blue. Mazama Blue, are you present? Mazama Blue, please come bring bring all your uh, bring yourself to the DJ booth. Let's see, are you here? Okay, so we got we got a Mazama Blue. I think I saw you in the chat, but I'm gonna say Mazama Blue is uh, the winner of the Turfplex. Uh, and I think you are here. Ben S is here. All right, cool. So you're you are here. And Mazama, I thought I saw you earlier, but you need to say I'm here, and then I'll know you're gonna stick around. <laughs> I know you're gonna stick around. And LG, hey, don't don't worry, LG. There's still there's still a chance. Um, Mazama Blue, you're still present. I saw you earlier, but I'm not sure if you're still here. You are here. Okay, good. So we're gonna call that one claim. So Mazama Blue is here and accounted for. Okay, okay. So. Um, Keon has not come back. I don't see him in the chat. So we're gonna redo the first sticker. We're gonna do the Stripe Action sticker. You know, we're gonna redo that one. So let's go back to uh, that one. And let's see, the winner for that is 007 Lawn. 007 Lawn, are you present? Are you here for the sticker? We're gonna give you guys a second on that. We'll see if 007 Lawn is here. I don't see him. 
Don't see him here. Anyone chiming in as yet? While we're waiting for him, I can take a question. We'll give it. We'll give it a couple. Of, we'll give it a couple of minutes before we uh, we redraw um, uh, one more time. Um, let's see. So Mazama Blue. Let's go back to. We'll go back to the main window here. Take Mazama Blue's question, where he says, um, uh, "Hey Ron, any reason I shouldn't spray Turfplex um, at uh, the four ounce rate tomorrow morning? Will Turfplex be less absorbed, cause damage? Is it better if I wait till Sunday?" Uh, no, you're fine to go. And you've got, now you're going to have like extra, you can have an extra gallon. So no, four ounces, the four ounce rate is going to be absolutely fine. You're not going to damage anything like between tomorrow and Sunday, going to be just fine. No worries at all. No worries at all with that. Okay. So let's go back to the live. Let's go back to the drawing and 007. I don't think you're here. So we got to do another drawing again for the stripe action sticker. Let's see who it's going to be. We will get rid of 007 lawn and the winner is... Nestor Reyes. Nestor, are you present? Are you present, Nestor? Need you to come and, and claim this. Someone, you know what? Why, why is it, you know, if it were the um if it were the turf plex, you know, everyone would be here, but like I'm I'm no just because the sticker, because the, the strap action sticker, no one no one's here for that one. We're gonna keep going. Nestor, are you present? I don't see you. I don't see you. Okay, we'll take another question, then we're gonna do another draw for the stripe action sticker. And you know, guys, and you guys know what? Just to make it, just to kind of sweeten the deal, because you guys have been sticking around as well, um, because you guys have been sticking around as well, what I will do is, um, with the Stripe Action sticker, I will send out a small one of these, and I'll also send out, I've got the big ones as well. So you're gonna get, you'll get two. You'll get the small Stripe Action and a big one. So I'll send out the winner for this. So the winner of that one will get two, uh, two different sizes to choose from. So, but still both, they're not gonna be the, the collector's one, but you'll get two stickers. All right, let's see, I do not see him here. So LG hold out hope, man. There's still a chance. There's still a chance. We're going to redraw again because he's not here. And uh, the winner is on the lawn training. On the lawn training. Are you present? Please come up to the DJ booth to claim your prize. If you're here, you need to let us know that you're here so that we can get this sticker sent out to you. Anybody. I'm trying to give away two stickers here. All right. So let's go back to um, the live stream. I'm going to ask another question while we see give um, on the lawn training a second to pop in. Uh, Vince, I don't know where you are, man. But okay, let's see. Um, the question was from JP Show. He says, hey, Ron, and do you have any luck asking your mower mechanic about the best way to check the oil on the mower? Any other maintenance he said you should be doing between visits? No, I did not, uh, JP. Um, I need to do that. I need to make a point to ask. I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i give Joey a call and, just, and give him a ring and see, and see what he says as far as the, uh, the best way to check the, uh, check the oil. I have not, I've not gotten um, that from him. Um, let's see, where did the live stream go? Where'd you guys go? Um, let's see here. Um, all right, so still no, still nothing from on the lawn training. He says he's here, but I don't, I don't see him. Is he here? Uh, oh, 007 is here, 007 is here. Woohoo's here, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, so 007 is the winner, so you did win. So 007, um, and, SM, and he's not. So on lawn training's not here, and 007 is here. Okay, so 007, you are the winner of the um, the dual stripe action stickers. Congratulations for that! And let me make a note of um, of that so I know who to want it. And uh, 007 uh, lawn. And um, so, guys, the way to win now. Here's the thing, you guys. You guys. You guys know how this has to work. Um, I made notes of who won what, but send me an email here to Ron at golfcourselawn.com with the address you want the stuff mailed to, right? So if I get you, once you give me your address, I'll get the stuff in the mail. I should be able to get the stickers in the mail tomorrow, maybe we'll see. Um, the the, the Soul Test Kit and the Turfplex will probably, um, this might be tomorrow, but the Turfplex will not be till Monday or Tuesday when that one will ship, but I will get them all out to you guys. Um, so guys, make sure uh, you send me your address of where you want it to go. So, all right. Back uh, to uh, the live stream. We got a couple of questions here. We got um, SMK in the house. Uh, Internet goal uh, SMK. Thank you so much, SMK, for hanging out. He says, um, Shane Wyatt, no chance you will stop the Bermuda. Try Fusilade too, but only somewhat stop it um, if it's a paver or concrete barrier. Yeah, kind of like what I was saying. So the best way is some kind of a physical barrier. Outside of that, you're going to be um, not going to have a great lot of success on, on doing it. Um, let's see what other uh, what other questions here, guys. So hopefully, so all you winners, man, congrats, man. This is really really cool. Somebody got a, a gallon of uh, the Turfplex, and uh, it's funny, Mazama Blue. You apparently already have some, but you're gonna have more. So you have like next month's uh, application, right? So you're gonna be you're gonna be good to go. 
Um, Mark says, "What? Well, there's a heart. Is there, there are Hattie B's in Atlanta, huh? I need to find one, Mark. I did not realize there's a Hattie B's in Atlanta. Um, if so, I have to go look it up. I have to go out and I'm going to try out their chicken sandwich and let you know what I think. But here's the thing: Hattie B's can't really count because it's not. It's not like readily available. It's not like a. It's not like fast food. I'm talking about like a a readily available chicken sandwich. Like I gotta. Have, I'm gonna have to go find out where this is and drive town town, make a special trip for it. Like you know, if I get like a, a chicken sandwich in a, in a specialized restaurant, I'm sure they can beat Popeyes. But I'm talking about like just a generic." like chicken sandwich that's it, better than most. But I mean, I've, there's one here in Atlanta. I got to find it now. I didn't know that that was the case. So thank you for, um, for, letting, me, uh, for letting me know. All right. Um, so um, Mo D says, hey, Ron, just want to let you know that I fixed my manual reel mower. Turns out it's adjustable. It was a pretty quick fix to move the blade up. Awesome. Yes. I know you had that problem. You said it was, it was catching on a blade last week, but you figured out how to adjust it. You got it adjusted and you're good to go. That's awesome. I'm glad you, uh, you did that. And uh you are good to go. That's pretty awesome, um, um, Modi. Thanks for uh, thanks for letting me know that you were able to uh, to solve the uh, solve the problem. All right, Shane Heath is gonna has a question about um, top dressing. So he says, "I'm going to do a light 50/50 top dressing. Should I add the Arden 15 first or after I level it? I would do it after Shane. Uh, I keep. I want to call you Shane. It's Sean. Sean. I would call. I would do it after Sean." Um, uh, mainly because Arden 15 Bermuda grass seed does not need to be buried very deeply. Like literally you can, um, if you put down that top dressing mix, you can uh, put your seed down and literally just dragging over it, like raking it in. That's enough to get it to germinate. You just, it needs like a, an eighth, a 16th of an inch. It doesn't, it doesn't need to be buried very deeply at all to germinate. So what I would do is do your top dressing, put the seed down and then drag it in and start watering it and call it good. That's the, uh, the route I would, um, I would take. You're likely to have a, a worse result by burying it than you are um, just, you know, making sure it's it's a uh, it's nice and uh, it's nice and light. Okay, um, guys, I think we are um, winding down. Let's see what else we uh, we have here. No, we got a brand new um, a brand new uh, viewer here. Joel, I think Joel uh, Schoenbacher says uh, Sha Schoenbacher. I think that's how you say it. Sorry, if I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm like destroying your name, uh, Joel. I, I apologize. He says thanks for this first timer here. I just moved to San Antonio and inherited an ugly lawn. It's okay, we can make it better. We can make it better, sir. He says, I decided to go with uh, Jamor Zoysia. Not Bermuda? Oh, okay, well, I, mean, I guess it's, it is warm season. He says, now I am going down the lawn care rabbit hole. Love your stuff, Ron. Uh, yeah, once you start, man, it's, um, it, tends to, it tends to become a thing. You know, but I mean, the best, thing, best advice I could give you, um, Joel, is if you've not as yet, and you're really gonna be really particular about getting the best possible result, Get a soil test done. That's super important. Get a soil test result done. Um, get a soil test done, and once you get your results, fertilize the lawn based on those results. So, like you know, that's going to tell you whether or not there's any deficiencies in your soil. So, just like if the pH is way out of whack, and that's going to help you formulate a program for deciding which products you apply to the lawn. So, and outside of that, um, you know, proper watering, but then just a lot of mowing. A lot of mowing is going to make the big difference. You know, get a pre-emergent down in the spring and the fall. That's gonna take care of most weeds and then just start mowing it a lot. And you should be um, you should be good to go. You should be good to go. Um, LG has a question. He says, any negative side effects of too much organic material? That's a good question, LG. I'm sure there are some negative effects to it. I'm trying to think of what they of what they would be. What would be the negative effects of too much organic material? Um, I don't know. I don't know. It depends on it depends on what you're talking about by too much. I mean, I put down a ton on on my lawn in the last year, and there's been no negative effects. I guess it depends. On, uh, on how much on how much we're talking here, I, I I guess if you're putting down like a rich like a rich um, compost that is a that is a fit or a match for the existing soil, I I can't see where there would be a lot of negatives to that. Like there, there are there are more negatives by by um, there's a lot more negatives to adding a ton of sand to your soil than there are to adding like rich compost or like biochar to your soil. If that makes sense. So um, organic material, I'd have to do some research on that. But off the top of my head. I no no negatives really come to top of to the top of my mind that I can think of as far as negative effects of adding um, a lot of organic material. Um, you say too much. That's the point. Is I can't. I don't know what too much would be. You know, if if that's uh, if that helps. Good good point though. Good good research topic. Good research topic. And then uh, Alex B says good point about phosphorus earlier. My cousin moved out to Oregon and has a lot of difficulty getting lawn chemicals in general. I believe phosphorus in particular. Is problematic out there. Yeah. And, and the, there's a good reason for that, actually, guys, because, you know, if your lawn, if your soil um, has phosphorus, that, that's one of the macronutrients that doesn't go away as quickly as nitrogen or potassium. 
Um, and too much phosphorus, really it's more from farmlands, it's not really from us, but really like putting too much phosphorus into your soil. Um, and if you happen to live near a body of water like a lake, the runoff from that can cause problems um, that can that can pretty much cause algae bloom and um, cause um, damage to a lot of the aquatic life. It causes a condition called um, uh, eutrophication. Um, so that's that's part of the reason why phosphorus is being limited. And the thing is, like once you get it, get enough of it in your soil, most people don't need to add it very regularly. So that's why a lot of states are taking a position of, of controlling. Uh, fertilizers with it and making sure you have to have like a soil test showing that, hey, I actually need it. And just, they're just controlling it more, which, which they should. They absolutely should um, because it, it, it unchecked, it can do damage to the environment. So I, I totally get it. All right. Um, let's see who else uh, we got here. Ro uh, Rolex SSD, DSSD. I know you're here now. I know you were here earlier. So just, I know you're a regular in the live stream. So I just want to shout you up. Say, hey, thanks for coming in to hang out in uh, on the show. Always appreciate that. Let's see what other uh, questions we, uh, we got here. So Gary Goyle's... Uh, Gary says, hey, Ron, you should do a celebration Bermuda plot. Mm, no, I shouldn't, Gary, because then I might like it, and then that's going to cause me to have to do a renovation. So I know myself. You guys noticed, like, I grew in the little planters. I grew, like, zoysia, which I know I'm not going to put in. Um, I grew ryegrass, which I know I'm not going to put in. And then I grew Arden 15, which I already have in the lawn, so I, I don't need to worry about putting that in. But if I put down, like, you know, some other Bermuda, like, like celebration or something else, and it looks really good. It might be a problem. I mean, it'd be lots of great content for you guys, but it'd be a lot of headache and a nightmare for me. So I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to tempt myself. Mm -mm. Not, not, not going to do it. Not going to do it. All right. So guys, again, congratulations to all the winners. And let's see what other questions uh, we uh, we have here. LG saying, well, Rob, this is probably my last live stream. I'm thinking I'm going to grow myself into a wizard river after this loss. You won last week, man. Just, just keep keep chiming in, just keep coming, and eventually you're gonna win. You know what I mean? I mean, I'll tell you this, the odds of winning on the Ron Henry Lawn Care live stream are better than your odds of winning the lottery. You know, they are a lot better than your odds of winning the lottery. So, you know, just keep showing up, keep showing up. And whenever we do a live stream, your chances are going to, uh, you know, the more you show up, the better your chances, right? Which is pretty cool. All right, I, let me see what other questions we have. Okay, so we got one here from, from Dwayne Hopkins. It's a good one. He says, what are your thoughts on verticutting and dethatching Bermuda lawns? Is this necessary? As I know, it's very helpful in cool season lawns, but not sure about warm season grass. Um, yeah, you know, here's the thing, Dwayne. If you asked me that like last year or even like two years ago, I'd say, eh, limited, limited value in it because I was mowing the grass a bit taller. But now, especially this year, now that I'm mowing like just under half an inch, and the, the turf is getting like super dense, super thick. Uh, and when we're really about halfway through the growing season, I still have like July, August, and S September for the grass to still grow. Um, I can see like if as the grass gets um, shorter, and especially if you're doing a lot of what I'm doing where I'm cutting it so frequently at low heights, um, I can see some benefits of thinning it out some. I really can. Um, so it's something I'm considering. I'm thinking about getting my hands on a power rake or something um, just to, to dethatch the lawn at some point this month. Might be some cool content and something I'm just, I just want to try out, just test out and see how it does. Um, so yeah, I think there, there definitely is value to it. There's, there's value in doing it. I think you get more value um, if your lawn is particularly dense, meaning if you got like three inch Bermuda, there's probably not a whole lot of reason to, to dethatch or verticut the lawn, not as much as if you have like half inch or three quarter inch Bermuda. I think there you would see the ben more benefits to it than if you're growing your Bermuda, your Bermuda very tall. So um, so yeah, I wasn't a believer in it before, but um, but yeah, more and more, I'm, I'm seeing more of the benefits um, of it as I've gotten my height of cut down a lot shorter. So something I'm probably gonna do this year. So great, great question. And I definitely stick around because if I do it, you guys will see uh, the uh, the video. You will see the video. Okay, um, let's see here. So um, New York Lawn, my email for uh, for all the winners, just so to help all you guys. My email address is ron at golfcourselawn.com. Be sure to email me. So the winners again tonight are 007 Lawn for these the the dual sticker up New York Lawn for your choice of you have to choose between the psychedelic sticker or the, I don't want to say the plain sticker, but the non, we'll call it the non-psychedelic ones. You have to decide where you want. Do you want bling or do you want more conservative? Your choice. Your choice, I'll send you which one you want. And then um, Ben S for the soil test kit and then Mazama Blue for the Turfplex. So make sure you guys all email me and we'll get those out to you. So uh, I need that to be able to get that done. All right, <laughs> see what else you got here. Uh, LG's like, I blame my, low, my soul self-esteem for all of these giveaways. 
No, I don't know about that. You got you have pretty good self esteem, um, LG. And uh, I'm looking here. What other um, questions we got here? SMK, listen, do not rub more um, salt in the wounds. He says, he says, I haven't won ever since the first giveaway. Keep trying to uh, keep trying. You will win one one day. And LG's actually won. Here's the thing: with all the L belly aching LG's doing, he's actually won two that I can think of. I think I think he won the Brant Supreme Green last year, and he won a sticker. So he's already won twice, I think. So LG, you got you to you know, share the love, man. Spread it, spread it around a little bit. All right, um, let's see what else. Uh, he says, uh, uh, SMK says, hey, Ron, who is the one live stream late, um, hater who dislikes uh, for free info? Um, there's, I'm surprised there's only one SMK. There's several. There's actually, believe it or not, you guys are not going to believe this, but there's actually a contingent of people that do not like me. I don't, I don't understand it. I think I'm very lovable. I think I am. But they're just there is some people that just don't like me. But you know what? I appreciate it, man. They're just they're just specialized fans that just don't realize they don't that they they love me yet. That's all it is. That's the way I look at that, right? But uh, yeah, I'm not. I don't. I don't worry about it, man. It's it's still it's still interaction. And uh, again, they're just they're just specialized fans. They're a special a special class of fan. So, okay. Um, I think we are running down, guys. I'm trying to see if there's any other questions. I don't want to leave any here uh, on unchecked. Um, and let's see, Owen, Mike says, um, I'm joining a little late. Do I just need to be present in the live stream to win a raffle item next week? So I, I'm, I'm not done one this week, Owen. So, so what will happen is if I do one next week, which probably, I, I probably will, we'll see. We'll see. Um, probably not gonna be Turfplex. Like, I can't give away Turfplex every week. I need more super chats to give away Turfplex all the time because it's, it's expensive. <laughs> um, but the way it works is it's always a week behind. So it, it, let's say I do a giveaway next week. You gotta be present for that. Um, well, you have to be present to just know that I'm doing a giveaway. If you watch, if you watch the show after the fact, like, cause uh, I leave all these posted online. So, um, you can be present next week to see if I'm doing a giveaway and then you'll have to comment something that I'm going to tell you on that video. And then the following week we'll announce the winner. Reason being is that the, the software that I'm using for picking the winner doesn't allow, doesn't allow you to comment on the video until the live stream is over. So that's the reasoning for that. So it's always like you'll 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 comment on the video for the week before and the winner is announced the following week. So that's the whole um, reasoning uh, behind that. That's the whole reasoning behind that. Let's see what else we got here. So Hall Fashion has a question. He says, he or she says, hey, uh, hey Ron, I'm going to oversee my, my existing Bermuda lawn with RN15. Is it okay to do in July? And if so, where can I get RN15? Thanks for answering so many helpful questions. Um, so here's the thing. If you are going to oversee your Bermuda with RN15, yes, you can do it in July. One thing I will challenge you on, though, is why you're doing it. So if you decided you want to do it because you have tips like grass like Tiffway 419 that blends fairly well with RN15, um, if you decide you want to do it for that reason, you just want the look and you just want to, just want to, you just want something to do, you want something that's hard to, to do to try, um, then fine. But if you're doing it from a standpoint of I'm trying to fix like a shade issue in my lawn or a bare spot in my lawn or things like that, I would not recommend doing it. So um, just realize that, that overseeding um, Bermuda or growing Bermuda from seed is 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 literally hard mode. Like it's, um, it takes a lot of water to do it. The soil needs to be in good shape. Um, and even then, it's unlikely that it's all going to grow in evenly all right away. So just there's a there's a, there's a tons of reasons to not do it. Um, and there's a couple of decent reasons to do it, but I just, I just want to always give people the caveats, the negatives of um, of doing that. Something to keep in mind. But as far as where you can get it, um, Hancock Seed carries it. You can also get it on Amazon. So you can go to Amazon and get it there. Or you can go to Hancock Seed, and they also carry it. Um, they are the two that I know about that that carry Arden 15, and uh, they'll also let you know um, the amounts. So it comes in like everything from one pound bags, I think, up to 25 pound bags. If you're going to overseed, you're going to want to put it down at about two pounds per thousand square feet. So depending on how big your lawn is, that is the rate you're going to want to go with. So hopefully that helps. And I've got lots of videos on Arden 15 overseeding. I've got a video actually where half the video I try and talk you out of even doing it. Um, but then if you decide you're going to do it, I've got videos on telling you how I recommend doing it to get a good result. So hopefully uh, that helps. And Joel is explaining, Joel is explaining why he went with Jamor instead of like Bermuda. He says, I went with Jamor because... Um, I have mature live oaks, and and this does about as well as Saint Augustine in the shade, while it still has good heat, drought, and wear resistance, less stash, and it's a local breed. Cool. So those, those are tons of good reasons to go with Zoysia, um, and it looks like you've done your research. So good on you. Uh, let me know um, whenever how how it works out. Let's see how it. Uh, let me know how it works out. Let's see. Um, uh, what other questions we uh, we have here? So John, so Adrian Fraser says, "Can we have a lawn contest? I would like to see how my lawn stacks up against uh, other lawns. You can be the judge, Ron. 
Man, dude, that's just a good way to make a bunch of people mad. I, I, I could, I thought about that, but like, if someone sends me, if someone sends me um, uh, like a bunch of lawns, one, I gotta go through all of them and look at them. And then suppose someone sends me like a cool season lawn, like a ryegrass lawn, right? And it's like gorgeous. It's got major stripe action going on. Like, how do we judge it? You know what I mean? How do you, it's, 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 for me, it's too hard to do that and um, and not get accused of being impartial because like, you know, I might, there might be an awesome cool season lawn that I think is going to look really nice or, and I might be a really nice zoysia or Bermuda lawn. And if I choose the Bermuda lawn, I'm going to get, you know, say I'm going to get accused of favoritism for warm season grass. So I don't know if I did it, we may have to break it up into categories like best cool season lawn, you know, based on my opinion and then best warm season lawn based on my opinion. We'll have to figure it out. We, we can try it and see. Um, but I'm not sure how best to do it. And the thing is, I don't know that it would have great engagement, um, Adrian, because unless people are really into that, like, you know, people don't necessarily want to spend a bunch of time looking at other people's lawns, but, um, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. And we'll, we'll see. I'll think about it. So it's a good idea. All right. Tommy, uh, Bennett says, what's your favorite Miramichi green product? Oh, um, hmm. Tough question. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um, Okay, I, I, can I give can I give one of each? <laughs> my favorite granular is Essential G. My new favorite has become Essential has become Essential G. Love Carbon Pro G, but I love the green up that Essential G also produces because because of, of the additional compost that's, that's in it. So my favorite my favorite granular would be Essential G. My favorite liquid Miramichi Green product, I got to go with Release Zero. I got to go with Release Zero because it's it's just sweet, man. As far as like. You, you, apply, you mix really zero with like your liquid ferts or with PGR and it just, it really helps with that uptake. So if I could only have one um, out of the two, I'd go with really zero um, for my liquid and then um, uh, essential G for my granular. I love Biospectrum too, but you told me I can only have one. And bio, I still should just be able to get Biospectrum anyway, Tommy, because it's really not either. It's kind of, you apply it as a liquid, but it's really a microbe. So I really should get three. I should be able to get my um, uh, Biospectrum. I should be able to get really zero. And I should also get the Essential G. So see, I'm trying to game it here to get to get what I want. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, they make awesome products. NutriCup's an excellent product too. But um, as far as if I can only have one, man, that 10% micronized carbon, hard to overlook that. Hard to overlook that. So I'd probably have to go with really zero for my liquid. All right. Um, up in New York, Lonnie says, you may not get this question, but would you level with sand seed, uh, with sand, uh, seed bent grass, and then a thin layer of black cow manure? Um, would you level with sand and then seed the bent grass and then a thin layer? So everything there, um, that all sounds good to me. I've never seeded a green. I've never seeded bent grass up New York lawn. Um, so I can't tell you the best way to go about doing that. You, you know, you might want to check out for that. If you, if you check out, um, I think it's, is it lawn tips, Ben, the guy in Australia, like he, I, he has done that. I think, and I think it's bent grass that he uses, but the, what you're describing should work well. Um, sand, bent grass, and then like a, like a, um, you know, a, a topper with like a rich, a, a thin layer of, uh, of the cow, of the black cow manure compost to help feed it and give the seed a good bed to, to germinate in. That should work well. I've just never done it to be able to tell you, yeah, that's, you're going to get an awesome result doing that. But if, if what you're saying is along the lines of what I would probably do, um, if I didn't have someone to go and ask, you know, exactly the best way to go about it. So hopefully the, hopefully that helps. Hopefully uh, that helps. Let's see um, uh, what other uh, what other questions we got here. Um, Pop up flows says I had to pick up my sticker. Um, and yes, let's see. Um, JP Show says, Hey Ron, you'd you'd wanna you're a great teacher and guy. I don't know why anyone would want to give a thumbs down comment. Uh, keep up the great work. Eh, it's all par for the course, man. I mean, haters haters are a sign of success. You can't you can't have you can't have fans without also having haters. It's just it's just two the two go hand in hand. So. You gotta have you gotta have thick skin, especially you're gonna put yourself out there on the internet. You're gonna put yourself out on the internet talking about like lawn care content. Uh, yeah, you're gonna have people that don't like you just for just for that reason alone. So you gotta have thick skin. Like I said, whatever, whatever. I still love them to bits. It's their special kind of fan. Okay, uh, let's see what other uh, questions we got. I want to make sure I got everybody's um, uh, topic. Oh yeah, so here's we go. So JP Show says, if I was to win the product, would you would it be able to ship to Toronto or would it be canceled out? It would. It would probably be canceled, JP, because here's the thing, and this is actually a good a good point. So I had a viewer, and I need to fix this in the sort of where it's actually not possible to do it, but I had someone order um, Turfplex, and they were in Ontario, they were in Canada, and I'm I'm almost positive that even though I could ship it, 
I don't think it would get through customs. So um, the the liquid fertilizers are for the U.S. are for the U.S. only because I I you know I hate for you to go out and order it and then um, you know you send I I mail it out and it gets stuck in customs and you, you're not able to get it. So so anything like that um, I won't send um, I won't I won't mail across the uh, across the border. As far as a soil test kit, this is something that I know that um, while my soil I don't think they necessarily will ship um, or they don't like to do it necessarily. But if you if you want and I mail it to you. You can still get your results that way because really it's not, this is not something that is going to be an issue in customs, but like a liquid fertilizer um, or a herbicide, something like that, um, is something that's likely to get held up in customs. So I, I wouldn't want to take the chance of you ordering it and not being able to get it. Uh, great question. And then uh, Patrick in Texas, thank you for the super chat, sir. I appreciate super that support. Received. Appreciate you guys are help. You guys are helping to fund the next giveaway because again, the Turfplex, I got you know, I got to I got to pay for that. That's coming out of that is coming out of out of Ron Henry's pocket, out of the golf course uh, lawn store. So uh, so yes. Okay, I don't think we have any other questions, guys. I'm trying to see here if there is anything else. Uh, LG is saying Mirimichi Green has been has really really good customer service. I called them last week and they were great. They are, man. You talk about people that are seriously in love with their product and also serious about like DIY. Like once I once I was able to talk to them and say, hey guys, we, you know, I really want to be able to make the products available to DIY. Um, once they were able to take a chance on us and decide they were going to do it, like they jumped all in as far as like anytime people, you know, they ship something out and you know, FedEx or UPS decides to play basketball with it and break it or damage it. Like as far as like getting a replacement out, they've always done that. They've been really, really good about just making sure that the DIY community has a really good um, response and, um, you know, experience with their products because they are awesome. Again, I guess I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend them. I wouldn't offer them to you guys if I didn't believe in them and I didn't think they would help improve your lawn. So, and that, you know, partnering with Miramichi Green has been, has been really, really good. Um, and I'm glad that you guys, um, like LG saying, have been able to call them and get a good result and they were taking care of you. Uh, that is what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear. Uh, great, great stuff. All right, guys. Well, I think that is um, that is it for this evening. We are actually knocking off a little bit early, and normally we get closer to 11, but I mean, hey, it was a great night. To all the winners, be sure to email me. I'm sure you guys probably already have. I don't have my email up during the show, but I'm sure I'll check here after the show, and I'm sure I'll have emails from you guys. Um, if you guys are not yet um, subscribers of the channel and you enjoy the live stream content and you also enjoy the other content, consider subscribing to the channel. I really would appreciate it. It's a great way to show your support. It doesn't really cost you anything, um, but only subscribe if you're going to watch the content. Um, and on your way out, be sure to touch that like button ever so gently, guys. It's free for you guys and it's a great way to support the channel, show love for... Um, you know, all the work that goes into putting this on and helps, you know, promote promote the uh, the live stream to other people. So I really, really, really um, appreciate it. I don't think I have any other questions. Um, actually, I got one more that I can take and that'll be the end of it. Alex B says, I had some lag before, apologies. This is a repeat question, but have you ever considered test patches of cool season grasses despite likely not doing well um, down there? Yes, Alex, I have, and I actually do have one. I have, um, a small planter, like those little, you know, I don't know, planter, uh, 14 inches by five inches planter of ryegrass that I'm growing. So I don't have it actually in the soil of my lawn, but I've got it growing in um, some soil there. So, and I, I should do a video on that at some point and show you guys what that looks like. So it's actually pretty cool. It's, it's actually really cool to show you the difference between ryegrass, Bermuda, and zoysia when it's planted in like um, late, late May, early June. Uh, how quickly they fill in, like the growth rates and how the how the grasses do. Actually, that's, that's probably worth a video. Probably won't get a ton of views, but you guys would like it. So I'll, I'll actually do that. Um, Alex, a great, great idea for some content. Well, guys, thanks again uh, for watching. I truly appreciate it. Um, got one more question here. I got to take this one. Owen saying, I just I just ordered some a couple of bags of Essential G. Should I wait for all the rain to pass to prevent um, washout? So the thing idea with washout, Owen, in my mind is really overblown. Unless you're like living on a place where it's like a hill, a slope like this, um, you really shouldn't have a huge issue with washout. I, I have not had that problem. Um, if there's going, what I would do is, if you can if you can wait until there's a bit of rain in the forecast. If you got rain, say tomorrow, um, if it's not going to be like eight nine inches of rain, like eight, you know a ton of rain that's going to wash anything out, um, but it's going to be like two three inches, I would get that essential G down, man, because you really want to get it in the turf so that it's working. You want to get it in the soil profile, um, and yes, you can water it in yourself, 
but there's nothing like rainwater to do a great job of watering in a lawn care product. So, I mean, for me, I, it, I do, I tie my essential G applications around rainfall. Whenever there's rain in the forecast, um, you know, I, I'll be out there like the day before putting it down. I mean, I may or may not, you know, you get probably, if you, if you look long enough in the live, in the, my content, you might actually be able to find a video of me putting down um, a carbon product, putting down Carbon Pro G uh, in the rain while it was raining. When rain was about to start, I got caught out there and I still did it anyway. So, I'm pretty fanatical about getting my carbon out when there's rain in the forecast because I like that free watering. But so yeah, to answer your question, get it out there. As long as it's, you don't have like a crazy slope or it's going to be a torrential downpour, I would use the rain as a means of getting it um, watered in. Absolutely would. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. All you guys hanging out. There's like 93 of you guys that stuck around to the end. Really appreciate it. Congrats again to all the winners. Um, we're still got plenty of time in the, in the lawn care season. So get out there and plan something cool. Uh, for your lawn, you know, for the rest of this month, get out there and mow at a minimum this weekend. And uh, I will see you guys next time. Have an amazing weekend. Take care.